Hello and welcome to EFAP oh one four something. One, eight, one four something. 12. I'm gonna guess. Yeah. We got a meme fab. I don't know. It could be one three nine actually. That's a possibility too. You people in the future, you have all this information. I don't. Bastards. Yes. Welcome to EFAP. Yes. Uh. Well, uh, uncharacteristically, we'll just jump right into intros. Hello, Fringy. How you doing? <gasps> welcome. Hi. Hello, me. Huh, how are you doing? I'm good. Hi, nice. uh -huh. hi, Mahler. Oh, hi. Hey, Rags, how you doing? Hi, hi, hey. What's Ew, up? Nolan Batman. The fuck? What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we love Nolan Batman here. Yeah. He's, uh, oh, yeah, that's true. All, the, the first two, at least, are pretty good. Oh, sure, yeah, 100%. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely. So, uh, SK Comics, welcome to the your first EFAP, I believe. Uh, how you doing? Thank you, sir, thank you. What's up? What's 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 your dealio? You you review stuff, right? Uh yeah, I do. Um, relevant to the topic, I am working on a video picking apart the Winter Soldier because I don't think that one holds up very well. So, ah. you know yeah. what? I might be. Able, we could have a chat about that actually today, maybe. Sure thing. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, you uh, you you and Southpaw go back a little bit, and uh, now now we're here through. Pure yeah. deterministic nature of the universe. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what, I don't know if it's worth doing a little history. Like, what, the, what, what was the nature of your meeting for people who don't know? <laughs> oh my, uh, SK, so, do you want to tell um, them? Should I tell them? I, I I should probably start because I have a little bit more history to even before that happened. So, <laughs> um, before that, uh, there's this individual known as. Spidey panels who made a thread, um, a Twitter Spidey thread trying panels? to criticize. Yeah, he calls himself Spidey panels. <laughs> All right, and like it, a comic the, book panel. It's the official. Okay. It's the official. Oh, no, 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 hey, no, don't. Get to oh, you spoiled oh, it. Oh, it would have been a great oh, well. reveal. <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> I think I missed what you just said, right, so you're all good. Right. What's now? <laughs> um, so he he made a pretty uh, dumb thread on Into the Spider Verse. Um, that I was dumb enough to go like, oh, well, maybe I should uh, revisit the movie and see if it holds up. Um, I had different points than him, but they were still wrong for why the movie didn't hold up. Um, I made a review on it. It was bad. Southpaw found it because some guy was he was he happened to be arguing with somebody about logical consistency and the importance of it. And somebody linked my video um, to try to counter his standards or whatever. Um, Southpaw came across it and he was like, wow, this is this is a dumpster fire of a review. So uh, he decided to cover it. Um, there was a bit of a back and forth uh, beforehand as well, just, you know, arguing about some of the points. He made the review. Um, I uh, I watched it. Um, I tried to counter some of it uh, on like uh, Twitter or streams or whatever. Um, didn't go too well. Uh, so then um, I, and that was like the first hour of it. I didn't watch all of it yet. Um, I watched through all of it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, he makes a lot of good points here. Um, I tell him, hey, thank you for the feedback. Um, it's a lot of that was really helpful. Um, I'm, I'm down to do a discussion because there's still some things that I disagree with. Um, we talked about that on the South podcast, um, which I think many of you have seen. We had a little discussion on Spider-Verse. He was able to convince me it was pretty good, definitely the best Spider-Man movie. Um, so there's that. Um, oh yeah, I'm also missing something else. Uh, I initially disagreed with him on Spider-Man Two. We had a we had a debate on that on on Ecom. Um, I definitely lost that one. Um, he was he was definitely right about the movie. I even got an early screening of it. I'm like, yeah yeah, this is this is a pretty good video. He's right. So. Um, that's what got me into a, a group chat with him. We started talking a lot more often. Um, and then what next? Oh, yeah. With the Anomaly Inc. thing, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people are aware of by now. <laughs> yes, I believe different people have different takes on all of it. We at EFAB are just like, fucking hell. <laughs> well, it's, it is worth noting that uh, SK, this gentleman here, was basically uh, de like a part of that drama to begin with. He He... Started the back and forth with Anomaly that resulted in Anomaly losing his mind, and it just got worse and worse and worse. Damn. Well, yeah. um, 
I suppose that almost lines us up to present day. Before we get to that, I was going to say, welcome, Southpaw. How you doing? Welcome back. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. Yeah, excellent, I'm, excellent. I'm looking forward to talking about how uh, amazing the Winter Soldier is. It's totally... I'm sure that it totally holds up. I'm sure that you guys are all wrong, and it, you're just trying. <laughs> you're, you're just trying too hard to have a hot take. You know, that's that's. Here's the thing. I I definitely I don't like hot takes at all. I think that hot takes are lame. I I would never ever <laughs> want to stray away from the popular opinion. Yeah, you're very much a cold take kind of guy. I've noticed that about you. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So, so so cold that it can only be defeated by chicken soup. No, no. <laughs> Anyway, so where, 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 how do I, hmm, where do I set the timeline next? It's like, I don't know if I should go with uh, either our side leading to this or your side leading to this first. I, I don't think that it matters which one um, goes first, but it's, uh, if hmm. you want to, well, how did you get here, Fringy? Do you want to do that first? Um, so when I was doing my endgame prep, I needed to rewatch uh, a good portion of the MCU, um, including The Winter Soldier, which I hadn't seen for a while. I watched it. And I think shortly after that, we had a conversation about our rankings of films in the MCU. And I remember my thought was, oh, Winter Soldier is like, is not as good as I remember. Um, and so I think on one of the EFAPs, to, to, to almost make that point, I think I said, uh, oh yeah, Spider-Man Far From Home is better than The Winter Soldier, um, which is a very controversial perspective to hold. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think in the weeks after that, there was like a lot of back and forth and arguing about it because that is a that is a spicy take. Um, and then I guess that eventually led us here, right? Because uh, you know it, it just kept coming up, so it was like, well, probably worth talking about it at some point, right? Instead of just saying it. Well, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I've always been a little quiet on my praise of, of Winter Soldier and Efab. This is. Mm -hmm. Finally, the episode where I can be a little more honest about it, and <laughs> I'm planning on being very honest by the time we reach the end of this. Depending on how everything goes, that is, I might even deliver a, a nuclear take. One of those ones that burns children in their sleep, you know, just from hearing mm -hmm. the take itself. Crazy stuff. So, yeah, I remember when you were watching, and I was like, oh, let's let's have a chat about Winter Soldier, because I like the idea of anybody being like, you know, Winter Soldier is... Not, it's, Everyone says it's great. It's, what's going on? And I'm like, <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> um, well, it's, I guess we go with left to right. So, uh, rags. Not that you care to explain a longer history or anything. Just uh, what's what's your interaction with the two movies? Where are you at? Where are you coming from? Um, well, I, I was role playing as a, an impartial moderator, but um, uh, if that even is necessary, uh, we'll see. But right now, I, I would say that um, I've seen. I actually didn't see the Winter Soldier at all until somewhat recently. It was one of those that had just slipped through the cracks for me and I hadn't seen it in the MCU. And I watched it and I thought it was okay. Uh, and I had seen Far From Home, um, I think shortly after it came out, I think. I can't, actually, I can't remember. I, I, I saw Far From Home before the Winter Soldier and I thought that was pretty good. Definitely wasn't as good as Homecoming, but it was it was on the I, I I think it was on the good side. Definitely wasn't as strong. Uh but yeah, that's where I You're I interested to I hear right now. What everyone's got to say, I assume. Yeah, we'll see which uh we'll see which one turns out to be uh, the better movie. Who um, knows? Maybe people will be shocked and surprised and horrified. Who knows? So, what's what's you guys, either of you, together or separately, can go first? How how did this happen? What's going on here? Why are you here? Um. So, uh, I'm here because, um, as some people know, I'm willing to push back against Fringy's take, saying that uh, the Winter Soldier is worse than Far From Home. Now, for the record, yeah, I think the Winter Soldier is pretty bad, um, but I don't think it's as bad as Far From Home. Mm -hmm. Um, both of them do share a lot of similar issues in regards to like stuff like, you know, plot armor, uh, plot holes, contradictions. Um, but I would say Far From Home uh, does a worse job at uh, avoiding those. Uh, South Pole? So when I first saw The Winter Soldier, I really, really liked it. I um, thought it was maybe a little bit more overrated than, like a little overrated uh, 
given how everyone was talking about it. Like I thought it was just it was a good movie. Um, and I enjoyed it a lot, but a lot of people were praising it as like, this is one of the best comic book movies ever made. And I never really thought that way. There were certain things that stood out to me, like, you know, a, a certain lightsaber in a certain computer, um, that never really made sense to me. Um, and then I saw far from home, uh, like when it came out and initially I liked far from home a lot and, and thought it was actually like decent, at least again, not as good as homecoming, but not bad. Um, and I, I saw it, <laughs> funny enough, I think I saw it in theaters like four or five or six times. Um, Damn. And it really emotionally resonated with me because of what Peter was going through and um, which I actually happened to uh, find resonant given when the movie came out. Um, I won't go into the details on, th on that, but if anyone knows about my background, they'll know what I'm talking about most likely. Um, however, looking back, having done a watch party with SK, Evan, and a bunch of other people, um, watching the film, which I think that Evan and I had a, uh, brief call with you guys about, um, you, you know, Mahler and Fringy afterwards. Um, and then most recently I rewatched it with my brother and, uh, we've discussed it at length fairly recently. And I think that Far From Home is it's it. So I've 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 I watched The Winter Soldier with Evan like a week or two ago and would probably agree on much of what you guys have to say. But Far From Home, I find even less functional than The Winter Soldier. Fair um, enough. I like both movies to certain extents, like elements here and there. There's a lot that I can pick out and um, I can pop in either movie and enjoy casually subjectively, but I don't think that either movie holds up well. And I think that far from home's worse. That's all. Yeah, okay. Which... So I guess to clarify, you guys both think that far from home is like utterly dysfunctional and that winter soldier isn't as dysfunctional. I think, I think both that... of them are utterly dysfunctional, but far from home is less functional. So like, I think that we're dealing with the... different degrees of dysfunctional. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, but out of curiosity, like if if you guys were to like give Far From Home a, a number, like right now versus uh Winter Soldier, what would you what what do you reckon? So I would say Winter Soldier's a three out of ten, and Far From Home's like a two out of ten. I'd pick the same scores. All right. Okay. So Far From Home is as bad as Batwoman on our scale is basically your position and that winter soldier is like tlj equivalent which means i haven't watched batwoman so <laughs> we're we're uh we, well, yeah. the five of us already have you get, like i'm assuming anyone listening to this is probably like what the fuck the people defending winter soldier give it a three like well looks like we got hot takes abound everywhere uh because <laughs> the goal i think um, at least on, on my like, we can go through this with everybody. I, I suppose I'll just go first. Like, my interest is exposing Winter Soldier in this, and I think Far From Home is a really good opener because everybody's primed for Far From Home. They're like, I know what's wrong with Far From Home. And it's like, ah, if I can point out similarly issues with the uh, with Winter Soldier, perhaps we can open up um, what everybody because like the view on the MCU can be a little bit skewed. I find. But that's my main interest. I am absolutely on board with being uh, moved on any of this. I think this is this is going to be engaging. It should be fun. Um, I don't know, Fringy, do you want to go um, next? Or? So, problem is, like, I don't want to say that I've never said that, like, Far From Home is good, though I don't think I have for a while. Um, I think I, I think I liked it more when I first saw it, and now it's kind of, you know, the more you think about it, the more it kind of goes down. I think it was this kind of similar for me that the reason why saying Far From, like, that Winter Soldier is worse than Far From Home is because it's, like, an immediate sort of... People, that's a, that is, like, that surprises people, I think. Um, and so I, I, I think it's just that uh, Winter Soldier is, is quite overrated. Uh, and a lot less so that Far From Home is overhated. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it's underrated, but overhated uh, more so. And I guess uh, the objective here is that if if uh, I wasn't able to make the case that Far From Home is 
better than the Winter Soldier, at the very least, uh, the goal would be to show that it's not like so obviously true that Winter Soldier is better than Far From Home, or that Winter Soldier is like a, a great movie. That it's that at, at the very least, it's it's debatable um, which one is is more sound. Uh, so that's that's basically yeah the goal for me. I um I assume you guys are the reverse, but if you wanted to make anything clear, go for it. Um, I'm just I'm just curious. So as it stands right now, how would you score both of those movies? Um. Right now. Um, um you know what i i'm i'm not i'm not sure i think uh we need to talk about it so that i can get my scale in order for these ones i, I would okay be around four to five for far from home i but i'm definitely on board being moved winter soldier is in here. a yeah. dire position i've not given a number to winter soldier yet because i really don't know yet once we i need to test all of these arguments on people who are well not me um and if if we can confirm a lot of them, and if we can uh, even maybe find more or whatever, it'll it'll help me figure out where I'd probably sit it um, on a scale. So I'm excited to find out where that might be. Well, we've been uh, preparing for this since uh, we were told that this was going to happen, and um, we're going to basically try to stick to the standard that I think that we've um, we've all been using to judge stories for a while now. Um, hopefully this will go better than something like the twin perfect debate where we're just we're dealing with someone that's just... Can that be called a debate? <laughs> I don't it's, know. It's just... <laughs> noises were see, made. Um... A debate kind of implies that the, the two opposing sides are on somewhat of a similar wavelength. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Um, it's but good. We, we do think that we have some, some defenses against some of the criticisms that we have heard from you guys. Some, like, pushback, sort of a... Maybe there's a different way that this can be interpreted using the same evidence, and it would be at just as reasonable to infer, that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I think what people should expect from this is, first of all, neither side is going to get out all of their arguments at once. You're going to have to wait, all right? If any of us give away an argument you think is shit, I'm talking to the audience right now, then uh, wait, okay? It doesn't mean it's all of the arguments, it's just one. Don't do the thing We go, they said this. Their argument's terrible. It's like, no, let, let, let um, everybody get their full arguments out. Are you demanding that people watch the whole thing before they jump to any conclusions? That's I don't think crazy. people watch the whole of 84. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, the best part of 84 was the latter half, so, you know. Um, I Look, guess another the, thing... The Winter Soldier is not the best written movie. Wow. It's pretty bad. I, I suppose uh, <laughs> another thing worth clarifying as well before we get started is... Um, most claim... Like, if anybody in the audience says what about ism, like the goal of this discussion is a direct comparison between these mo two movies. So um, right. I don't think for the most part that whataboutism will apply to any, like, well, what about this in in the other movie? Uh, however, if there are deflections to, like, movies that are not part of the MCU or even films that are in the MCU that are not, like, related to the discussion, then, you know, that might yeah, be a we, little and bit more. There's probably going to be a little bit of tangling, right? Because it might be that someone's like, I'm trying to say this is really bad, whether or not the other one exists in this moment. And the other person mm -hmm. might be like, I'm trying to say the other one is worse than it for this, though. You know, I would that like can to, happen. I'd like to quickly uh, at, ask, though, what if um, one side makes a defense that actually contradicts uh, something that they've said, like a similar criticism about something else. It's valid to say that contradicts something that we've said in the past about a different um, thing, right? That, well, that's what aboutism, though. How is that? Wait, how is that what about about ism? What about ism to deflect to an argument that somebody made to a different thing uh, in an unrelated discussion to say that your arguments are inconsistent? But in relation to different things, that kind of is whataboutism. So is that what I did in my Spider-Man 2 video? Um, what do you mean? Well, it could be technically applied if someone's... It's really about the context. So if someone said, yeah, it's um, context I want important. to now argue that you are a hypocrite versus I want to now argue this is good or bad. Like, that's a change of subjects, whataboutism, mm -hmm. technically speaking. It would be valid. Whataboutism is targeted at the arguer rather than, like, the argument that tends to be the... the, the yeah, like, if you really wanted to have that discussion, I suppose if, if the other person's on board, you can. But it's just a... it would sure. be a tangent, um, just to clarify. To, I guess, 
keep focused because it's yeah because you wouldn't want it to be yeah. like wait but you didn't have a problem with this in t2 and then i'm like oh well in t2 you know all this context and you go, well i disagree with that context and it's like uh oh we're on t2 now no, we gotta no 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 so we're not going uh you didn't find this an issue in this movie where we're like assuming something but it's like you made this criticism about this thing here but you're defending it in like the winter soldier oh that that's that's total. I would say that that's more so worthwhile to explore because of the fact that we're we're talking about these two movies. Yeah, right? we we're trying so, to figure out the flaws and yeah. praises in these movies, so that would be relevant, yeah. I think. So it's like okay, I said, I, I don't mind any comparisons of like, well, what about this in Winter Soldier, or like, what about this in Far From Home, right? That that makes sense because we're comparing these two movies. It's well, gonna also, happen. Uh, so I, I saw Fringy on Twitter. You compared a thing that we talked about in like the SK and I talked about in Far From Home. Do something that happened in spider-man 2 so oh, I assume... yeah but, but for the for the sake of the conversation i figure it makes sense to start fresh right like on oh, this yeah. particular topic start from just the baseline and then do our arguments from here rather than back and forth on twitter stuff well I, I, absolutely i'm just i'm just making sure like comparisons to uh relevant superhero movies like that would also be uh i am valid. going to personally try very hard not to reference Anything other outside of the main two movies, yeah, other um, than these two movies, like yeah, okay. there's no way. I don't. I don't think we're gonna be able to make a consistent rule right now in terms of when you're allowed to do it. Let's just let's just go with the flow, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully it works out. Um, debates not typically popular on EFAB, which is why <laughs> this may never see the light of day. Who knows? It depends. We've got um, so like a lot of people don't like debates. So I'm the reason this is offline, quote unquote, is um. We're gonna hopefully it's good content by the time we hit the end of it and then it gets released but it's also because it's going to require everybody's consent at the end of this recording that should be included it should near the end be like yeah everyone's all good thumbs up sort of thing and mm -hmm. uh we are overstacked on super chats more so than ever so this would be another potential stream where we don't get to them depending on how long it is who knows how long we go for i really have no idea and um no chat means no distraction of any kind, no effort to like have real-time reactions, no input from them, whether it's positive or negative. Um, it's less a form of entertainment and more a super razor-sharp focus on getting these references right and figuring out the answers and stuff. Um, and chat get to enjoy it regardless when it comes out, assuming it does. I was just clarifying why we are uh, not uh, streaming it. If, if this goes well, we could finally maybe be like, hey, Debates aren't so bad, right? Right, guys? <laughs> no, debates are gay. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> which, uh, I don't know if there's anything else to say. The, the one thing that we were going to say was that um, since you guys are the away team, you, if you wanted to start, I suppose the format should probably be topic by topic, and then we switch between films. As in, if you guys wanted to start with um, anything <laughs> from Far From Home, once we've covered that particular topic, if you will, we try and then bring one of ours in for Winter Soldier and maybe go back and forth like that. That's the only format I figure that might work because it's going to be complicated to try and get everything in a strong structure, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I, I do to, have a nitpick that here. Um, uh, yeah. So, Rags, your profile pick, uh, that has the Spider Man Raimi logo, not <laughs> the literally MCU Spider Man I... logo. <laughs> So here's the thing. I don't I don't know. I, I know. And I don't know if it's possible to express how little I care. <laughs> wow, Rags, um, yeah, that shield is from Civil War. That's not even the fucking correct fucking dog. Yeah, because I had to try and find ones that were big enough they were, that they wouldn't look too blurry. But I had a lot of room to work with because it's getting you know smooshed down to an icon. And I'm like, I just need a Spider-Man. I just need a Captain America shield. And this needs to be on the because I because when I saw that I was in the middle, this it just mm -hmm. happened to be and this is rare that I'm not at the end. It just happens we have two S boys uh, yeah. on one side of the debate. So I ended up smack dab in the middle of the lineup. How how wonderfully pleasant. Why are they on the um, wrong sides? They're yeah, not. they are. Captain with the Winter Spider Soldier team. is worse and no, we're right. And, uh, well, it's fine. <laughs> Unless they represent oh, who I we're attacking, I guess. Yeah, who's worse? Yeah. That's all represents. right. All right. Fair enough. It um, represents everyone's willingness to something switch, <laughs> and maybe superheroes don't make sense anyway, so it's fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, a Spider-Man thing. It's Spider-Man. Uh, it's Spider-Man. <laughs> all I was gonna say before that is, yeah, guys, feel free to put your your best foot forward. I guess, like on what I guess you feel is uh the 
you know, strongest oh. point to lead with, I guess. I should have... So, so the format, because I'm such an idiot, this is like yeah. the most important part. So, Fringy and SK are going to be the main speakers. I'm going to be supporting Fringy where I can, where I think he might be missing something, or where I think... And it might be at one point that Fringy's like, let, you know, Mola can take this one, sort of thing. And that's yeah. Southpaw's position, too. Uh, but for SK, with Rags mainly acting as like an umpire, where he's just going to be like, hey, bad argument, or hey, maybe repeat that one, or hey, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, just standard approach to making sure we're all on point, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. With that, off you go, I suppose. Alrighty. Um, so, Fringy, so um, I've seen you on stream say, you said that Edith is the main <laughs> detriment of Far From Home, and that's why you would give it a 6 out of 10 um, at the time, is that correct? Um, so... Maybe that's something that I've said, but I'm not sure what I feel now. So I guess let's start fresh. Like, what's sure I guess what's your like main, your biggest uh, okay. criticism of Far From Home? Sure. So, um, Edith is allowed by the government in a post insight and post accords MCU. Like Tony was allowed to send these uh, the satellite full of killer drones into space. Like, this is after Project Insight in the Accords. Like, how would this be allowed by the government? Problem is that it is very unclear at this point in the MCU what exactly the status of the Accords or any of that shit is at the moment. But which, yeah. I think there is something relevant to remember, which is that it's, what, about eight, nine months since, far, uh, since the end of Endgame? So, like, we don't know what process that had to go through with the Edith stuff uh, in terms of, though, you know, flimsy. Oh, yeah. Um, but we, we don't know. Would you, would you at least agree, like, this is an issue in, uh, in the world building of this movie? Yeah, I, th I think, it, I, think uh, I, I mean, like I said, right, Edith, Edith is one of the bigger problems with Far From Home. Super yeah. flimsy. But I guess the other aspects of stuff to do with, like, in, in the post- end game world it's like you know what what exactly is like tony's status in the in the eyes of the world what's uh what is what is like the new perception regarding um his place in the world his technology and who should be allowed to have it especially considering that apparently the avengers don't even really exist anymore hmm. so one thing i'd like to mention about uh edith is that so you know like fear um Tony had to give uh, the glasses to Fury, right? The glasses were given to Fury, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. Like, that would only be possible prior to the start of Infinity War because um, when Infinity War began, it's like, okay, Tony had to go to space. He had his little space fight. Uh, on He was on Titan when the snap happened. Nick Fury was one of the snap victims. And then he, he came back in Endgame, and there's no way during the endgame battle that he gave him the glasses and had his discussion with him about it like that wouldn't have happened so it would have had to this exchange would have had to have happened before infinity war like i guess um, the will would would have to basically have like fury would be the one that's sort of um helping process uh tony's will and like the dissolution of his estate i guess well that's yeah he would yeah that was his job um, I, I mean, it's reasonable to assume that it just went through stock industries, right? Uh, well, there is a conversation that, uh, because Fury says that, uh, Tony said, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Stark said you wouldn't get that because it wasn't a Star Wars reference. So that implies that they actually physically talked to each other about it in some way beforehand. Or Which... Fury's just not telling him, like, what actually happened. Um, but or they I don't didn't think... talk to each other person to person, or that it could have been written down. Um, sure, but like, if he was giving the glasses uh, to Fury, I would think you know that this exchange would have happened prior to to Infinity War, because that's the most that's the most probable way he could have given it to him. It was. As part of the will, I don't know. Like, this could have this could have just know. been something that he wrote. In uh, a letter. Regardless, yeah, I would still say um, it's still an issue that uh, they don't really address why this is allowed. 
Um, there is a brief mention in the part where Mysterio is talking to his friends about how they found out that it wasn't going to get given to the defense department and that was okay. Or like that would, they were, you know, they didn't put up a fight against it. Um, right, it's his tech why? problem is that we, well, maybe they did. Maybe that's why it took nine months. The problem is that we don't know what the status of like all of Stark's stuff, the tech or anything to do with the Avengers is in the world at this point, especially post, no good you know, blip. Right, but yeah, as you said earlier, it is an issue, so I'm I'm okay with moving forward. I uh, yeah, I, I I agree that it's it's flimsy. I think the problem is the end game sets up a lot of problems in that regard. In <laughs> yeah, terms of, like for the sure, world for building. Sure. Yeah. Um. So, um, and I think you've said you've agreed with this on stream. Uh, as for Tony giving Peter Parker uh, a device that can access an army of killer drones, you agreed like that was that was a problem, right? So. Uh, from what I understand, Edith is like a broader defense network. So it's like access to Intel backdoors into security systems and the drones. And it's like giving it to Peter. Yeah. It's like, I could, it's not implausible that he did, he would, but like, oh, you know, <laughs> that's just one of those things. Um, I would still say like, you know, uh, with someone like peter parker he's a kid obviously like if you just if you really want to give him like this uh that's really powerful tech um it's like the, that could kill anybody in with in order it's like that's not really a safe a teenager is not really as, in the safest hands you want to put it in if you go know what i mean like someone like Rhodey is a lot more qualified to to own the glasses um with that kind of stuff not peter parker Mm, yeah, my, my the, the only thing I would do is if like I had to steel man the defense would be that it's the idea of like Tony trusts that Peter is really good. Like he he just really trusts in his capacity for good. And so that's like the fundamental thing that drove him to give Peter the glasses, not necessarily that he would use it right now, but maybe later on. Um or like the idea that he'll eventually, you know, become something of a leader in the Avengers. But that's 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 the the only explanation I could see that would you know like explain his motivations. But still, like yeah, they're you know, Rhodey is a is a good choice as well. Sure. Okay. So you agree? Like, yeah, there, there is work needed to be done for this. It's 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 like the other one, right? It's it's like oh, uh, you know, we're uh we're we're teetering. Um, yeah. Okay. Like a charm. Um, Just the beginning. Another thing is, like, okay, so if you had the drones this whole time, like, well, I guess since around the events of Avengers Endgame, then why didn't you use it in the final battle? Problem is that we don't have a clear idea on the time scale when it comes to the Edith stuff, like, uh, because it's been nine months, so was the infrastructure in place before Endgame, or what? Like, I don't know. Um, well, I would assume so, because he would have given him, like, um... I don't know. I guess because he gave him like glasses ahead of time, and well, remember, if... Edith is a defense network that has other capabilities beyond the drones, right? But what I'm saying so, is like, Edith... like, yeah, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, go on. No, you, uh, yeah, no, you can basically... go on. Oh, uh, okay. it was just the idea of like maybe I don't know. We we don't know. We we don't know like where the drones factor into the Edith part because Edith is more broad than just the drones. So either way, like, the film doesn't really do a good job uh, establishing the timeline here. Um, so I guess it's a question of could they have done a better job of establishing the timeline? Sure, but is, where, is, the contra is, it, is it a clear contradiction? That's, I guess, the important part. Hmm. Like, is um, there a clear contradiction would... there with, uh, with the, like, Help you know, the nine-month time span, the glasses, the fact that it's a broad network and the, 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 the role that the drones play in that network? Hmm. Okay. It's it's just unclear. Um, that's all I'd say. Yeah. Sure. And I think I I would still say like regardless, we want to call it a contradiction. We want to call it unclear. Like there's still an issue present here. Sure, but I guess it's just the the important thing is that a contradiction is a is like a significant issue. Like a plot hole is a is it's like an impossibility. Whereas a lot of this stuff is just like 
just uh, like contrivance that maybe really been or uh fully fleshed things out things that aren't explained as fully yeah which um yeah yeah you know sure again this this movie ain't like fantastic <laughs> that's for sure absolutely yeah. yeah yeah um okay so the next thing i wanted to bring up was that um you so do you remember in spider-man homecoming where tony had safety precautions in the the karen suit where obviously peter can't just unlock all the features at once um a big reason is that he has uh, instant kill, which is not a safe feature to have if you don't know how to use the suit. Would you Would you agree with that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so the thing is with the Edith glasses, he doesn't have any kind of training wheels-like feature for Edith. It's just, oh, here you go. You, could, you have all the features unlocked. Um, what would be Tony's way of, when he's dead, curating the features that uh, Peter would have? access to well i would assume that he would have these in place uh when he's designing it that's really important safety precautions well I, Especially... yeah but i guess what i mean is like does the computer say oh you're done now um now here's here it is because i think it's easy to assume from the training race pro protocol that tony would have disabled that himself when he felt that he was ready well the thing is is that uh in homecoming he's shown that he doesn't know like he's very unfamiliar with the features and then Karen notices this and says, uh, you seem to be unfamiliar with, uh, with mm -hmm. your features. Uh, would you like to run a refresher course? So obviously there is some training in some way that needs to be done. There's no training system whatsoever for Peter using these highly advanced drones that could kill anybody on an order. So I guess there would be a couple of things of the one, but the idea is that Tony trusts Peter and that the events of, you know, like Homecoming and Infinity well, War... It kind of demonstrated that it's, to him but it's still follow up on well uh just so to follow up on that it's also if the idea is that he trusts in peter specifically who would why would he like who else would he trust to be the person to oversee what peter can or can't have access to in the network if he's giving it to peter what do you mean by that so if if we assume that it's Tony, who's able to disable things like training wheels protocol, who would he, now that he's dead, who's going to be doing that with, 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 uh, with Peter? Uh, who's going to be monitoring what he does? Well, you're saying like, so the feature should have been locked off. Who's the person who decides when and like, which feature should be turned on for him and when? Well, well, I would assume that the Edith glasses would have a training system where he has to go through certain trials. Uh, kind of like what he does in Homecoming, where he's going through trials to learn how the suit works. And then once he goes through all the trials that would be set up by Edith's programming, then then he would unlock all the features. But Karen didn't have trials. She was just off. And then when well, they well, had yeah, the but we can assume that it. Tony meant for him to have trials of some sort before unlocking all those features. Oh, I mean, trials that he would have been doing and overseeing, right? Not the suit itself. Um, well, I mean, if he's able to program like a really smart AI that's capable of determining whether or not he would be ready based on the trials, I mean, yeah, I think that's fair. And it's like just giving him Edith without any sort of instructions of like how to use it properly. That's that's not like you. That's an important safety precaution to to include. It makes Tony Stark look pretty so I, incompetent. I guess, uh, I, we, we need to work backwards then, because if he trusts if he trusts Peter fully, like if that's the reason why he gave him the glasses, then is it like then what what would be his decision in character, right? Um, well, I mean, there 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 obviously comes the idea, you know, what if he doesn't doesn't know how to use something? What if he is? Uh, what if he makes a mistake? What if he accidentally sends a drone to to kill somebody? Almost like that happens in this scene, uh, the bus scene. Oh, sure, like, I, so, in terms of the bus scene and stuff, I'd, I'd agree, like, the UI is dumb, right? Like, the whole thing of, he's a target, all right, send a drone, that's stupid. Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing I, th I'd I think is worth mentioning is that uh, when Peter talks to Karen, she says, congratulations on completing the rigorous training wheels protocol and gaining access to your suit's full capabilities. Mm-hmm. He hacked the suit, though. So... So like we, we well, don't yeah, understand but... what we don't know what the we don't know what the training uh thing was at all like how it worked. Well, well, let's say let's say he didn't hack the suit. Okay, so what would he ha have to have done? At least in in some capacity, he would have to complete some sort of um 
uh, training in order to gain full access. He has no training uh, protocols at all for Edith, and that's really dangerous, especially given what Edith can do. I, I thought, so, I thought we, I thought we talked about this though, right? Like, so it's like, what when we when the the training rules protocol in in uh, Homecoming, I read that as being like binary, like it's training wheels now, and then Tony turns it off, and then it's off. As opposed to, I but guess, it said that like, he had to complete it. So what was it that he had to complete? Well, whatever Tony had in mind, like what just Tony going around being the friendly. Being in a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, right? Feet on the ground, take it slow. Right, but that's that doesn't teach him how to use the suit's features. Yeah, so why you would know what I mean? like, not... What I'm getting at here is that... Oh, sorry. Oh, I guess I was just going to say, like, are we going to assume that Peter, Tony's plan wasn't to take it slow and maybe, like, open up certain features to Peter with time? Yeah, so I guess it wouldn't be um, binary in the sense of teaching him certain things, but like taking off the entire thing altogether, he'd have to like well, introduce the, thing it to is, the web individually, right? Well, yeah, but would you at least agree like there is some form of training that would that he would require him to go through before unlocking all the features, right? I don't think that yeah, lines up with is, Infinity War or Endgame, though. Uh, yeah, that was what I was about to say. This is before Infinity War and Endgame. Right, but it's still important because uh, if Peter doesn't know how to use the features of Edith and he makes a mistake with it, like he does in this scene, um, it's not a good... It, like, that's that presents a risk with um, not pro providing any kind of safety precautions in case he messes up with them. Sure, but, but I, the... I guess this is assuming that there is no safety... Like, there is no way that Peter could say, Hey, uh, Edith, run me through it. Well, I mean, I think that should just be a thing that's built into it. Uh, but Tony trusts Peter, so he trusts him probably to actually like look into it. He, I imagine that he didn't think that that bus scene was going to happen <laughs> in the movie. Yeah, because Spider-Man so... has insta-kill mode accessible to him. That's a pretty dangerous mode. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but he made sure that like there was training to accompany that. Yeah, that was locked behind the training wheels protocol, which was a really, really smart move of Tony to do because there's all kinds of stuff that Spider-Man could do with that suit that if he doesn't know how to use it yet, um, things could go awry like the bus scene. And so you're so suggesting that he learned over. all of these things between the movies rather than Tony just lifting the restrictions off after he proved himself in Homecoming? I mean, it seems like it's a bit rushed for uh, Peter to... Um, prove himself to be capable capable of um, wielding something like Edith responsibly after just the events of Homecoming. And well, it's Infinity, Infinity War, War and Endgame. But Tony wouldn't have been able to know about what Peter was going to do in Infinity War. But but he came back to Earth and then was alive for five years. Yeah. Uh, but I guess that's true. Um, so that's, Tony, that is true. Sorry. Well, like, well, so, <laughs> but then, but Peter one. was dead. So Tony. Uh, he must have amended his will to give Edith over to a dead person. Well, remember, his, well, he knows they're coming to back. bring everybody back, so he could have done it then. Well, I suppose that he could have done that. I would imagine that he did, because uh, he knew what the, he was going to do with the snap. So, you know, would you say the, that the well, most like... reasonable and charitable interpretation is that he amended his will? Um, before they went back in time and he knew, okay, we're about to attempt to bring everyone back. I would imagine so, given that he did his little recording for Morgan, right? So he knows that he might die um, and he knows what his goal is. So, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, like like I said, I'm, I, uh, I agree that the Edith stuff is, is, uh, is flimsy, right? Like that bus scene is really stupid. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, uh, I guess how it's consequential... the idea. Of... Sorry, you go right. ahead. No, no, go for it. Oh, uh, how consequential uh, do you figure the bus scene is to how the story plays out? Uh, is it isolated not... stupidity, or does it actually like affect Peter's character? Wait, what? Would it, what? What, what about his character would have been affected? Yeah, why? Why would it affect? Yeah. Uh, possibly his motivation in giving Edith over to uh, to Quentin Beck. What, well, that he feels that he screwed up. Yeah. 
I mean, especially when um, Fury scolds him, and Beck then basically plays good cop after Fury uh, basically rips him a new one. I mean, I think it's safe to say that he might feel that he's screwed up just by trying to use Edith to delete a picture from that phone. And then, like, you add the extra stuff on top. It's like, am I using this responsibly, right? I think it's... I've there always, are, there I've are always seen it as that Quentin ahead. earned the glasses from Peter more so than Peter relinquished them because he's irresponsible. Um, I, I think that the, the screw-up would have been the fact that Brad almost died, not that he would have used Edith to delete a picture that brad took that, oh, sure, by the way no, the that, circumstances that led to brad taking that picture in the first place are all bullshit like, that's not what frank you said by the way i am um, I'm, I'm i'm aware yeah. i just wanted to like make make sure that we were all in agreement on that the circumstances leading up to him finding peter were bullshit yes why um, so you've got Dimitri, uh, who was the bus driver, who was a shield so, agent, who was posted. Well, I, I the feel bus. this is a good time for us to. Well, hang on. I feel this is a good time for us to pull up the scene because um, a lot of this will require some some visual references. Sure. So let me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let me pull up a timestamp for this. It's going to be uh, at around thirty six. Uh, sorry, thirty seven twenty four. Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. Um are are we all there? Um well I'm just scrolling through it as you as you guys talk over it. Okay. Just so, yeah, you can explain your point. I gotta pull up. Sure thing. So they they leave the bus, um, Mr. Dells or whatever tells them we're heading to the toilets, and we see that a line is headed to like uh the the right of the bus. And they're all headed to the toilets. They believe, like, that's where the bathroom is. All right? Do we agree there? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then Dimitri stops Peter, and he tells him to enter the room that's right in front of him. Um, and that's just, like, that's directly right in front of him. So that's, you, you agree, like, those are completely different directions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when Brad enters, uh, when he enters there, um, like casually just on his phone, he sees Peter and the agent there. He says, sorry, I thought this was the bathroom. That was the justification they gave for why he was there. Mm -hmm. So how exactly does that line up if the bathroom, uh, if he believed the bathroom was in a completely different direction that he was already walking? Presumably, like I always interpreted this as Brad was following Peter, but he's trying to come across as it was an accident. Um, I don't Why think so, be... because... Because he, remember, he, well, he's explicit. He's like, I know you're after MJ. He wants to try and find Peter doing something. It could very well be that he was trying to get a photo of Peter on the toilet or some shit, because he's like, remember, he's like, trying to do anything he can to sabotage Why the relationship. Why would that help him? Sorry? Like, Peter on the toilet? I don't think that's going to really help him out. That, that, that makes him look like a creep, honestly. I agree. That's why they say that in the uh, film, if you remember. Right, but like from Brad's perspective, I don't see how that would be em embarrassing. Like, oh, you took a picture of a dude taking a dump. Like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you, like this happens all the time in high schools. Hmm. Oh, like, why would that? Uh, why would you think it's that funny? MJ would actually accept. Like, it's, that would it's be funny. That would be the the logic would be like, oh, look at this dip. Have you seen the Inbetweeners? That was like a joke in the first episode that they take a picture of Will sh taking a shit. Okay, but and like, he's, they... if he's trying to sabotage Peter's uh, attempts to get with MJ, why would Brad taking a picture of him on the toilet do that? So, remember, the broader yeah. point is he's trying to find dirt on Peter because he wants to get MJ and he's a bit suspicious of Peter. That's like the Everybody broad Everybody takes a shit, I think. I, think I don't, I don't know clear. I don't why you're trying to use clear. logic what? when this is children trying to prank each other and humiliate each other. It's like, yeah, they, they don't really operate that, that much on that way. Well, well, yeah, but like, I'd expect that they know basic things. Like, yeah, everybody takes a shit. If you get a picture of somebody shitting in the toilet, that's not really going to help you out. Is that what's being debated is whether or not people poop? Fuck with people. <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah, do this. Which they do. I don't know, but even then when Brad was was entering the room, um, he was like looking on his phone while he was going there, so it doesn't even seem like he was expecting to find anything. 
It just seemed like I doubt he was expecting to find Peter with his pants down and some like French woman there. So that that goes back to the whole. Well, he thought it was the bathroom in there. Well, wait. So is it hard to believe that as he was following Peter, he got a notification on his phone and checked it? Um. Well, I mean, he would if he. Well, let me pull up the scene real quick. Um. Okay, so if he was following Peter, then. Hello. I'm just going through the scene real quick. Rob said it looks like he's also, texting. Also, but. none of these uh, defenses are accounting for the fact that you have Dimitri, a shield agent, posted outside being the lookout. And he's seeing, he would be seeing. And what, student, what, is, what is Dimitri going to do? He, would, he wouldn't Stop. want. Stop. You're not allowed in there. He wouldn't want Brad there. barging into a, into an inn where there is official shield business being conducted. Man, like imagine having De Peter go into this room and then Dimitri runs in front of Brad and says, "You can't go in that room. That's go look." Well, he doesn't real have to run in front of Peter. Him. He can say, "Hey, you're not allowed." He can say, "Hey, but you're Peter not allowed is in. allowed in that room." I also don't know why we were assuming that he absolutely saw Brad. Why wouldn't yeah. Brad try and account for the bus driver? If he's standing guard. Well, you would think that he would. Well, he was keeping watch of, like, uh, just in case nobody would go in there. Especially if Brad also, saw the bus driver, like, tap Peter to make him go a different direction. Uh, I'm watching the scene now, and no. He's walking away as, like, he's he's out of the frame as uh, as Dimitri does that. You're right, he is like out of the frame. He, he, he walks away. Out so if frame. he's out of the frame, does that mean that he can't see that happening? I think that that needs to be actually shown. Can't infer yeah, someone I think, looking. Like, just... I I mean I, I feel like that needs to be established to actually happen in the movie. But you're establishing that it didn't happen. I think it's up to the movie to establish that he that Brad would have seen it. As far as we see, Brad's heading towards the bathroom with the other students, with his back completely turned to Dimitri and Peter. Yeah, so then it just follows through what we... So, you see what happens, and now you have to infer events that could possibly lead to it. If you consider it an impossibility, then I feel like that's on your end, not the film's. Because you're saying it's a hole. Uh, it's a contrivance. Or, yeah, a contrivance. But, like, how? Yeah, for clarification, Southpaw, what is it that you believe is the contrivance here? So, we have Peter going into a different building than these other students are going. Uh, one of those other students includes Brad. Brad then somehow makes his way into a building where we do, like, we do not, like, they don't show that Brad sees Peter going into this other building. Suddenly, Brad shows up in that other building when we know that there is a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent that is on lookout and making sure that um peter goes into that building why is he not making sure that no one else goes in there when there's shield business be like happening in that room um this just i don't know why we wouldn't infer he just couldn't catch brad before he did and also what franny said just it's gonna be really super awkward to grab him and be like you can't well, go in there he... well why he didn't seem have... to really make an attempt to stop him well we don't know what happened out there well, I mean, Brad is like a security risk now, and they're basically doing nothing about it. What could they do about it? What would you want them to do? Um. Well, at least talk to Peter about it and say, "Hey, you, you got Edith, right? Like, it, can't you just clear like what is what is there?" They don't seem to care about it. That's the thing. They don't I mean, even I, seem. Why, like Dimitri, why would... he doesn't even seem to notice. Why would they know what Edith? does also remember it's they're not their secrecy is tied to peter's demands they don't actually give a shit like peter wants to be secret they don't care that's true yeah um i wouldn't that's not exactly the case because right afterwards like she literally pulls a gun on brad so that implies in some way that they do care that, yeah, he knows about this. Well, it's just a potential threat. She's obviously, like, high-strung as fuck, especially when he gets into the room. She's, like, almost nuts. Well, it's like, okay, well, I think 
Shield clearly, if they're doing this whole secret operation, then they do care to keep this whole thing a secret. It's not a secret. It's, they're or doing this on behalf of Peter. Peter's sake, yeah. Right, but they still care about keep maintaining the secret. That's the thing. I'm Only not sure that Peter. you can confirm that. Wait, uh, well, the fact that they're trying to do this whole yeah, secret yeah, yeah. operation. You can, you can say, so wait, Peter's what? Like, but literally, like, they don't care that much if Peter is known to be Spider Man, even. They only do this as a courtesy. Well, I mean, if they're doing it to begin with, I think, yeah, they actually do. They're at least trying to do so. Wait, so you don't think that S.H.I.E.L.D. cares about doing this in a way that's secretive? They don't care if Peter's friends find out that he's trying to save the world. Then why do they make a whole new suit for him? Because he has a courtesy. Like, that's the whole... Right, they want to go with Peter's demands, right? Well, they they want to give him the courtesy of trying to help conceal his identity. Right, so then they just stop giving him the courtesy? They just stop caring? Well, so, like, no, it's, so not, it's not a binary. It's not, it is not their they priority. They just stop, like... It's not a binary. So, well, it's not a... Wait, did you say priority or...? Binary. So It's not they like do it's care not, or don't okay. care. My bad. But what I was saying was their top priority is save the world. Whether or not Peter gets outed on his identity is, like, less relevant. Because, I mean, of sure, course, they, they wanted at to least, take like, him from the At the, the very least, if they're trying to be... Right, if they're trying... But if they're trying to be secretive about it, it's like, you would still think that they would at least attempt to maintain the secret. The fact that they're doing what? it to begin with means they care about these precautions. I feel like, I will say, it's probably going to be harder to keep the secret if Dimitri comes, takes your phone, deletes that picture from it. Like, shit. Well, I mean, the that, thing is, Dimitri suspicious. should have stopped him from entering to begin with and say, hey, you're not allowed in there. Well, they should have also, they should have locked the door to begin with as well. Well, um, this isn't even, Pete doesn't even know this place. And he just got in. He comes in right after him. We don't even know that Dimitri could have stopped him. And stopping him is very suspicious, which is something that you were arguing they need to avoid. Well, yeah, but... Letting him but into, the thing is, is like, into a, a building where Peter is with a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent... And there's that's worse. business going on is, is worse like, than that. Even if it is suspicious, we want to let's look at the two options. One, you tell Brad he can't go in there, and then he doesn't go in there, and he might be suspicious of you, or he sees the shield agent with Peter with his pants off. That's worse. So well, so what we know is that what Brad takes away from it is oh, Peter's trying to hook up with a European chick. That's what Brad but also, thinks Also, Dimitri doesn't, Dimitri doesn't know that uh, when Brad walks in there that Peter's going to have his pants down. For all he knows, Brad could overhear the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent say something that's important or see Peter in the Night Monkey costume that will compromise his identity that they're um, trying I don't not think to it, do as a courtesy. Peter's been in there for like 10 seconds. I doubt that's happened. Mm. Let me see. I'm is this like... But would you say this is like hugely... Um, so... Yeah, sorry, I'm just, you can keep going, I'm just going through the scene right now. Oh, I, I don't really have anything. Um, yeah, we're going to go one by one, of course. Closer to 45 okay. seconds. Um, so, yeah, it's 42 seconds that they're in there. It wasn't 10. Excuse me for not knowing the time off by heart, I was just, well, just random. Well, yeah, yeah I, I, I understand, I understand, you know, memory, we don't remember the whole thing. Uh, he was in there for like 42 seconds, and what Southpaw said, you know, what if they're talking about important business, what if they see him in the Night Monkey costume, like, that's still possible within uh, that time frame. Well, but this all assumes that Dimitri made a decision. I'm sorry, what, what do you mean it assumes that he made a decision? It's just that you, you guarantee that Dimitri saw Brad go in. Well, I would assume that he's keeping guard uh, of the of the door because that's a basic precaution you want to take so nobody gets in. Well, yeah, but he's taking guard of the bus. And lots of things can sure, easily like, happen that would mean that he wouldn't have spotted Brad go in. Especially if Brad as... is looking to not be seen. Okay, would you not want so to like then. At, like be a lookout though for this building well sure but like lots of things can distract anyone from anything like the the teacher could easily have just walked up and asked him anything and that gives brad that's, the opportunity right but where like is right no that um that is hold up i need to let me pull up the scene real quick just to make sure um 
Because I mean, I, I, I'd be second. okay with this okay. if there was That's... something in the in the film that you know confirmed that Dimitri got distracted, um... but there's nothing in there, which means this is writing the film for the film. Um, well, um, so, is that what? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Um, hold on, wait, wait, wait. wait. On, I'd like oh, to bring something up. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, so, um, Muller, on your uh, on your uh thing, uh, go to thirty nine twenty. Okay. If you want to just describe the image instead, because uh, it'll be easier on my end. What am I so looking for? So we see uh, Mr. Dells and Mr. Harrington leaving the bathrooms. So they didn't leave; like they were still in there. They wouldn't have talked to Dimitri about anything. Wait, what? what sorry, what you suggest? Uh, this is after. Um, I'm just trying to get a timeline because again. Uh, so like, what I'm referencing is, yeah, yeah. So so. Oh yeah, I see what um, you mean. What yeah, I'm well, referencing to yeah, clarify. Yeah. Why have you assumed yeah. that they were in the bathroom the whole time rather than they would have gone? Like you, you're saying they went straight in and didn't come out until later, when anything could have happened. Um. Well, I'm just. Well, I'm just assuming they stayed to wait for the kids and then they just left. Um. Afterwards. Yeah. So I guess like after I guess like they were saying, the... let's get back on the buses. I don't find it at all implausible entirely that this scene plays out as it did. That Brad is suspicious of Peter, was keeping an eye on him, goes around, and then opens the door and sees him there. Because like, yeah, obviously the response okay, is like, just you... writing flaws for the film rather than writing for the film. But the also, problem but here is that they're not uh, taking bait. Ella, if you just uh, Sorry. one second. Before we proceed, um, this seems to be the longest section that we've talked about so far. In terms of uh, in, in this discussion, just keep that in mind as we go forward. If it's super consequential to the film, because a lot of times getting devoted to it, I'm fine if y'all want to talk about it. Just keep it in mind as we, you know, as you proceed. Yeah, I go ahead. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I mean, it's so, worth it. If, if you think it's um, worth it, go for it. Just uh, um, a well, reminder. for okay. reference, I'll concede contrivance, but not whole. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that, that I, I think that's fair. Again. I think that's I, fair. I, I, I don't think I was calling it a hole. Um, it's just, I, I'm trying to think of an example of something similar from a different movie um, where people can go, oh, well, can't you just, um, you know, assume or infer that uh, th these certain things happened off screen? It's like, yes, but they would have to actually happen on camera. Like, it, it, not everything actually... has to happen well, on so camera for you. That's to not what I well, said. That is not I can, what I said. I can give an example. Sorry. I can give an example real quick. Like, um, so with Spider-Man 2, where he, he leaves the dude to get mugged, like, can we infer, oh, well, he tried to look for a payphone, tried to call the police, and did that. So to clarify on the, on the whole thing, it's like, so generally when it comes to the inference, it's like how much are we stretching, I guess, to 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 infer something that happens. Also, yeah, you know Hux firing at the Radis is a contrivance, it's not a hole. He's not firing at it, sorry. Firing at the base, it's a contrivance, it's not a hole. Excuse me there for a sure, second. Sure, yeah. Um what we would cite with your example with Spider Man two is character assassination. He wouldn't have made the choice to go and find the police. Why wouldn't he have? Because Spider-Man's core trait is to help people when he has the power to do it. He doesn't need superpowers to help someone with a mugging. Well, they could have a gun or a knife. Right, but... Fair. Um, I don't yeah, think Spider-Man's gonna care. That. He's gonna help them. Especially when he's that close to the public. Well, I mean, if he gets shot or stabbed and he doesn't have his powers, like, that's not a good idea. Yeah, that would suck. Like... Like, okay, so... Um... Let me make a comparison. So, are you okay with, like, uh, in that movie where... The, the poli when the police are going after um, the thugs and he's just eating the hot dog, do you see that as character assassination? Wait, why, why are we on Spider-Man 2? Well, I mean, I'm just getting, I'm just establishing a baseline here real quick. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm not quite sure which scene that is. Uh, where he's eating the hot dog and it's the raindrop sequence. You, you said he... Sees... Wait, are we talking about the mugging or are we talking about something else? Like, I'm just asking, would you... This is before the mugging. Uh, the, the part where he sees the... Yeah, this is before the mugging, where he sees the police going He doesn't have powers after... at that point, though, um... right? Correct. And he doesn't so have what can he do? the mugging scene either. Is that... No, but what can he do in that first one, though? Um, well, he can't really do anything, that's the thing. Right, so... There's a difference, then. And what I'm saying here is that taking your level of, um, inferences that you're... Uh, that you're applying to Far From Home, we can say, okay, well, is it not plausible that the two muggers in the street had a gun or a knife? 
because if Wait, that's the case, sorry, why did can't you bring up the uh, why did you bring up the first one, the police chasing? Uh, the reason I brought that up because you would agree, like that's not character assassination because but he, can't he doesn't help, have his powers. Though. He can't do right, yeah. and I would say that so applies that... if they have a gun or a knife as well. Okay, but they didn't. So, and even if they did, um, I don't know that it's in character for him to but... just give up. Wait, so no, I, I think the, you don't actually so know whether or not they did. Like they're beating right, up the sorry, guy. We, they could be concealing weapon though. Can we dial it back a little bit? So like with the mm -hmm. police thing, he he can't help. He isn't. He can't help because he doesn't have powers. But in the mugging scene, he right, can. If he can just go in and fight them. Well, if they he haven't have powers though. If they have you know, guns what, or what knives, I'm saying he is, can't. No, he, what I'm saying is that he has no means of possibly helping with the police situation because he has no powers. Whereas he right, has means to help. Right, he might just if, get hurt. Or no, he would. Okay, okay, here's the thing. If they have weapon. guns or knives, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If he goes up to them and tries to do something, boom, you're getting shot, or boom, you're getting stabbed. You can't Maybe. do anything at that point. No, so, so I'm, what sorry, I'm saying here, sorry, what I'm getting at here, is that sorry, if we no, can just no, no, infer. No, hold on, hold on. Um, so with the police chase scene, what can Peter do? Um, he can't really do anything effective. The best. So yeah, all he, he can do, do is like what? Run after the, all the cars? Like he's just going to do that because that's what Spider-Man right. would do is like and run after cars when it's totally fruitless. It's not what he's arguing. Right, right. I agree with you. That's right. I okay. agree with okay. you. Okay, so what I'm saying is you're saying that you're saying that the gun is comparable, right? That 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 like that the. So I guess what I'm getting at the is reason there is nothing that Peter can do in the car chase scene. That is not the same as somebody has a gun in that uh, scene. He could do something well, to try no, and help, but he might die. If yeah, also we we have calling okay, for help on backup too, by the way. Correct. He is he is yeah, three meters if, away if from the, the public. Yeah, there's a lot of other okay, people. Okay, but are if he calls for area. help. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, like, here's what I bring up. So if they have guns, okay, and they he says, Help, they're they're beating up this one guy, they can just pull their guns and everyone's leaving. Yeah, uh, that would be my okay, own character, I agree. Tried, though. So, the thing is, the thing that I'm getting at here is like, yeah, I agree that him not going after uh, the criminals that the police are chasing, like, yeah, he can't do anything. What I'm saying is that with the level of inference of, oh, well, maybe Dimitri had to talk with uh, the teachers, which is not on screen at all. Okay, well, we can apply this to that mugging scene that's considered character assassination, which I agree is assassination, but I would not defend it by saying, oh, well, maybe they, they had guns or knives. You can. Which would have made Peter You're welcome to defend it that way. This. I think that's fair, but the problem is he doesn't do I, anything. I don't think... Well, no, so, it's totally well, fair to assume muggers have fair. guns and knives. You guys just said that earlier. And I agree with yes. you. Yeah, I thought right, that was but, point that Yeah, that's made. fair. So, um, right, my brother... But... Uh, uh, SK, let me, let me uh, bring this up real quick. Sure, okay? sure. Um, so my brother was uh, talking to me the other day. Um, when a small child falls into a swimming pool or some body of water and you're the only one there, you have an absolute responsibility to jump in there and save the kid. Um, don't think that's unreasonable. When there's like 10, 15 other people around, though, um, that responsibility, it, it, it's kind of like, it's not 100% on you. Not when you have, you're the only one who's noticed. noticed. Um, if, but if other people have noticed, though. Yeah, I agree. But in the scene we see with him on the street, nobody else has even noticed this is happening. And that's, that's the... And besides, you still call attention to it. I think if you're going to save the, the child that fell into the swim pool, you'd call attention to it. Totally. Yeah, so I just don't think the Spider-Man 2 scene will ever work. Yeah. Well, I think the the idea is it's not a comparable inference, right? Like, that's yeah. the gist of it. It's not comparable to what's happening in this scene. I would call it a hole rather than a contrivance. It is a hole that Peter acts the way he does in that scene. Well, unfortunately, you know, I've, I've seen many people uh, argue, well, he ends up running into the burning building to save the girl. Yeah, that's later great. On. It's like, yeah, eventually he helps. Eventually. <laughs> so, um, I mean, so, because, because, um, no, I don't want to deviate, um, but like, with great power comes great responsibility. The reason why that's so meaningful is that it applies to everyone at all times. It's like, your power level is equivalent mm -hmm. to, you can help people. It's not just if you're Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Um, should we, we move on? Well, I was going to say, um, uh, yeah, I'm, so uh, if you guys we, want to hang on to, I'll say so. Well, I was just saying, it might yeah, be so worthwhile to. Yeah, so what I'm going to say here is that. 
Oh, you, sorry. Uh, you uh, just <laughs> real quick, <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, it, I wonder if it would be uh, fair for us to jump to Winter Soldier for a bit after whatever you're gonna say. Um, sure, I think that's fair. Um, what I want to get out right now is like I don't, I don't think we're gonna agree on this point, and this is like we're pretty much at like a stalemate right now. So I think it's, I think it's fair to move on uh, to the next point. Totally. That's always there. Okay. Yeah. So um, shall we? I guess uh, so. If, in terms of categorizing issues in uh in Winter Soldier, I suppose it would be a good idea to start with the I I would say like the, the most apparent immediate, uh, scene that like kind of significantly damages that movie which is the fury assassination scene um so you're talking uh, about when, guess... uh, when he's in cap's apartment no 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 so what before that the the one i call it the so fury car action car scene oh the car chase, the fury the car chase. Scene. okay um because because yeah there are there are a couple issues in far from home before that point but um the fury assassination attempt attempt is like the the clear break where uh everything starts to fall apart um I guess uh I guess before we start, like what are you what are your guys' thoughts on the on the scene as a whole, like if you were to to, to categorize it? Very, very bad. Um, Disastrous. Yeah, it it's a fucking dog shit action sequence, honestly. Okay. Um All right. so I suppose uh for for the for the people at home, a brief recap of what happens in that scene. So this is this is after Fury's talk to our uh, Pierce. So he is in his car, his very strong car. Um, some cops look at him on the way where he's driving uh, elsewhere, and then the cops pin him down. Fake cops, so are thirty fake DC cops. They pin his car down, uh, try to shoot down the windows. Then they get like a big battering ram and try to break it down. And the window integrity gets to one percent, and a gun pops out, and then Fury shoots all of them, and then drives away. Big action sequence happens, and then Winter Soldier is standing in the middle of the road that Fury turned on to. Uh, blows up his car, it flips, and he uses a lightsaber device to dig a hole, uh, which he escapes out of when Winter Soldier doesn't pursue him. That's the broad overview. Um, it's a disaster. Um, it it breaks the movie. Uh, it breaks the movie. <laughs> like, the the movie is broken I, I, up from this scene on. So, I would agree with, like, most of your criticism here. The one that I don't agree with is the one about, you know, the Winter Soldier not just jumping in the hole, um and then going after nick fury so here's the thing well, all right uh, we can uh, wait wait wait, wait, wait. So... that was that was the summary so we'll, we'll go oh, from the beginning sorry sorry yeah we'll go from let's, the beginning let's... so uh the initial problem as i see it is um why did they even allow fury to get into this car if they were planning to kill him um this is the most safe that fury is ever and in this, this car compared possibly to the any most instant possibly the most public way to assassinate him too Oh, also, it's very Absolutely. public. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the the idea of getting thirty fake DC cops is that not going to cause any problems at all for like Hydra? Thirty DC police officers killed one of the major figures of a uh, defense department of the United States government, and they're not even real. Yeah, they absolutely. can't be registered. Or they're not, not even. They're not even real. Yeah. Um, and of course, the the most glaring one. Why didn't you just send Winter Soldier in at the beginning to blow up the car? If you're going to do it in this car, like we're not going to do it beforehand. Why? Why was he not there at the very beginning? So there's no way that Hydra could uh, cover this up, basically. Get another cover like, what up? It, I think well, it's going to no cause them Hydra significant issues. Would be able to cover this up. Cover like, what like, up? Sorry. To cover up this um, public assassination, that like if you've got, um, so I'm not saying that this is uh, like a solid defense, but I'm trying to offer some sort of pushback so that you can demonstrate like yeah. why it's why it would be a weak defense. Okay, um, so you've got Hydra that's in control of Shield at this point, right? Uh, Hydra's in part of Shield and it has control over the Insight program. Yeah. And other uh, every every apparatus it's not exactly shield, clear. I think it's safe to say, yeah, but it's not clear. But I mean, surely if they if they were able to cover up um, other killings that they did, uh, there's a particular one that I think that Mahler is aware of that I I'm referring to that I'm going to just uh, oh sure, but down low. You'd agree that this is catastrophically public compared to that. Oh, it's very it's very public compared to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't see but, that you could ever cover it up. Thirty DC police officers killed the well, head of a but, defense department. But does that mean that those uh, those thirty fake police officers were Hydra? 
Uh, well, this is what I was going to say. I'm not entirely certain of how everything will roll out. These people will be on some form of a record, and they'll totally. be... Uh, if they are found and interrogated or whatever, I, I don't know exactly how this all would end. But um, I also find it fascinating that Winter Soldier is just standing in the middle of a street. The, the guy who no one can confirm necessarily exists. He's right there. Yeah, yeah. what I would say... In broad daylight. Yeah, what I'd say about that is I think that's the thing that makes this really hard to cover up. The fact that, like, he's supposed to be a ghost story and he's just, oop, right out in the middle of the street, just casually mm -hmm. assassinating it's Nick Green. No one pulls out the cameras. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then we, we proceed because there, there are more issues. So, um, so well, they uh, need before... to use the. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, well, I just want to no, point out. So, the thing with the, with the fake cops, right? Um, that could be anyone. It, it's oh, if not you, necessarily Hydra. If you want to clarify, Hydra's in control of. It doesn't okay. bring down Hydra. I, I think I agree with you. Yeah. yeah that's 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 um, the yeah. main uh, defense that I'm. Or the main point I of think that particular defense. My criticism isn't that Hydra will be brought down, it's that they're incredibly incompetent to have done this. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that there's there's that's certainly many like there's a there's thousands of better ways to kill off Nick Fury than this that are less public. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the funny thing is they keep hands. power leveling in the scene. Like every single thing they bring out on top of what they've brought out was better than the thing they had at first. And it's just like, why did you? Mm. Yeah. You know, why didn't you? Might just be send sort of a plan program. A, plan B, plan C, yeah. plan D. Wow, plan A should have been Winter Soldier just blows off the cut. Well, plan A should have been to kill or just he even got one of them. This yeah, one yeah, of um, you have to keep going backwards. <laughs> If the logic is to treat Fury as, you know, like he's betrayed the state, he organized a mission of miss, French mercenaries to attack a S.H.I.E.L.D. ship, he's, he's trying to do it for money, they can kill him in S.H.I.E.L.D. HQ and cover this up just as easily as they would uh, mm. blowing up with 30 fake cops in the middle of, of the yeah. town. I, I don't really... Through the, uh, through the elevator scene, but with Fury. Because remember, <laughs> they, make, they make Cap, like they start a manhunt for Cap. They can do it for Fury, easily. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, so there's that, and then, um, so they, they shoot the bullets, that doesn't really do anything, they get the big battering ram, however, later we see that the lightsaber Fury has is strong enough to cut through the car that is bulletproof. Um, is mm -hmm. there any reason why these guys don't have lightsaber that they can use to um, open up the door? If they did that, that would expose that they would have gotten that from S.H.I.E.L.D., because that's S.H.I.E.L.D. tech. Um, but they're cool with sending Would that, would the, that do that when it's what, just all that I would be would, in... Would, because if you remember, that that is already in the scene, right? In the car. That's already happened now. So whatever wait, happened wait, consequentially wait. as a result of that. What I'm saying is like the crime scene still has that with how the scene runs, and I don't I don't think Shield will have trouble dealing with like what are they gonna say? Like, does anyone even know that that's Shield tech? Like definitively? Mm. What the 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 lightsaber that Fury has? Yeah. Yeah, like who and even if they did, what does that prove? Everyone knows he works for Shield. And uh, what? Sorry, let me clarify. Um, so, if one of these guys uses the lightsaber to get in and kills him, um, and then a crime scene investigation is like, wait, they broke in using like super heat. And she, like, I don't know how do they tie that back to Shield definitively. Well, they wouldn't be able to tie it back to the police. That's for sure. Um, it would. It. I mean, it would be a giveaway that they got their hands mm -hmm. on something that Shield does have. Well, so does Iron Man, right? There's a lot of people. I imagine. Uh, Strucker Future probably tech. does. Yeah. Uh, there's been aliens that have invaded. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you can tie it back. In fact, I would say that you can't. I think perhaps, like, that, you know, you know the... that Vulture oh, created sorry. weapons. Well, we know that Vulture in this period of time has been creating weapons that are able to cut through things like, like I said, that. aliens there's invaded. It's going to be hard. True. Exotic, exotic tech. And so that's true. Yeah. yeah. So I think, like, in the world of the MCU where, like, technology is modern, it's like, yeah, there's probably crazy people out there that have their mm -hmm. hands on really, like, hot uh, lasers that can cut through a lot of things. So, yeah, that can cut yeah. through this car that's, like, basically invincible, um, that it took, like, 10 battering rams to cut through to break the glass. But you have that. And then, um, well, also, uh, when, yeah. when the lightsaber cuts through Fury's car, it's also, uh, its armor has been, uh, like, the integrity of its, of its armor has been heavily compromised by all the stuff that's been happening to it in the scene. Uh, sure, the roof specifically, though. And also, it doesn't just cut through the car, it cuts through it all cuts through at the, the same time. And, yeah. It doesn't seem to be halted by the car, yeah. is what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, and don't worry, we'll, we'll get to the hole. We're not even there yet, so, um, uh, Fury's like, wait, we're gonna shoot when the window integrity is 1%. If it had just gone to 0%, he'd be dead. It would've shot and they would've killed him. Yeah, he somehow um, knew that it was going to drop to one, or at least he hoped. 
Yeah, enough so, that he could destroy. Oh well, wait, yeah. uh, wouldn't he have just started have a... firing as soon as the window was shattered? Um, it takes so it goes window integrity one percent, and it's like now, it and then it takes like, a second for yeah. a thing to pop up. So like, if it just mm. broke, they would have just um, started killing him. To be honest with you, so, I'm gonna change the criticism to um, he probably should have just died regardless because there's so many people aiming at that window. The second it smashes, they yes. fire. He somehow manages to shoot all of them before they shoot him. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, and so there's that, and yeah, none of, I wrote it, I wrote it down, none of the cops shoot him for some reason, <laughs> question mark. There's some, um, there's some sketchy plot armor in this scene. Yeah, yeah, so, so once uh, he drives away- Which part are you referring to, for like, them not shooting? Um, so, when the glass breaks, nobody shoots him. Like, they'll just run away and get shot, nobody manages to squeeze off a shot and kill him in that. There's like 30 cops out there, nobody gets him. check the scene real quick. It's plot armor, um, it's, it is like- it is hardcore plot armor that nobody manages to shoot him. I, I agree. When you have like this many Ooh, things, aiming absolutely, at one person, yeah. I'm looking at it all right now. It's yeah. it's Sorry. it's really bad, really bad. Yeah, so so we, we got all that. Yeah. Uh, so he drives away, <clears> and Fury first port of call is not to immediately contact uh, Tony Stark or Steve Rogers or Maria Hill or like anybody to say, "Hey, I'm being a target, a targeted for assassination. Get help." Yeah, I think Tony is... Uh, he says, give me uh, Agent Hill, communications array is damaged. Oh, well, he goes for Hill. Do you not have the um, phone in his pocket, though? That's actually a good So point. I think you're referring to earlier when he calls yeah. Hill. Um, I was going to say, that's what I was, but you're right, he should have a phone. Yeah, where is his phone? He doesn't... yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just, um... In fact, actually, he does have a phone when he goes to Cap's apartment. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, out of phone. So, you should have used that to try and call someone. Um, and if the logic is it's too hard to drive, it's like, well, he could just put it on speaker, and then... You, you know, know what? Well, so I mean, he, he auto-drive, you know? I like the idea of him calling Tony, and he rushes in to save him, and then they have an awkward drive back. Yeah. But, um... Uh, and also, uh, like, just throughout that whole sequence, nobody manages to shoot Fury. In he's doing, many instances. He's doing a lot of, like, leaning back in his chair, and you just have to accept that nobody tags him. But there's a lot of times yeah, where they like, look like they have yeah. the clean shot, and they just don't. Even, yeah. even if he was, like, leaned back enough, like, his hands, they're on the wheel, and, like, the bullets mm. are hitting pretty close to the wheel, so it's like, if they hit his hands, it's like, it's it's game over. Well, the car can drive Definitely. for him, but, but, um, well, yeah, right. but his hands it are, would like, still be game over. Because... You're right, it would be game over, basically. Um, so we got yeah. that. And then, after he beats all the guys that he shouldn't have been able to beat, he turns onto the road that Winter Soldier happens to be on. Wow, bad luck, I guess. So just to like, clarify, just... it's an intersection, right? Like, he could go one of three directions, and he ends up going down the one that Winter Soldier's right. already on. Yes, that's like, right. Like, I think so that the, he... the way to fix this particular part, I'm not saying that uh, this improves the scene at all. Well, I'm, it, it would improve the scene if they did this instead, right? Like, what we have right now is bad. It's a very simple fix. They just don't have him do that turn. Have him keep going down the road that he was going straight on for a while, and we could infer that... Uh, whoever these guys are, communicated, all right, get the Winter Soldier uh, onto the Ahead. street. Yeah, I can agree with this. That's, I guess so. That's uh, better. Yeah. It's better, but still. But they, they turn what left if, what and if it's, yeah. Turned, but I guess there's other yeah. things, like, what if Fury had, like, you turned and gone the other way? Does that, like, make it, then what? Well, well the idea is, is why... that he's headed down this particular street. So to dispatch the Winter Soldier to this street, where he's already headed down, there's more likelihood of him going straight than turning left or right. So sure. I guess they if I that, were Hydra, yeah. I wouldn't want likelihoods. No, yeah, I, 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 South Pole's right. Yeah. It would turn into a bit. Well, it's it's super lucky right now, and it would just be, oh, that, be you know, that's, yeah. That's more, that. If yeah, you yeah, ask yeah, me, if someone's barreling better. down a street, are they going to go left, right, or forward? I'd be like, probably forward, probably. Oh, right, sure. Um, yeah. All I would say is to beat them at this is to just have Winter Soldier be there at the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, cool. be or the, uh, you have. Reason. A Winter Soldier. Well, it seems like the gun can be operated by anybody. You just have all th the th a person at each end, but it, it's Winter Soldier's in the right place, the right time. Mm -hmm. Just oh, have one of those fake cops shoot the disc grenade, and then boom, it's done. Yep. Or just have Winter yep. Soldier shoot Fury at his house. Yeah, uh, anything uh, that would probably have worked out. But yeah, so so we have all that, and then but we don't Fury get our cool didn't... action scene if if they do that. So it's, <laughs> that's not well, yeah, that's not my on. defense. I'm not I'm not sincerely saying that. It's just.
Yeah, we so, got you, um, don't worry. So then Fury digs a hole. I don't know where the dirt went. Um, and I, so this, I don't know I don't if even, how much time that. I want to spend on it, but this lightsaber fascinates me and always has. Um, now, Same. I don't know exactly how sewage systems work underneath, but um, we assume he is cut down into one, right? Because otherwise it's just soil. It has to be... So, he... yeah, yeah. So there's um, there's a manhole would... cover very close to where uh, Nick Fury's car ends up. You can say that that's convenient, and I would agree. Um, oh, well, yeah, it was know... convenience. I was going to say he, he has to be in a sewer. Like, we're okay with that. It's just lucky that he was. Yeah, it's lucky that, 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 that he's there. Um, but I don't know how thick the, um, like, how much soil there would be in that case. It seems like it's, uh, like, about half a foot of concrete, which is nothing to scoff at. It's it's ridiculous that he um, cuts not, through this. Yeah, I'm not even highlighting speed. a particular criticism yet. I am simply wondering how it works. Like, it does it yeah, project does a, the is it literally a lightsaber and he cuts the square, or is it something else? I think that it, that he cuts a square, like um, like a lightsaber. It's not like a thing that he's digging with. I, that's that's my that's the most reasonable thing that I can glean from what we have here. And if so, what a great weapon! People should just be using that in fights. I mean, the heat well, the heat it must generate would be intense as fuck. Someone's keyboard's really yeah. loud. That oh, would be S case. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. It, it's 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 crazy, and then of course, why didn't Winter Soldier just jump down and well, kill him? Um, Apparently, there was a response that for that. One. So, so right. yep. the problem here is, so, um, I have gone. Well, so first off, um, uh, given the way that the hole is cut, given where it is, um, Winter Soldier would have to probably awkwardly get into the car to jump down the hole, unless they were to move the car. Um, if he jumps down there, he does not know, uh, like, first off, he doesn't know what Nick Fury's physical condition is, what Nick Fury is armed with, uh, whatever gadgets he may have at his disposal. If Fury has, uh, fought off these guys that he shouldn't have fought off, to be clear, um, and then after having his car flipped over, he's done this, uh, I would be, and I were like Winter Soldier, I'd be like, what the fuck is this guy made out of? I'm not jumping down a dark hole, uh, without any reconnaissance, um, Especially if I'm like the most valuable asset that these guys have, um, right. I would probably want backup to arrive first and be like, "Hey, let's send like a couple of uh, low-level goons down there first, um, so that if Fury is say waiting to get a shot on me down there, they get shot first, and I know that there's a threat down there. And if um, there's no no one gets shot, I know it's safe, and I'll proceed." Do you feel that okay. he operates with that um, level of safety in each of his action scenes? Um, no, but it is a smart thing to do, um, regardless. It's yeah, the cautious way to do this. To be clear, we think that Bucky does a lot of incompetent things in the action sequences, so... But we Fair don't enough. want okay. to criticize it for being inconsistent when he actually No, of course you're right. Compton, um, right? Um, I, I'm not he's sure I'm Compton, convinced. Yeah. I feel like he might have maybe even tried dropping a grenade down there or something. Yep. Um, sure, if but we like, know that he, that he knows that Fury is a man, Sorry. he knows that he's injured, like from this, he flipped a car, he's got to be and there's some level of injury. So, here's wait, a big old thing if... to remember. Go ahead. Here's something else that's important to remember what if Fury just like flees and goes to a safe house? You're fucked. Like, Fury's <laughs> gone, you've lost him. Not worth it. Yeah, but there's but there's another risk involved in that. So what if Fury is well distance away and he has his gun ready? So when the Winter Soldier jumps down, bang, he's gone. That's the thing is, uh, it, Winter Soldier has no idea of what's waiting down there for him. So if you say he could throw a grenade down there, sure, that's still going to take some time for him to do before he gets down. That's still going to give Fury ample time to run away and we don't know what the um under like like what these sewers look like how many corners there are how many corridors and hallways and intersections there are i do i do think you guys have a point with that it's just that he's like got to... so little time mm -hmm. i i totally agree he's got very little time but when you've got tons of corners and different hallways that uh, could very well be down there, and again, reference. I don't. I, I would love if they showed a little bit of Bucky following him down there, and they just established why it would be so difficult for him to follow Fury, even with uh, the little lead that Fury had. Um, but for this, is is um, is the point of the? Is it is it an issue for either side as to the fact that it's going to be pitch black down there? 
I think that's a fair point. Um, um, there's, yeah, is that, I think what, we're, for either side? what we can agree on here is that there's a lot of factors for Winter Soldier to consider, and we could, if we leave, um, he should have chased him, and just we'll just focus in on it's absurd that he has this device that can mm -hmm. do this in this amount of time, and Winter Soldier could have probably killed him had he not strolled to him very slowly. Fired a grenade that's, launches that's... through the window. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, what? Could have, he has a grenade launch. He has he, guns. He usually, yeah. Oh, guns, yeah. He's got the guns well, around, the, yeah. Does he have a clear visual on Fury as he's walking towards him? Well, if he went prone and got the gun out, right? Mm -hmm. He was the world's greatest or assassin. Or if he had run, if he had run faster rather than slowly walking over to look really cool. I just um, think prone with pistol out and he's got him. Yeah. Maybe. I, I, I can't... Well, he, I can't he would have to have him because yes. Fury has to pass through that line of sight in the doorway to get down, right? That's true, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I, I think so. Yeah. Can Fury, well, um, can Fury see the Winter Soldier approaching, like, his feet? I think yeah. he can, yeah. He can. Oh, He's looking at him. That. He All looks right. at his feet. Well, Fury's looking and at... And that's when he well, pulls the lightsaber. Fury, no, not just his feet, but, like, uh, the Winter Soldier, like, his entire body. Mm. So he could have gone prone and shot him, yeah. I just, yeah. I don't see... It. Well, you know, you, you would have tried, surely. Yeah. But, he, um, but I mean, he, does 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 he uh, does the Winter Soldier have reason to believe that Fury has this device to begin with? Well, I don't. I don't, I don't know that he wouldn't be doing the smartest thing at every turn, right? He's supposed to be that good. Yeah, like he's so, not petty. He's not showboaty. He is efficient and ruthless. He will just get his mission done and then go away. Mm, yes. I, I feel like uh, again, it's reasonable enough for him to walk up to the car and and uh, kill Nick Fury at point blank range. But yeah, sure, he could also go prone and and shoot him. I say, especially with the blue I... light, you're like, what the fuck's going on in there? Mm hmm. But I mean, does that give him reason to believe that he's got a lightsaber that's doing this absurd thing? Well, I mean, you, you can even see he would be aware of that tech, before, right? Yeah. In fact, yes, he should be aware that Fury would have access to that tech's Fury shield. Hmm. Fair point. In fa wait a minute. Is it fair to infer? You see what you guys think of this, I guess. Um, that car has a lot of software that requires like auto driving, different things. Like, would it be reasonable to infer that Shield might have remote control over it if they wanted to, since they can override Fury's security on everything at Shield? Um, if that were even the case, I wonder if that uh, array would have been damaged by the initial onslaught. Oh well, I obviously would argue they do it before that. Oh. Um, without you know, just shut down. Oh, not, not there that. Being a reference well, to Fury having, uh, sorry, without re without there being a reference for a shield being able to um, remote control all of their cars, uh, I wouldn't make this inference. Like, do we have a direct so, reference to that occurring? I just wanted to bring this up. So, um, when Bucky sees him like using like the when he sees like the light thing, um, this is like how close he is at the time so i don't know i'd say it seems kind of risky to just use a, a grenade at that point and if if he had if, if we want to say oh cool well he can uh move back to maintain distance it's like okay well that by then i think fury would have gotten to a position in the in the sewer where he could aim his gun and if bucky lands in boom he's done. i'm i'm willing to move yeah. off of the chases sure. and down to the sewer thing so uh i could sure, imagine sure. honestly if he sees his legs if Fury has a gun, he could shoot you in the legs, and you fall over, bang in the head. This is why you got to be quick. And there's another thing I think safe. it's worth bringing up is that it's it's the corners are like singed. Well, they're hot. Yes. How did Fury do this without seriously injuring himself? Yeah, that was something I found a, a little bit questionable. Like, let's say he tries to get in, it's like okay, maybe his coat can take it, but I don't I don't know. That's not really established. It would be weird if his coat uh, could take it, but the car can't. Neither can the mm -hmm. concrete or... Yeah, or that's good I would say that, that is a substantial inference as well. Um, especially compared to even the hacking into the car thing. But mm. the reason why we list all of these things is this scene breaks the movie. It's done. Mm. Because if Fury dies, that's it. That's... That's... Ooh. That's... Oh, right... Rags has run away. Oh, Hi, no, Rags. Looks like... oh Ragsy, um... come home. Is that, um... is that Hill House? Or well, I'm was... referring to Lassie, come home. Oh, right. <laughs> Ignore um... me. Uh, anyway. 
Uh, yeah, so so this scene breaks the movie because Internet died. Okay. if uh, if Fury dies, uh, to, yeah, I I was said it. So, well, what's on this scene? It's breaks super the movie. super consequential. Yeah. Um, it, well, so so this is the inciting incident, and without it, the rest of the film doesn't happen. Uh, Captain America doesn't get any suspicions. He's not even involved. He won't be able to figure it out. Bef um, they won't be able to figure it out that. before Insight goes ahead. So, which means yeah. millions die. So, so the movie is automatically bad. Like, no matter what happens uh, after well, the scene, it's... I don't know if I'd want to go that far. That's this... the thing. You're saying it's, it breaks the movie. but So here's the thing. So, when, when I'm talking about um, the, the deal in that movie... Um, like that breaks the third act. It's like everything that's happening in the third act is happening because of that deal. Like it's a constant effect on on the movie. Whereas, um, it, like it, it's 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 actually what the plot is revolving around in the third act of that movie. Yeah. I Whereas understand. with this, it's like this is really bad. It can be rewritten in a certain way to uh, like we can keep the the rest of the movie as is. You can't do that with the third act of Spider-Man 2. You, you um, get what I'm saying? So, yeah, and to uh, maybe bolster you, I'm not sure. So, you know, like, Return of the Jedi has... In order for the Death Star to explode and the Emperor be defeated, there is many components that have to be functioning. The Ewoks defeating the Stormtroopers is one of the weakest of all of the links. However, okay. there are other links that do function. And so, mm -hmm. I guess I would want to say, like, so this... If we had the line that is Winter Soldier, and it starts out pretty good... This point, we've just cut the line into shreds, and now we're going to try and get back on track as a result of this scene, and then we'll judge. I would, I would argue, we try and judge the line once we finish. See how much in tatters or stretched it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I think it's important to mark the break, though, because the inciting incident can't happen this way. There are so many issues that it just can't play out the way that it does. Because it's like ten issues stacked on top of each other that contribute to this. Just well, yeah, not every functioning. every time Furious spares, uh, it prevents the the cataclysm that is twenty million people that being killed. Inside. Yes. Well, yeah. So. Um, it's like I said, when you have a character being shot at by a couple dozen people, and they are they're all just missing because you know stormtrooper aim is just a thing. Uh. You know, to the point where, yeah, again, none of them get a single tag. Uh, is crazy. Um, that's bad, especially when that, like, that person that is spared by this yep. plot armor is, like, this is how many people's lives are saved. It's a really bad thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Seems like you're leading up to a point with this one. Oh, no. Why, why on earth would you ever suggest that? It's just a standard I... that I have in general. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad you have that standard. All right, I'm really glad you have that standard. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm glad yeah. we've we've covered about five percent yeah. of Winter Soldier's problems. Yeah, uh, you know what's great is Ooh. like about these types of debates is just everyone here is just like in agreement on what is a good what standard. What the pro? For... Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most yeah. part, but I not... still think there's there's minutia and it's good that there is because uh, otherwise there would right. be no point right. in listening to any one of us over the other. It would all just be robotic. Um, exactly. I, I guess I'm uh, enjoying this to... discussion here. Same. To summarize, to summarize, though, we, we have a few things in that scene of, like, Hydra is absurdly <clears throat> incompetent. Absurdly incompetent. Um, even Very Winter Soldier so. is, not, is still kind of incompetent, though. The incompetence is, is still to come for him. Um, and if Fury dies, millions of people die, because that's the consequence of his death. They don't figure out about insight in mm -hmm. time, and millions of people die. So it's, it's, a, it's a significant roll-on effect of this particular... Uh, seen on the rest of the film but uh since we've just covered a really big chunk of uh winter soldier would you like to uh bring up some points far from home pick a topic sure so um i'd like so to last skip a, well skip well, last a little bit ahead to the oh sorry no, no no i was just gonna say last last thing that we were on with far from home was the stuff with uh brad finding the uh taking the photo of peter we can move on from that point i feel like We've spoken about to our heart's content. I don't think that either side is convinced of the other side, and chat's just going to have to decide whose argumentation they found uh, most convincing, and we're going to have to move on. I just, Does well, that make sense? I think it's a contrivance, not a whole. I assume... Oh. Yes. Okay. I, I'm yeah, happy to fine. say that there was a Yeah, I think we agree. Yeah. It's, it is contrived. Yeah, I don't think we ever called it a whole. We 
meant to call it a contrivance. It, it's, okay. it's a contrivance that stacks on yep. top of the, like, it's like the beginning contrivance, and then you get the stack of contrivances in the bus scene. Right. So. To clarify, I don't want to spend too long on it, but what would you, if you can, like, bullet point style, what are the stacked issues of the bus scene? Sure. So uh, we can, we start off with, like, okay, um, Brad, ooh, ooh. he takes his, and I think this is, I don't think this is necessarily a contradiction, I just think this is a contrivance, but uh, Brad, like, okay, well, actually, I should take some, I should send some screenshots first before for reference for what I'm about to say. Um, so... Like, how far the bus has traveled from the little rest stop? Yeah, yeah, I think I've, we need I've, to get those I've, screenshots. I've got um, those screenshots So right the here. reason why I was asking for bullet points is so right. that we could, like, just be, like, agreed, or then we can focus on one if we disagree. Okay, yeah. This is the only one we'll have to be a bit reference heavy on, but we, that, we'll get through this quickly. So, do you see like the two locations right here, where they arrive and where they are at the start of the bus scene? So right? I agree already because we don't need to spend time on this. That he Good. spends an incredibly long amount of time preparing to send the text message for some reason. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I and agree. Peter takes yeah. a, a long time to try to stop it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when. Uh, He's told, like, uh, by Edith, initiating strike, releasing kill vehicle. Um, the drone shot out from space. It's going to the bus. It lasts at least, like, 26 seconds, and that's ignoring the time between the time where it cuts from space to Earth where the drone is. So in all that amount of time, Peter could have been like, cancel the strike, cancel the strike, cancel the strike, cancel the strike, and he doesn't do that. That's at least eight minutes, by the way. It takes about eight and a half minutes for a space shuttle to leave Earth and uh, reach orbit. This is science fiction world, so I don't know if I want to. Okay, talk about well, how long I can I can accept it for the world, sure, but, but would you at uh, least concede that he should have said cancel the strike? Sure. Cancel... Sorry, I didn't catch that. What was it? There is a there is a time disparity for sure for how like long it takes uh, for the drone to get there, and like how long it takes for the characters in the world to recognize what's happened. Yeah, yeah. Well. We'll give it that it took 30 seconds from the, for the drone to get from space to Earth. Would you, you still know, say I, like that's enough to... I agree with this, actually. I, I didn't even think about this mm -hmm. before, but you're right. It's it's The way they do it is very movie-like. He orders it, then we see the entire yes. process of it arriving, and it's only until it comes right. next to the bus that Peter goes, Oh my goodness, Like that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so then, movie um, obviously, I think you... Just moving, you know, that the, there is time moving beyond what we see in the shots, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then... Um, he conveniently, like, just right at the time it would be inconvenient for him, Flash takes the glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of inconvenient. Uh, so then, yeah. Yeah. So then he hits him, he says, uh, don't kill Brad, and then the girl, like, at, again, just at the time it would be inconvenient for him, she says, did you just punch Flash, and conveniently enough that distracts him right at that moment. Yeah. Um, it's, that one less so for me. It, just, it seems likely that if anyone heard or saw it, they would comment on it and it might distract him. But I'll, I'll give it to you oh, that sure, like it's still a. Uh, it's like it, it's likely to happen, <laughs> but at the well, very moment you'd need it to not yeah. happen. Yeah. And it is built on like an already established contrivance. Uh, sure. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, um, Peter webs the wheel on the bus. Nobody sees that, even the girl he just talked to like seconds ago. Um, yeah, that's a, he's, that's some, it's a bit of luck there. If, uh, it's, yep. it's a, it's a tough, like, the way we see it, she wouldn't see the initial thrust, she might just catch, there's something white that goes from his hand to the, to the truck right before it moves, which would have distracted it, like, the movement of the bus, so, if you ask yeah. me in that moment, let's say, for right. example, the film actually has her noticed that, I might be arguing, man, she could easily have missed that. Hmm. You know, and so, plus the fact that as soon as the car, the bus swerves, it's like, oh, big distraction, big distraction. Of course, of yeah. Like what you're thinking about at that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. She's looking so at then, Peter before the bus swerves. Oh, but also she's pretty far back in the seats. I just noticed she's not like right next to him. She's a few rows back. Sure, sure, yeah. It's just you know, it's it's a bit lucky for him. Nobody on the bus ever saw that. Uh, maybe I'm just saw, lucky, but like right? that wouldn't be convenient. It's a it's it's lucky, but it's not like insanely lucky, is what I would say. Sure, that's sure. fair. That's fair. Um, then when he 
says, look at the baby mountain goats, like literally everyone on the bus except the driver and maybe MJ is interested in it and he jumps out of the bus, webs the drone, and he he lands back in and no one saw that. Completely also, agrees. the fact that he was able to land back yeah. in the bus, like jump, like ride your friend's pickup truck and then jump while it's moving yeah. and see how that goes. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. All so, garbage. I think that covers it. Yeah, I, yep. I'm not a fan of the bus scene. Um, I quite hate it. Bus scene's stupid. Very stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we agree there. Um, so, I would like to skip a little ahead. That, that's like kind of a oh, opposite yeah. of go, go for it. Mm -hmm. Um I'd like to skip to the final battle because I feel okay. that's the best set of examples we can use for instances of plot armor where Spider-Man should have been dead, but he's not. It's like it's like Edith is the tentacle blade on steroids. So, um, interesting. Okay. Oh, well, I agree with that. that. So, I don't at the moment, but let's hear what you have to say. Convince us. Sure thing. Um, I'm gonna, this is timestamp heavy, so I'm gonna have to pull them up first. Um, Mahler, can you go to, uh, 14028? I can do I that. I know what scene you're talking about, because I've already got it pulled up and I'm watching it. Can you, can you repeat the, oh, shit, the like... stamp again, please? 14028? Um, it is, yep. Gotcha. Oh, so what I'm seeing is when they're, um, approaching the... The British guards, and they're heading the into the. So, I think uh, what you want to so... see is the very opening of the sequence on the London Bridge, where the drones start firing on Peter, and he starts Tower Bridge, around, right? Tower yeah, Bridge, yeah, the Tower Bridge. Hey, fucking... Yeah, I know. I've been <laughs> there. I should know that. Yeah, <laughs> they even have a line in this movie about. Yeah, he called it the London Bridge. Yeah. It's actually the Tower Bridge. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, no, I know. All right, if, <laughs> yeah. is this? If you want to, just so that I know, if you want to just post what you can see, and then. Uh... I'll, um, I, should um, to, I think I've got yeah, it. Yeah, just let me move back a bit, um, because my thing just glitched, so I have to re-pull it up. Um, is, um, I'll just post, is, is this close there we go. to where right. we uh, are looking to be? Alright. Um, or I, yeah, I think I that's off? pretty close. That is, um, I'm pretty sure I'm, I know It's a where bit it, off for me, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is where I'm at, right? Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to pay a little bit. It's a quick shot, and it's like a blink and you miss it, so you have to pay attention right, right here. But there are drones that just close the distance with Spider-Man, um, some of which aren't even shooting at him. It's just when Spider-Man swing that particular direction, they're just closing the distance with him for some reason. Instead of if they just kept their distance and shot at him, it's like, oh, that's over. You've also just got a ton sorry. of drones that are just static in the air. They're not oh, doing anything I'm at so all. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. So they're resetting the simulation. Okay. What do you mean? So, like, they're re they're rebooting the sorry, illusion. Beck says, after, all like... right, kill the illusion, and we need to reboot it. There are a lot of drones. Right, but there's a problem with that, a... too. So, Well, hold on. So what we know is that the simulation that Peter has destroyed was choreographed because there was probably, I imagine, so much data and so much going on so like as soon as the thing is compromised a little bit the illusion i think you might have cut out there up. for a moment fringy oh, uh start off with the choreographed it was all so, clear um, for me so oh, well okay so what we Just know what we know about the what we know about this particular thing is that there are a lot of drones and that it is a simulation that is very big and relying on a lot of interconnecting parts under the belief that the simulation won't be compromised in any significant way so as soon as peter shoots his uh electric web you see that the simulation comes apart, not just for the ones that he shot, but for other drones elsewhere. So it's safe to say that it's a very interconnected simulation, that there's a lot of elements interacting with each other. Um, so as soon as he kills the simulation, we see that it's like, all right, kill it, and then we need to reboot it, and it's taking a while. It takes time. We have a bunch of drones that are sitting off in the background. Yep, I think it is safe to say that those are the ones that are part of the reboot from the simulation and that the drones that Beck has sent after Peter are the ones that they have available to use to try and kill him. Okay, so there's a couple of things to break down there. So first of all, mm -hmm. the drones that are already being sent towards Peter, would you agree that um, once they kill, like let's say they kill Peter, all right? Would you agree it's pretty simple to put them back into the formation that they were supposed to be in because isn't this like automatic based on something that's already sorry why would we what? assume that it's simple why would we assume that it's simple there's like um, thousands because it's of drones 
Well, based on the illusion sequencer system, it's like they'd have to be in specific locations, and they would just have mm -hmm. to go back to said locations. Like, you get what I mean? They would. It was a big simulation that they shut down unexpectedly that they had planned. I'm not going to go and assume that it's really easy for that simulation and drones to just well, get moved around and set up like that. Um, um but they don't they autom uh don't they operate off like automatically being set in a sequence and uh they're like because we'd see in the illusion test scene like that they were scripting this so it's like okay if they you were scripting mm -hmm. this it's like isn't it really simple to just organize the drones in that same vicinity and then once you've got that it's like okay they just need to start projecting again i'm pretty sure like that's how they work I don't see how we could say that it's that simple considering how many drones there are. But I mean, in terms of the idea of there are drones off there and these are the drones trying to kill Peter, it's like, so Beck believes these are enough and there's a lot of drones. Right. But um, the thing, the thing about that is uh, he, Spider-Man is shown destroying like numerous amounts of the drones when they're just sent in like small chunks, which he does the whole time. It's like, but if you had like all 500 small chunks, of them, it's like 30 of them. Um, well, yeah, that, well, small relative to the amount that they have, that's what I mean. Um, so, mm -hmm. if you sent, like, um, even with 30 of them, it's like, okay, you have, like, all 30 of them distance from Spider-Man, uh, well distance from Spider-Man, where if he tried to web it, it's like, okay, but you're not getting all of them in time. Uh, so if they're well distance and they shoot at him all at once, it's game over. So the big problem that you have there is that Spider-Man is already in motion. At this point, it's going to be very hard to get him because this is specifically what Spider-Man does. He's quick and he moves around really quickly. Right, it, but like, that's the thing. Fast. Yeah, he's fast, but he's not that fast. Like, if you were getting, if you're being hit with like a rain of bullets, it's like you can't just dodge that. So it's my question volley. is, he's already yeah. in motion and Beck needs to be safe. So like he's well, yeah, going he for Beck. If you get the distance on them. I would imagine that just firing at Peter if he's gone for Beck could easily kill him. And as we know, Edith I'm, is already taking sorry, into what? account. So if you get a bunch of drones to sit back and shoot at Peter, and this is again after he's already gotten in right. motion, which he has, um, so Peter swings towards Beck. They're all firing their bullets towards Peter. The bullets hit Beck. Like, that. Um, that so that's it. Game I'm not over. necessarily talking about... I think you're confused here. So I'm not talking about the scene where he's in the hallway that's not what I'm no, no 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 right no 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 to clarify so he peter so we know that beck is in the in the tower uh the tower bridge on the top floor so peter's already right. gotten himself moving he is going to head for beck you get all the drones to back off and then start shooting at peter if he gets too close to beck before that happens it's over because he could it could kill beck with and all the also... with all the round like the other fire that's coming around but then we have I'm, a scene where we've got like a I'm, ring of, of drones circling around where Beck is and they aren't firing on Peter while he's so on the ground you, on the bridge. If, so if you have like 500 drones that are shooting at Peter, I'm going to go ahead and say that there's a good chance that some of those bullets are going to miss and that there's a good chance that some of those bullets could hit Beck. If you've got them at a distance really no, far they away won't while because, Peter is swinging well, around. Let's, what, what do you mean, no, they won't? How could you possibly me, say, no, they won't? Let me show, let me show the reference of how the the building is i'm gonna have to get some pictures for this because a lot of this is purely visual so um so i i know what part you're talking about right so there's, there's there is, yeah i know that there's a formation of drones around that area but what i'm saying is what if peter swings by near that because bullets just keep going he doesn't even need to be close to that for the bullets to fly in and kill back problem is he's he out of wet fluid at this point yeah, at this point, I thought we were talking about at the beginning. So, we're, I thought we were talking like earlier in the, the may, movie. Maybe, maybe I'm talking about a different point than SK is talking about. So I, well, here's SK what I here's what I want to clear. Shot. Yeah, um, I think. Yeah. So I think the best. Um, so I'll give a timestamp real quick. Um, mm -hmm. I I'm just gonna get there real quick because just going through the movie. Um, so go to one thirty nine oh nine. 13909. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh. All right, so just hit. Yep, I know that part. So so give me a second. So just hit play. Um, yep. We're just agreeing on what's happening here. So Spider Man falls down. He gets rammed into a drone. He falls right down yes. there. So he's just on the ground, all right? So if he's yep. on the ground and the drones are shooting him 
while he's on the ground, it's like, I don't see the drones hitting Beck when Beck is in the tower and he's at a completely okay, different height. So, I'm so glad you brought that up. The simulation is still running and they need to shut it down. Right, but he intends to kill it. And the thing is, he, the thing uh, is, he, he uh, hasn't thought this of that time yet, frame that I'm talking point. about, the, well, hold up, hold up. So the thing is, the time frame I'm talking about, it's not just all, like, not all of it is when the, the illusion uh, is in place. Uh, it's also when, here, let, let me just play through it just to clarify. Okay, so he kills the illusion, Spider-Man is still, like, on the ground like that. And then mm -hmm. he sees, like, Happy is, like, uh, in his plane or whatever. He sends drones to blow it up right there. So he's clearly willing to use the drones at that point. So at that point, he could have sent the drones while Spider-Man was just down on the ground. And he doesn't do that. He just waits a long time. So part of the thing that's going to be the issue there is that we're assuming that all of these things are running in real time. Like, that they're running in real time when... Oh, which... Oh, I see which part you're talking about, right? What's so like, running he's in real got time? The... Well, no, okay, so... I get what part you're talking about, right? So the jets landed, and then he sends... Uh, I'm talking about the up. part where... So no, what you, I mean is... Um, coming and they're getting blown up. The drones were flown out to blow it up. So uh, what I'm talking about is when he lands, Beck says, what the he hell is that? Then we see Happy leave the, the plane. He goes mm -hmm. to talk to uh, all the kids, and then yes. Beck blows it up right there. Yep, because he saw it. And then... That's his priority at the moment. He sees Sorry, what? Because rem remember, like, Beck's the person who's, like, determining what the drones are doing in terms of shooting at things. So that's what he's seeing. That's what he's looking at. And we know that this is what, like, how it works. Because when he sends the drones to kill Happy and Peter's friends, he's controlling those drones specifically. But the drones are going after Peter on, like, an auto thing. They're on an auto-engaged sort of, you know, thing going on. Um, so in terms of that... When we look at the scene where it's like edith give me some protection they knock peter away and then they form the defensive barrier around the the thing and then later on it's like all right now kill him because the simulation's getting shut down i think it's safe to inf see like you can see in the scene edith give me protection it's like yeah defensive dome that seems like a really good idea uh and then you know start sending the drones to kill the friends and then kill peter so like what's the issue Uh, my issue is that he takes a while to say target Spider-Man when he could have said this earlier. So, he's got a lot on his mind at the moment, considering that the simulation has just been shut down and he needs to figure out what his plan is to make this work. And that's what he's doing yeah, in that plan... scene. Okay, but he's when he sees, like, Happy's plane, instinctively, he decides to go blow it up and uh, he plans to go kill the kids himself. So at that point, like, yeah, he's in a state of mind where, okay, I see something happening, I'll do, I'll send the drones to do something about it. So I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure he's equally capable of, um, even prior, when he's just uh, asking him to run to the illusion suit, he can say, hey, Edith, kill Spider-Man. I don't know that he, because he doesn't even know what his cover story is yet. Like, what's his plan? Yeah, what is his plan after his um, uh, illusion gets destroyed? That's uh, another thing that we haven't really touched on yet. Like... Well, the... no, hold on, one topic at a time, right? Because we've got to get to that later, because sure. that's character-related. We're trying to figure out what exactly is happening at this moment. Sure. Um, I don't know if this helps, when he... but, like, the way I'm I'm going back and forth in this scene, so it seems Spider-Man falls, lands, then we see yep. Beck is thinking, and then he goes, all right, shut down, so he's, like, reset. So if he's got kill mm -hmm. Spider-Man as a target, uh, as a goal, first of all, shut down the simulation, that's, like, base ground. Then... As he's talking to his team, because they say some... St if you remember, he's, like, furious that they're even interrupting, but then he's like, oh, actually, no. Yes, the suit is important. Yeah. Um, then we see Happy's scene. I don't think... Because this is the, the limits of film, right? I don't think we're supposed to believe that Happy is doing all this and he's just doing nothing. This is happening while mm -hmm. he's giving those orders to his team, and then he sees Happy. Like, straight mm -hmm. after, sends them after him, and then that explodes, and then we have him say, go after Spider-Man. Cure Spider-Man, yeah. And then, okay, so and then that's where we go from there. I think it's a fair conclusion. Like, okay, I guess like it's not all happening like, um, like I, I guess in real time. Um, perhaps like is well, that is that what you're trying stuff to? That's happening stuff is happening concurrently. Some of these things, it's safe to okay. say, are happening at the same um, time. I think that's fair. But what 
Um, I like to get back to what I was initially talking about because I, th I think that's fair. Okay, we'll go. We'll work from there. Um, so when Spider Man, like when I was mentioning distance closing, where sp like in the image I sent uh, in the chat, like that part, uh, would you agree? Like, yeah, the drones in front of Spider Man. Why were they closing the distance? If they mm. shoot at him, they could hit the drones that are trying to shoot Peter, right? Um, well, they're already trying to shoot uh, Peter with the drones anyway. Yeah, the drones uh, are all yeah, shooting. True. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. so uh, like, um, I'm willing to agree that there is a bit of plot armor in this. Yeah, in this sure, fight. Sure, sure. Um, oh my, I just realized I glossed over this one. Um, okay, so there is one thing I forgot to mention. Um, let me see. Okay, so go to 138, um, uh, 16, 138, 16. You could, uh, throw a screenshot, because I think I'm out of sync with you guys. Uh, so that's, okay. the so this the, is... that's the part where the drone turns around and sees Spider-Man webbing stuff up. Yes. So, um, all right, I was... that's the screenshot I have of the shot. So, here's the thing. He sees him right here. He t uh, William says, uh, do you see anything? And Mysterio says, yeah, I'm going to kill him. But the thing is, like, during this entire time, he's not doing anything about Spider-Man when he knows that he's breaking the formation. He doesn't send a drone after him to ram into him like he does later in, or, or to shoot at him. He's doing nothing. He's just standing and watching it happen. This takes place over the course of like 10 seconds of Spider-Man jumping around, attaching the webs, and then shooting the electricity. He does not have a lot uh, of time. I don't, I don't believe so. Um, so. What do you mean you don't believe so? Let me just count real quick. Um, I mean, are we going to count seconds? But like, like, we see what happens in the scene. I, well, okay, says, so yeah, I'm going to I'm going to play it right seconds. now, and I'm just going to prove that like, in these instances that Spider-Man is doing this, like he had so many times to just say, Edith, uh, hit Spider-Man. Um, um, isn't isn't it worth bringing up the state of mind? He's just discovered that Peter's alive when he thinks he should be dead. He's about to destroy his entire grand plan. He's, yeah, but he's thinking. Sure, but he literally, sure, but he literally says, "I'm going to kill him." So mm -hmm. he knows that and he's going to kill and him. And then in we that see moment. what happens as soon as he says, "Yeah, I'm going to kill him." Spider Man puts one more thing on a uh, on a drone, jumps off, shoots right. The webs, but and in the like, amount of time. Falling. Sure, but in the amount of time that he was doing this, it's like, I'll, I'll start playing it right now. And when I start saying, uh, Edith targets Spider-Man, uh, that's when I'm going to start, that's when I start, like, uh, playing the part where Spider-Man is webbing and he's, like, about to do the taser, right? Uh, Edith, target Spider-Man. Edith, target Spider-Man. Edith, target Spider-Man. Edith, target Spider-Man. Wait, Edith, I thought so we were talking about how complicated the simulation is. And not to mention, um, he's probably thinking, like, do I start shooting at Spider-Man at risk of bullets flying all over the place? So, and obviously, eventually concludes yeah. yes. It's like, is it that ain't a lot of time. Well, he can this use the, is, the, this the is a, blast. He can I just ram wanna, him. I don't want it to be underestimated how significant this moment is for, for Beck. Like, the, the, this changes his view on it. This is destroying his entire vision. So, well, yeah, he, he doesn't have like, I just, I don't like, think it's unreasonable that he takes uh, 10 or 15 seconds to calibrate himself and then figure out what he's going to do. He already figured it out. He said, I'm going to kill him. So that's, that's yeah, a desire, not that, a plan. Yeah. What does that mean? What that is, kill well, him. How? I mean, that is his how? plan. He can just send a drone to hit him out. So, if you say, like, I'm going to kill someone, that isn't... That doesn't tell us anything about how exactly he's going to... Is he going to shoot him, or is he going to try and make it look like it, a fake simulation thing? What's his... He doesn't know yet. Yeah, because one well, option he could have is to try and make... that he can just hit him out of the... I mean, the, it's you're, possible you're, that he So could you're right, that, there are like a thousand yeah. options he has. And he's probably thinking of all of them, which is the best one to do. And it takes him a couple right, seconds, but... or 10, 15. I, I, like, I really don't think that's unreasonable. I don't know. I guess uh, I guess we'll just move on with this point because I don't think we're... I think we're at a stalemate mm -hmm. right here. Sure. Um, which is... Alright, that's fair. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So, you know the part where... Uh, I don't think I need a reference for this. Or visual reference, sorry. Uh, you know the part where Mysterio is, like, trying to uh, find out, like, where the, where the kids are in the... 
uh, in the tower bridge because he's trying to kill mm -hmm. them. So, yeah. like, the drone, it's, like, approaching them really, like, slow and, and sneaky about it. But the thing is, it's, like, okay, these kids, like, they have phones, like, at any moment. They could be, like, alerting the authorities or they could be texting people trying to spread the word. So the, so the point here is that um, you want to kill them as quickly as possible. Um, yet he just, just decides to do this slow, like, oh, I'm going to search through it, which... A couple things. One, we know that these drones have thermal vision that can see through walls, so they could have used that. Secondly, they have missiles, so if they just like launch the missiles within the within the vicinity where the kids, the only place like the kids could hide, it's like okay, they're done. Just sorry, I don't know much about thermal vision. Can thermal vision help you see like through walls? So I'm well, not so really the going of... with the. The type of technology that uh, that we're working with in the MCU, like Falcon's uh, drone Red Wing, can has some type of X-ray vision. That's what we see in the beginning of Civil okay. War. Yeah, yeah, sure, fair enough. So these these drones likely same would have with the Karen same. and Iron Man. I want to just quickly highlight that was a thing that SK said about Prowler's thermal vision. Yeah, I I messed that up the not rules correct. of the thermal vision. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in regards to the thermal vision, so we even see like with brad on the bus it's like the the drone can see like brad and other students uh through the walls through its thermal vision so sure that's another another reference so which basically you like yeah it's a contrivance that they that like it's yeah not just would you would you whatever uh well i mean yeah this is i would say that this is like yeah the sort of kind of standard plot armory things like in uh okay. in, in these types of movies which doesn't mean it's good it's just yeah it's standard plot armor yeah say. yeah absolutely so um let's see uh if um would you be cool with the switch Sorry. back over or totally um well i think you still have more for plot armor well i was like... gonna say it seems it's, it's yeah, completely up yeah. to you guys if you wanted well because plot armor that's gonna take a long time to go yeah. through both films plot armor true, true. um i was i was curious more if we um, could push plot armor to summary if, if that makes sense not that you can't yes. bring up references bring them up wherever they come up in the scenes i just mean there's so much plot armor in these movies like if we were to yeah. do that exclusively i feel like it's going to take us through scenes and then it will randomly jump onto different topics while i think the other way around would be better yeah yeah hmm. so you um, just want me to like breeze through it real quick uh well do you want to just i'm assuming so you're talking about the plot armor of the final fight um yeah. If you want to do the rest of the references for the final fight plot armor, yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Um, let, let's see. Uh, okay, so 141.56 I want to bring up. There we go. So we see the drones after Spider-Man right there. They're behind him. Um... And they know like he's behind the car. They're shooting at him. It's real lucky none of the bullets are hitting him. Like, they're hitting things around him, but like not him. Yeah, so I I know which part you're talking about. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that is like the most plot armory that it gets in this in this fight. To be honest with you, like the, well, the, that's the worst it gets. Um, there's one more, but not this is pretty exactly. Bad. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, this, this is, is pretty, pretty bad. bad. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing is, so 142.03, when he's like uh, behind the car and he's talking with Happy, um, like in that shot, none of the drones, once again, they're not shooting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Happy, thank God. I bought us some. Yeah, yep. that's true. Um, yeah. And then 142.28, let me get there. Um,. So, do you see, like, when the drones are, like, doing their little flamethrower thing? Yeah. So, here's the thing. If they were to use bullets in that instance, he's done, because we even see the fire reach him. What? I mean, just because you can hit someone Wait. with a flamethrower doesn't mean you can hit with a bullet. Like, Fi it's... Flamethrower is AOE. Well, yeah, but the yeah, bullets are... AOE, it... Sorry, what, what was that? Oh, it's, 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 it's an area of effect attack, uh, which means it doesn't well, have... Yeah, yeah, what a bullet. Sure, sure, but it seemed like at the trajectory, uh, trajectory that they were pretty much capable of at least, um, like if 
if bullets were used, they would be capable of hitting him. And I would think um, bullets at this uh, used against him would be more reliable. Um, um, would you agree that if they'd missed so many times up to this point that they want to try a flamethrower to see if they can damage with it? Um, I mean, I guess that could be, I guess that could be a reasonable inference, but, um, I don't know, because they do try to use bullets repeatedly throughout later on, so I don't know if that, uh, would really hold. Well, well, the, the, the flamethrowers aren't going to be in range when bullets are. Uh, in a lot of cases, I imagine. Sure, And the sure. flames don't so, quite work out. I, I guess they could conclude, like... Seeing, so yeah, fun. that's fine, that's fine. Well, I'm seeing quite a few other instances of there being drones very close, like, flamethrower distance of Peter, and, oh, I'm seeing one even still firing a flamethrower at Peter. Mm -hmm. In that case, it's all going to be individual drones making decisions based on what's working and what's not, I assume? I, I suppose. It's, it's obviously chaos. Oh. Well, you suppose, I mean, we know that these ones are kind of like almost on autopilot, like the ones that are going after Peter. Well, yeah, it's running on some sort of AI that's essentially yes. able to run multiple drones at once. Uh, so I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know what the decision making process is for each of these drones. But it, like we can say at least it's convenient that they pick certain other weapons. Like uh, when we know that a bullet would certainly work here, and instead of using a bullet, it uses something else. Like I don't know, one of the concussion blasts. It's like so you've got him dead to rights, and you hit him with that instead of a bullet. It's like that's pretty crazy. Well, that's uh, AOE again. Well, yes, but then you've got like several um, drones using concussion blasts at once, as opposed to just raining fire on him while he's knocked down. Well, if you remember, and this is where the criticism probably should lie, they believe they've executed him with that move. Yeah, which, that is like the, the which, dumb yeah. part. I was, yeah. But it, you that, can't have yeah, both being because dumb. we saw him... Hmm. On top of that, he's like, he's knocked down. Like, they, they for some reason, they don't he continue is... firing on him after they knock him down with the first concussion blast. Yeah, because they, yeah, they set up to do a full concussion blast to blast a car into him. I, again, I, I'm not the person who operates these uh, drones, but obviously it worked as far as they were concerned. I guess the most charitable assumption that can be made is, <coughs> I guess they wanted to go for an area effect right here, because, um, because he kept dodging like them when they were shooting bullets. So um, that's why they decided to go with the concussive blast, but... The issue with that is, like, once he's in the water, it's like, okay, at least send a drone to make sure that he's dead. Yeah, Because if he swims I out... Bang. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Really dumb to not confirm the kill. Yeah. Uh, completely agreed, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, this is, this is something I... All right, so... 143.53, yeah. Um... Okay, so do you see like the drone? It's like just shooting over and over again. Uh, conveniently, it's shooting over and over again. Conveniently, it's right in the location that would be beneficial for Spider-Man taking down Mysterio. Yeah, to be to clarify, it's uh, it's shooting a concussion blast. It's like it's down yeah. and it is positioned right underneath where Mysterio is, and its concussion blast is randomly going off. Yeah. It's convenient, yeah. I assume that Spider-Man yeah. would have come up with a different plan of some kind if it weren't for this, but this makes his plan way easier than it would have been. Yes. Yep. Also, it's, um, it's a bit weird that he runs out of, like, web fluid here, considering... Yeah, that's um, strange. It's, it's like, all yeah. the web fluid that he had in Infinity War, <laughs> he never ran out in Infinity War or Endgame. It, and he it felt to me like a really arbitrary uh, restriction they put on him to make him do something... Like, an, he has to be in, he has to create a, you know, he, he has to craft some tech on the fly, which is a cool Peter yes. moment. Yeah. It is a cool Peter moment, um, but it's contrived. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Um, a very egregious instance of plot armor is, uh, so, 145.04, um, or, yeah, 145.04. So, that's a lot of drones shooting at him, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, keep playing. At one point, Spider-Man puts down... Well, not puts down, but he puts the shield aside and exposes himself to being hit. And none of the bullets hit him. 
at all. Yeah, it's, it's super lucky. Yeah. Um, and another thing that I'm that I have a concern with is that while this is this object is being thrown, the the drones they don't dodge it. I don't know that they know what it is. Well, I mean, it's a, it at least would be like you know his method of trying to attack them in some way. So I don't know. It's I, at least. I am not but sure. Like, what, they could just register sure as debris. Them. It's just like it's debris. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. I don't know that we would assume that. If if his whole thing is these are the drones that are protecting me, they move out of the way. What if that's like a bomb that's going to hit me? If that's what they thought as well, but yeah, I think it's safer to assume that it if was just a break. Well, I mean, if they thought it was a bomb, it would be better to use something, I guess, um, like the concussive blast. Like obviously, maybe it'll still result in the drone um, exploding, but at least there's a chance that it would be blown out of uh, their way, which is a better. Uh, option than just letting it come to them. Assuming that it was a bomb, which they might not actually, now that I think about it more. It's just debris. Especially so, if they're trying to kill Spider-Man. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the explosion itself, and um, this looks like it should have killed Beck. Like, we see Beck getting see. rocked by this thing. Ooh! Um... Why that do you would think have it blown out the back? glass. Well, I mean, first off, it would have blown out the windows. Uh, the shockwave would have been like he would have been standing very close to it. He, again, he gets knocked backwards by this explosion. Yeah. The the windows would have uh, blown up. He would have been shredded. Yeah, I I guess yeah. I I didn't think this was an issue at first, but yeah, shockwave and the glass shards. He'd be cut into ribbons. He'd be like Rosie and Spider-Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> all, all of it would have gone into his eye. Fortunately, he doesn't just look at glass. He actually... Uh, did he, does, does Mysterio, <laughs> wait, does Mysterio actually cover his face here? I want to see. He I doesn't need to cover his face. I think he does. He's keeping it down. A helmet on. He, yeah. Oh, that's true because of the, the helmet. He yeah. has the helmet on, yeah. That is true, but he still looks away from the explosion because that's well, what yeah. people I mean, do when, he, when Windows why, explodes. Yeah. Fringy's not no, criticizing not, it. <laughs> all right, I think, I'm yeah. pointing out that Spider-Man 2 did this worse, Fringy. Come on, yeah, let me help okay. you. <laughs> well, I, yeah, all right, sure. Um, is that all the plot armor then? For that um, scene, I assume no, there's more. Well, not all of it. Yeah, but, for I mean, that part, yeah, this is the... Okay. We're about to get to the most, the most egregious... Wait. Um, so I'm just gonna, because my thing is playing right now, so I'm gonna wait a bit. Are you talking about so, the hallway scene? One. The hallway yeah, scene, the hallway. Yes. So one thing is, so a couple things to break down here. One is that when the drone shoots him, it's like, uh, we've established a rule later on though that like you know if he's in the strike zone, they're not gonna shoot. So, what was that about? Where was that warning right there? I brought up the why would they shoot the strike zone thing for like 500 drones at a distance if Peter got really close to that area as a counter to the idea that they should fire like 5 billion drones. But in terms of this particular instance... Well, yeah, but when Spider-Man's on the ground... When he's on the yeah, ground, he's, he's not in the strike zone. Or if he's... No, we we got past that point, so I'm not even going to... Because we already yeah, talked about yeah. that. What was Fair happening enough. in that Fair team. But, so, but, in but terms would of you agree team, like, yeah... In terms of this scene, would you agree this goes against, like, the whole you're in the strike zone, we're not going to shoot uh, rule? Well, no, because they're shooting forward at Peter. I also assume the strike right, zone it's... isn't a definitive section. It's going to be relative mm -hmm. to back and Peter. Yep. Hmm. But, like, this, there's still, like, uh, the fact, like, I don't know. If Beck is just being in the same hallway as him was enough... For the drones to like so not. Uh... What, so well, I guess we're going back to it. So what I was saying was that if you had like five hundred drones at a distance shooting at Peter, if he swung really close to this section of the bridge, the bullets could hit him. I think that's pretty different from he is well, on the other even... side of the. Yeah, that was what we we're talking about. But uh, but anyway, they're on the he's on the other side of the hallway. They are shooting forward and away from Beck, and, and the four drones that are closest to him. Are I would not caution. Firing. They're too close to him. If he can't shoot here, then he's going to lose, or at least very likely lose. Mm -hmm. hmm. But like that same, uh, that same logic would apply if 
the drones don't fire at him uh, at all when Beck is in the strike zone. I don't know. Um, but sorry, if we're going to go I, with that... I, I, sorry, I'm like... I'm What I'm saying with the, the other one before was... So you see that picture of the bridge that you've shown where the explosion was? I'm saying if you had 500 drones yeah. really far away and Peter swung really close to that, that would kill Beck. So, like, if he well, got... If if the if the 500 drones are shooting at spider-man he's not gonna get a chance to get close there no i thought we'd already established when he's already gotten up because the period in which he spends getting up into the air no is yeah the i agree i agree but still drones. like if you have right i still agree so like, if, if you, you have, agree like, then, five... then that's different then he, he just webs if you've got him at a distance he doesn't need to and they need to like get ready to shoot at him he's got enough time to jump up there and just hug that wall and then no, but he's over. not going to be able to jump up if there's 500 of them shooting at him. That's I thought trying to we already. Range. I thought we already said that this is after he's already gotten into the air because we know what was happening in that scene. That during that scene, what, what do you mean in the, the air? Like, I mean, I'm talking about when he says uh, target Spider-Man. Yeah, which is at the point where he's already gotten jumped up into the air. Now, as soon as he says target Spider-Man, like two seconds later, Spider-Man's in the air. Is that enough time to get 500 drones at a really big distance to then start raining fire on him from a safe... Well, like, there's already you know, quite... Like, there's already dozens of them, re like, pretty close to him that can shoot him before he would get close, so... Yeah, and they start shooting at him. And then he ju and he's jumping up into the air. But you said that what they should have done was gotten, like, a 500 drones at a distance to just rain fire on the bridge. What I'm saying is that if they did that, Peter could just jump up and get there, because he's already in motion, and then that's done. But um, but we did already go over this, so I guess. My sure. Question, yeah, I'm happy to move on from that. Um, and I'm saying, and I'm saying that was a counter to your suggestion that they should do it from a distance. That's not strictly relevant to what's happening here in terms of this strike zone, uh, in terms of like the hallway scene. Um, stop while you're sending. Uh, yeah. So I've just I've, I've noticed yeah, some, so like, minor you... minor continuity fuckery here. In um in the first picture, I believe that is Spider Man holding Beck by his left hand. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, his left hand. Um he's got two drones behind Beck, mm. and then suddenly he looks like he looks downwards instead of upwards, and there's two other drones right there, but we don't see uh like they may four have worked in the one hundred and eighty degree rule with this shot. That might be what's Did he happened. change the? Did he change like which hand he was using, like off screen, or I don't know. That's just a, not a defense necessarily, just a question. Well, it's just we see drones apparently appear behind Peter, and then they're no longer there when we cut away from Peter mm -hmm. getting knocked away. So there's two, then there's okay. four, then there's two drones in this bridge. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I feel like hmm. if you have drones coming in there. They could easily get an angle on Peter where they can shoot him without killing Beck. Oh, Especially but if you remember, he has him. to authorize that. Like, so I think they just use a a move that can't possibly risk hurting. Um, but they, Beck. I mean, they, they hit like some. It's like a. It's not a concussive blast because it's not. It doesn't make that look um, particular like sonic wave sort of effect. Yeah, I know it what you mean. Looks like it's a rocket, like mm -hmm. a mini rocket, which would hurt Beck. Oh well, it depends. I don't know what that device is. Like, um, it could, it could. The fact that it doesn't pierce anything to do with Spider-Man, it knocks him away. It could just be something that's designed as like crowd control. Which yeah, would specifically be... so that it wouldn't hurt back, right? That's what I was saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, shall we move on to the plot armor in Winter Soldier? Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, I was gonna. Because this was the we didn't get to the to the worst part of the the plot armor here, so are you um, gonna refer to the gun scene? The uh, so gold. yeah, yeah, he's like in a he's in a condensed hallway. The drones, um, they're pretty capable of uh of killing him right there. Like, there's not much room for Spider Man to go. They even take forever to shoot him to begin with. It's like he's done. Look at all those drones. There's like 13 of these things in this hallway. Just like Mysterio's behind all of them. Just a single volley of bullets. Well, he can't dodge all that. I mean, I'm assuming we, we kept this in mind the whole time. But like, this is Spider-Man. He has spider sense. This is yeah. the most active it's ever been. Yeah, but he's not like faster than bullets. 
No, the but he's, is, like, he's fast enough to dodge a bullet when it's fired like, from the sound. Right, but he's this is not just a bullet. This is a wall of bullets. Yeah. And they if take have, forever yeah. to shoot at him. Like, like instead of just unleashing a volley of bullets, they decide to shoot one or two at a time as they approach him and close the distance. Mm -hmm. Because like, Spider-Man's really agile, so the closer you get, the better the chance you have of hitting him just because of how quickly he can move. Not, not if it's a wall of bullets, no. There's nowhere he can go. I don't think well, they can create a literal wall of they, bullets. They can't create a wall well, of bullets. Yeah, we're not just saying a literal wall. We're, that's just a... Saying, like what we're if saying it's not is a like wall, there's... he can dodge them. He, he's Spider Man. He can jump around well, really quick and not... run around on the walls and stuff. And keep in mind, not, not all of them can fire because not all of them can fire bullets as well. Yeah, some of them are concussive ones. Counted, that are counted like if you look that. at that setup there, how many of them can fire at once? Yeah. Um. Let's see. And I imagine they probably have software Seems that like prevents them all of from them. firing. All no. of them? <laughs> no. 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 Well, I mean, all of them seem to have the, the gun things. Which one of them? No, all of them can them. fire, no. but they won't mm -hmm. fire. Yeah. I mean, in, unless it's designed by, like, insanity. And also, that they just some shoot of them each are other. specific concussive ones, because that's the last, that's one of the last ones Peter takes out, the concussive one. Yeah, but in this shot right here, we see, like, they have the, the little, like, minigun things on them. Yeah, so... some of them do. Some of them don't, though. It seems like the vast majority of them yeah, do, though. But but again, how are they all going to shoot at the same time, considering how cramped that hallway is? Well, the is? problem is, like, why are you? Why would you go like so up close to Spider Man? And this is the thing: they don't shoot at him until Spider Man hits one of them. I mean, the fact that we're able to see each individual drone here pretty clearly indicates that they'd be able to all fire at once. Um, it's kind of interesting. Other. There was a thought like, here. We don't actually know if we see all of the bullets. Because yes, of the fact that um, it would it would make a lot of sense for Beck to uh, try and uh, hide them as well. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like we see all the bullets, like the tracers, I believe is what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, once the illusion starts to come apart. Yeah, if you notice, as soon as Spider-Man starts hitting them, the illusion starts breaking. So they stop using... So they, so they only use tracers for when there's... Uh, like when there's no longer an illusion? No, the more you break the of them, the less the illusion has integrity. Though, yeah. And the hardest the thing to mask is probably going to be the bullets, so they're the first to go. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't even notice that. Thanks for pointing that out. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a neat pick, I think. I think so. I have a, I have a little question. Can I, um, can a drone yeah, create sure. an illusion of another drone? Yes. Yeah, uh, I think it's safe to say that they can, considering how much they can do. They yeah. can, but I don't... I don't see why, what the purpose would be here. Spider-Man destroys all of these things. Here. I was curious. I was, yeah. I was just wondering. Yeah, like no Spider-Man does destroy all, all of these drones, though. Yeah, Yeah, but Rags was just asking if the drones can create illusion drones. We mm. know that he does destroy all the drones. Yeah, yeah. Are the real ones. It was just a question. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah. Um... Well, Anything else? Is, move on yeah, to? is there any more? <laughs> I told you. One more that One I'd more. like to bring up. Um, so Beck, uh, with his gun here, he just he does this super up close to Spider Man when he just saw that uh that Spider Man took down a bunch of invisible drones when they were shooting him. That's not safe at all. So there are a few counters to that. One, uh he's been shot, so he's hurt. So I do wonder how stable his shot would be if he was at a greater distance. But the fundamental point is, right, but he Spider -Man, did bring. Well, so the fundamental thing is that Spider-Man has gotten his Peter Tingle back. I think it is safe to say that he would dodge any bullet that Beck could have hoped to have tried to fire at him. That he isn't that frame of mind. That he is so high. And at least at that range, he on. guarantees hitting Peter. But uh, yes, Peter can hear him pulling the trigger. So it's too quicker. late. Yeah. But the thing is, he's also doing that illusion of himself at the same time and you can see like you know they're doing like the same hand motion thing so it's like but peter would be able to hear him if he's that up close peter and would he, and get he, access to that regardless yeah. second that gun fires he's dodging that bullet mm -hmm. okay so then like why are you then what would why don't you just escape why are you doing this so up close? Well, why he's, he's already bleeding well, out this is the last he's, chance he's... he has to beat peter He's wounded. Important yeah. to note, right? Uh, but you to don't have to bring him. That, he's just saying it's important to note for both sides that bullets typically travel faster than the speed of sound. Mm-hmm. 
That is um, true. Yeah, but so, uh, the, the sound doesn't have to travel very far, and it's the trigger pull that he would hear. Yeah, it's the, it's, the, it's the trigger pull. Yeah, it wouldn't matter how far the bullet has to travel. The bullet's going to get there before the sound does. But also, uh, so Peter hears the trigger pull, but not Beck at all before that? Uh, maybe he did hear Beck. Also, uh, don't the don't the like the drones mask the the like sound that people make? I remember his um, Peter Tingle is like better than that. And I'm I'm pretty sure he's very low on drones right now in this area. But he's hearing the trigger pull. His um right? his uh his illusion of himself isn't even fully integrated. It just d disapparates as soon as he gets him. So his Peter Tingle is working, but it's not working as he's talking to the illusion back. He doesn't have the. Peter seems to. That that's an illusion. I can't quite tell, but it seems that a broken drone is actually generating it, so I can't imagine it's very reliable. Yeah. Hmm. It is a broken drone, yeah. Uh, but in regards to, like, him being at that distance because he's injured, the reason Peter is even this well, close to him is because he set the illusion um, up in that specific area when... That's where he was. He, he, set, stayed... he set it where he died, yeah, or where he got shot. Don't you think it would be a bit suspicious if he uh, disappeared from where he was shot and reappeared somewhere else? Got to make it believable, right? Um, sh sure, sure. Uh, but it didn't have to be like, let's say, because Spider-Man was like really occupied with the drones, he had to walk quite a bit of distance. So at least to make it so the the projection isn't within a uh, within well, a distance where Spider-Man can grab him. That's if he is relying unsafe. on a projection from a broken drone, how much ability does he have to control exactly where and honestly, he's going to put him? If I could just sort of give my take here, like, I think this is probably the best shot he had. I think he did everything perfectly. Like it, So he goes mm -hmm. down, and you see Spider-Man battling the last drone, or last two, oh. or whatever, and so he's like, shit, I need a new plan. If I fake myself where I am right now, which is probably an inset sort of Thing. He can just be like, clone me, put me here. All he needs to do now is stand up and make as little sound as possible, aim the gun and shoot. If he tries to get further away, that's steps, that's like lots of things to account for, and he doesn't even know that his drone is reliable. Like, I'm a so big fan of this payoff. Right, but he... Well, uh, Sorry, so, no. so, um, Peter grabs the gun, uh, like, he grabs, uh, um, Quentin's, uh, wrist, and... Quentin drops the gun, and Peter grabs the glasses and turns his back on Beck without even accounting for the gun. Doesn't kick it away. So Beck just slumps over by the gun. Could try shooting Peter again. Uh, yeah, that's risky. He's got his Peter Tingle, I mean, though. So I was, was going to say, I wouldn't be worried right? that Peter would have been in any trouble. Yeah. I'd, I'd probably still just have him, like, throw the gun out the window or something. Yeah, or agreed. Sure. In half. Sure. Kind of like mm -hmm. a problem though. That, like that—that that would be like bonus points for intelligence for like on Peter's part. Is like, yep. oh, he's, yeah. he's accounting for a gun on the floor. This is the thing with um, it's a little pet peeve I have with uh, guns and in superhero movies. As soon as Batman throws a battering uh, at a guy and throw like knocks the gun out of his hand, it's like the gun's on the ground. You can still just pick up the gun and try shooting again. I agree. But yeah, when gun, yeah, like it, it does bug me when. Guns are just lying around, mm -hmm. like they're still mm -hmm. in play. Leaving guns just lying around is a really, yeah. really dumb maneuver a lot of the times. Guns are like yeah. yes. the best it, example true. of providing agency to characters, and a lot of people don't appreciate that very much. Yeah, Samuel mm -hmm. Colt made him equal. Um, <laughs> but, okay, um, so... Over uh, to I Winter Soldier. <laughs> problem is that, in terms of plot armor, we could go through, like, out the whole movie, but... I guess to hammer the point in clearly, because we'll get back to a certain sequence later on. But in the final battle, um, the plot armor is like hardcore. It's not even far from home. Doesn't even come close to how bad the plot armor is at the end of Winter Soldier. For multiple characters. Well, I suppose the first question would be: Is if they disagree with that, then we can go through the references. That's yeah, I don't do disagree, disagree with it at all. I so uh, I mean. With Far From Home, like, the best thing that I can think of is this, uh, the stuff with, uh, the Tower Bridge fight, right? Like, I don't consider, um, what happens in, like, with Peter getting, uh, hit by the bullet train as plot armor per se. Like, him surviving getting hit by the bullet train. There's something yeah, about Mysterio fine. revealing that he was Nick Fury. Wait, and not hold on. Shooting. Wait, what? are we getting back to Far From Home again, or? We can, we can go back to it later. I'm, I'm just like, we'll, we'll 
table that one. I think we're, we're um, still early game, so if we should just I'm, we should probably just I'm continue, saying, you know. Like I'm just saying that this yeah. like this right mm. here is the the main thing for plot armor and Far From Home, whereas it's spread out all, like throughout the duration of Winter Soldier. So, but I, I'm Sorry. totally down. Yeah, for you guys especially going that highway fight. So go I'm gonna go ahead and say Winter it's... Soldier is more and worse. But we'll have to get to the proofing, I guess. Yes. Yeah, go ahead and just provide the references because the people that are watching this, they may not agree with you guys yet. Well, I think SJ and I, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be arguing with you very. I was much gonna say the this. Winter Soldier's currently on. I would say it's yeah, currently we... winning. So we gotta, we gotta get going for we gotta catch up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess the problem is like I don't know if I want to go through just a big list of everything in the whole movie, or if we'll get back to some later with certain action scenes. But like in the final battle. Because we we start with Captain America. Uh, for the, for the audience, it might be good to name a couple big ones, and I mean, like, well, like so we still, okay, still we've, got plenty of time. We've named like fifteen so. significant ones for Fury and his action scene. Yes, so we got all those. So I think it's safe to say that those count. We were talking about Peter dodging the drones, Falcon dodging all of the bullets from the helicarrier. Oof, <laughs> Ooh, that is some like hyper fucking. Um, plot armor. That scene, all of the pull all of the shots that he's managing to dodge is insane. Um, so we so we have him throughout the whole battle. Um, Captain America when he jumps on the helicarrier, the amount of plot armor in that sequence is basically Ooh. every time that there are people trying to shoot at him, they don't flank him. They take him head on where he's got a shield. Um, and they always close the distance. They run towards him with their guns. There's some really weird um, ones. Like, I yes. think the way they film it is that characters aren't alive or uh, decision makeable until you can see them. Yes, because um, I think the the clear example of that is when Captain America is like charging towards the door. He's about to get into the door to get down into the room. He takes on about seven or eight guys. They all close the gap. They all run towards him instead of trying to engage him Which, from a distance. Uh... I mean, Which I could give you, you a timestamp, but I'm, I'm, I don't know if it'll be inaccurate. It's after it's it's when um it's when Sam starts getting chased by the uh the the, the jet. So I he's gotcha. flying around, he's getting chased by the jet, this... and then everybody runs towards him. Nobody exists. Oh yeah, yeah. I see what nobody you mean. Nobody exists. Yeah, I remember. Nobody exists until he gets in camera, and they don't try and do uh. anything. And it's, it's funny, right? Because people might be like, "Well, you said in Spider Man, they need to close the distance." It's like, well, the big thing to remember is Captain America ain't as agile as Spider Man. He's also, like, his legs are just right there. His legs are super vulnerable. So, like, as soon as he has not got the shield, he is incredibly vulnerable to being shot. And he can't jump and dodge around them like Spider-Man can. Um, so, there is a lot of that for Captain America. And, of course, with, with Falcon as well, it's like dodging all of these things. And then, like, the, the Quinjet's like, oh, I'm going to lock on now after chasing him for, like, a minute. And then he manages to dodge all of those. And that's that's really neat. Um, Wait, so... did he manage to do that? Um, a question I have, so, were you saying, like, do you think it's, like, an issue that the Falcon was capable of dodging, like, all the, um, all the attacks being thrown The amount of fire that he has to dodge compared to Spider-Man is, is pretty nuts, to be honest with you. Like, he is getting fired upon by the entire arsenal of a Quinjet, uh, not a Quinjet, but worse than that, a Helicarrier. Oh, yeah. Um, with flak, that's the I, big I've thing. I've always been in the middle fire. of that. I, I just wasn't sure. Yeah, because I, I was always in the middle of that, wasn't sure. Is this plot and, or and, I don't and know? And that's so, the yeah, big thing. Great to hear that out. Spider-Man gets hurt. He gets hit. He, like, he gets shot, you know, blown away by shots from rockets and stuff. Falcon doesn't get hit at all. He doesn't get hurt. He doesn't even have a scar. He just manages to dodge all this flak fire, missile fire, bullets firing on him from the targeted concentrated fire of a helicarrier that's apparently got enough weapons and targeting capabilities to kill like a million people uh, in several different cities across the world, which we'll get to later on. Um, and then later on, Cap like jumps off of the helicarrier after he's managed to put the chip in. Um, they have a clean shot on Captain America's back with no shield there, and they don't take it. They fire a rocket at him instead after he jumps off instead of just shooting him in the back. So, so um, these it is worth these. Are, it yeah, sorry, go ahead. Um, uh, it, it's it's worth noting that Falcon is uh, using a jetpack and wingsuit and is a very mm -hmm. small and nimble target and is very good with using it. Um, which, and by the way, flying is going to be uh, a more efficient flak. way. Flak. How do you account for flak? So I don't understand. So um, 
So, I'm not, so like, when, I, when things I, get I, shot... I'm pleading ignorance as to, like, how flak works. Uh, so, okay. flak, so, flak is essentially anti-air munitions. Whenever you're, yeah. um... Whenever you see in the movies, uh, this happens in World War II, mo two movies a bunch. Yes. You have the bombers and planes flying over, mm -hmm. and you have all the poof, 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 little puffs in the air, the little explosions. Yeah, no, that's that, flak. That's flak. It explodes and it sends shrapnel in all directions. Yes. It's like depth charges for air. And gotcha. he's dodging so, like, this is unreal. That's a shitload <laughs> of, of shrapnel that he's dodging. Oh, so, yeah, it's the yeah, whole yeah. thing of like, Gotcha. When Spider-Man gets hit by the explosions, it's like there's there's that, but he is wearing a suit that surrounds him as well. And he's a superhuman. Sam has a lot of and he's superhuman, and Sam has a lot of exposed skin, and it's a lot more concentrated fire. If only someone could make him once. a suit that doesn't have so much exposed um, skin. And I mean, I guess this is anti-plot armor, but like after, so Sam falls down, doesn't shatter his legs when he lands on the ground, um, and when Cap gets knocked off the helicarrier, he manages to grab on instead of falling to his death. Um, you've got those. Yeah, that was crazy. Then, when Sam is on the ground, when Rumlow is going through the hallways, uh, there are there are some yeah. shield agents there, and when he gets there, the first guy he takes spins in the opposite direction away from Rumlow so that he has enough time to stab him. It's really weird. It's unreal in terms of anti-plot really? armor. Let me see this. Yes, yes, please. Where's the timestamp? Um, um, it's about one like forty-eight fifty. For that reference, it's. Time. It's One, after uh, Falcon lands the parachutes. It's yeah. soon after that, and Cap climbs up. Yeah, it is insane. Y'all need to find a better really... term than anti-plot armor. That doesn't roll off this. the tongue. No. It's really? Well, yeah. I just saw. I can't it. remember what uh, uh, I called it. Plot poison in one of my videos, I think. It was oh, yeah, uh, the last of us two playthrough. Um, Plot poison, yeah. So, yeah, so uh, the reason why I bring that up is because <laughs> it's, it's insane. And then it's really course, funny. Because yeah. uh, maybe when he more like up. a oh, you know, what I think would be better a plot drone strike. It just comes out of fucking nowhere. There's no warning for it. It, it just it's bullshit. Plot you know, poison sounds uh, sexier though. You gotta sound the sexy. Problem is like you, you just jump ahead because the next part is a Captain America fight, which I think deserves its own. Sequence where we'll talk about that well, later on. So, I guess so what I was going to say was like, if we've given an, enough standard examples, what because we can go scene by scene and then we can just highlight plot armor as we're going through other floors, if you know what I mean. Sure. Um, because this is this is throughout the movie. The the big one is Cap Shield. It is ev it is where he needs it at every instance where he needs to block himself from damage, and people just forget he has legs and they don't shoot him in the legs, and this happens throughout the movie. There are times when mm -hmm. he doesn't have a shield and Winter Soldier throws the shield to him, which helps him. So like a good instance is um, at the beginning of the, you know, when, when after the Fury assassination, which will, uh, the Fury actual fake, but real assassination. <laughs> Winter Soldier catches, he catches the shield. So like, take it, don't give it back to him. Take it, steal the shield. Well, it's crazy to think that if he had ran away with that shield, uh... it's game, it's over. Wait, do you? You mean like uh, in the in the first chase? Yeah. No. So so what? Yeah, it yeah. Someone that chased him on the roof, but uh, he catches the shield and he throws it back at Cap instead of taking it. Yeah. And yeah. by the way, if you wanted to argue that he wants to, you know, not kill Cap for whatever reason that might be, he can at least delay him. He can do it. He's got all kinds of an arsenal attached. Um. um he, I, yeah. So when he throws the shield back to Cap, it sends uh, it, it like kind of knocks Cap backwards a bit and gives him enough time for like to escape. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Maybe I didn't. Um. Let me rephrase it. So, uh, if he's looking to do that to delay Cap anyway, all he has to do is draw a gun. Yeah, and shoot him. And just well, he doesn't even if he doesn't want to kill him for whatever stupid reason that might exist. Um, he can just threaten him, and Cap will have to back yeah. off or back away. And if not, you know, shoot the floor yeah. around him until he fucks off. And then just escape. Mm -hmm. You know that'll do more than th throwing the shield back. It literally saves twenty million lives. <laughs> it's kind yes, of insane because without that shield, yeah. Cap dies several times over. I'm uh, yeah. The, the only thing that, that, that I'd say about like him not just pulling a gun on Cap is I don't know if I if I can see a, a compact sidearm on him. But it would it would make sense uh, for him to have one on him. You'd have to on a sniper job. He has. But... Two sidearms on his well, back. Well, I see it now. I see it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I moved it forward a little bit. Yeah, he he has three weapons as a I general mean, rule of thumb. It is in character. Winter Soldier is an incompetent buffoon. Winter Soldier is an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> it is in character. Um, That's going to be the, and then, and the then, big takeaway that some people are going to be really yeah. shocked by. And I mean, happens. In, you see, yeah. 
Sam has hardcore plot armor when he fights Rumlow and then, you know, the helicarrier crashes through. Had he been on the other side of the table, he'd be dead. Uh, I don't know how Rumlow's this not dead. He's so um, lucky that he wasn't wiped out by that. He's so lucky. And then he jumps out of the helicopter, falls about six stories, and lands his head so hard in the helicopter that it knocks the door off. He's dead. His yeah. neck is snapped. He's dead. The force it would take uh, for him to, with his head to knock off a helicopter door. And this is, this is assuming that Fury was quick enough to turn it. If he was a couple floors higher, he would have just been turned to confetti. Like, Sam would have been chopped yeah. up by the blades. So that's, you have that throughout the movie. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's uh, that's the plot armor is way worse. Is, we will be getting, getting to more it. of well, it as we progress, I would say. Maybe we yeah. shouldn't claim it's worse yet. We know it is, okay, sure. but we yeah. might have to convince well, you guys, on... if, unless we're wrong, that it is. What um, I would I'm... gather from this is... Oh, sorry, do you want to say something? Well, I, I'm kind of curious because um, we know that S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, well, Hydra within S.H.I.E.L.D., they want information from Cap because Fury was the last person that Cap spoke to. So is it possible that... Bucky was actually given an order not to kill Cap. Like I said, it, it wouldn't like matter if he had, it was okay to kill him or not. He can still shoot the floor around him. Or still yeah, shoot, aim the gun at him. Shield. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, that's fair. So yeah, that's, that's um, a plot armor. What, what I wanted to say was that, like, I already knew that Winter Soldier had quite a bit of plot armor, but I think the, um, the, stuff, the other stuff that you guys are bringing up, like, some of it I didn't even notice. So and there's I'm at more. a point right now where I think... Uh, Far From Home's plot armor and Winter Soldier's plot armor is pretty much like in the same tier of shit. Mm -mm. Um, no. Still shit, <laughs> no. but like pretty close no. to each other, yeah. No, but you're I, not gonna say it. No, I think no. it's fair that you believe that right now. I think that's totally fair. Okay. We're yeah, gonna try and get right, to yeah. a lot more of it. Um, the fact that sure, we're sure. only up like, what, 10% of the way through the movie uh, and there's this many references for plot armor only tells me that there's, it's just like we haven't even gotten to the highway fight yet. Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, and 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 the uh, the missile strike, the the, the airstrike. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah there's there's a, well, yeah. I'm so I I'm almost desperate just to get to that. I want to get to the apartment. Let, let, let yes. me get to the apartment. Let's we go can for it. we can absolutely go, go there. It. Yeah. Um, well, Joe, I, I'll I'll do this as quick as I can. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bullet point all of the problems in the scene, and then we can go one by one if you guys want. Um, Mm -hmm. So, uh, for all we understand, Fury now knows S.H.I.E.L.D. is compromised, he has the USB that has information on it that he can't access, at least not with his clearance in S.H.I.E.L.D., so he decides to go to Cap's apartment that he knows is bugged and being listened to by S.H.I.E.L.D. to tell him not to trust anybody. Um, my first criticism would be, Fury is not Fury, he's acting completely out of character, this is fucking absurd, why is he not taking himself to a safe house, why would he announce himself in a place that's bugged to get killed, only to be able to tell Cap, don't trust anybody. Which is going to be heard if he's not unlucky. But then, uh, obviously, I guess to do bullet points, um, someone comes right in and, and says, Oh my God, C Captain America, Steve Rogers, are you here? And then he's just like, Oh yeah. And she's like, I work for him. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And then she just uh, goes to the body, does whatever she wants to do. And then Steve decides to chase Winter Soldier. He immediately trusts this woman after Fury, who has already lied to him, comes in with a gun and convinces him, I totally work for this guy 100%. I think that's insane from Steve's perspective. And then it's also I'm I'm <laughs> I'm hesitating on which I wanna what I wanna call this. Uh where the soldier hangs yeah. around for thirty seconds as seconds, the most inept yep. assassin in history to leave yourself completely open when he's supposed to be the uh, a ghost story to all in intelligence agencies. So there's two things I'd like to bring up. So Sharon being assigned to protect Captain America, you said uh, that that doesn't make sense? No, I think that no. makes sense. It doesn't make sense that Steve would believe her. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Um, as for Bucky hanging around for 30 seconds, uh, is it possible that he's trying to wait to like confirm the kill, maybe get a third shot on Fury? I don't know no. that that is going to be how he can confirm it, and no sniper would do this. This is like, in, like no greatest assassin of all time would do it. You either, you've taken the shot, you have to get out of there. Mm. Um, especially also, if we have to believe he that he's not even kill, a, a yeah. person people believe exists. This is the... This is the part this whole movie just spits in the face of as a as a that's his that's his thing. It's just like I don't but believe he's that. He's a at ghost, all. but yet he just makes himself exposed on so many occasions. Like yeah, waiting just thirty seconds so the cap can see him. Because remember, that's how the chase. That's the action. Because that's the reason why it happens. He stays there for thirty seconds so Cap can see him. So there's the action scene and grabs the shield. It's like oh look at this guy. That's why it happened. Because none of it makes Something sense. Something that I. Something I'd like to mention is that. 
Um, Nick Fury, typically, because we see this in Avengers 2012, uh, he typically carries, like, a bulletproof vest. Uh, so while, um, while it wouldn't resist all of the bullets, it would provide some form of resistance and... Uh, And it could be like you know maybe he's not officially dead like it it doesn't resist all the bullets right but I want it to can agree at with least you. resist enough for I survival really do. I love you, man. But like, he's got wounds on the front of him, all three. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he got he okay, got shot yeah, in the I back. didn't I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. He is <laughs> Those dead. bullets He ripped is right absolutely through his brain. dead. His Yeah, organs he's are dead. mashed. Yeah. But Fury's plot armor is intense. It's a power he has. It might actually be his power, I'm not sure. Yeah. His superpower, his hidden superpower is surviving through Yeah, bullets. And yeah, the, I would agree. I feel like this is why I call it Cap's apartment. There are, like, these three get significant damage in this scene, and it allows the plotline to be what it is. Had Samuel Jackson gone, I'm going to one of my safe houses that no one but me knows about, because of course he would have one of them. And then he would be like, I'm going to contact Black Widow, the person that I can trust the most outside of possibly Tony Stark. But I, I know he doesn't like him, but he knows that he's not going to be evil. And then he can get the USB to Tony, Tony can hack it, whatever. So many other things should have happened before he decided, I'm going to walk into this apartment and tell Steve not to trust anybody. He puts a target on Steve's back, and he, set, he basically announces to S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm here, come and kill me. Really retarded. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And he's, he's the world's greatest spy, Winter Soldier's the world's greatest assassin, and Cap's, like, supposed to be intelligent. Um... But it's funny as well because Cap is clearly suspicious of her, but then he's like, "Oh, okay, it's chill. You said you work for him." It's like, what? Why? You say this after he's already been shot. Like, What if she didn't? like, well, yeah, exactly. That's the problem. You have no reason to believe that anything she's saying. Um, so that's pretty dire. Um, so, uh, what what you got for Far From Home? What's Should we next? switch over, yeah? Yeah. Um, sure thing. Um, one thing that I want to mention about the climax as well, um, I forgot to mention this. So there's a point where Spider-Man is, is blocking the bullets with, uh, uh, what is it with the, the drone? So the thing is, um, like his legs are unprotected at the time. So could the, the drones just not fire lower? I I understand. Um, I would just say it's probably a little reasonable that the drone is just going to be shooting at the target from what it sees as the Just target. kind of It masked. might even think it Yeah. can shred through the cover. So it's, it's a tough shot, um, but I think it's more reasonable for a drone to think to do that than a human. Hmm. He broke I don't know, up because this owl. these are supposed to be like... Sorry. This is how, um, as a point of reference, I suppose, this is how video game hacks normally are. If someone's hacking in a game to auto-aim to you, to target you, um, you can get behind cover. Uh... Or it'll aim for either the head or center mass. It won't. It won't know to shoot at legs or things of that nature. So that's something. Well, you figure that the drones would target the center mass because it's the most reliable way of killing something. Sure, but like the thing about the drones, though, it's like they're designed by by Tony Stark, and they're to, they're driven by an advanced AI. So they're supposed to be like a lot smarter than than usual. Like they say, okay. There's a barrier that's blocking our shots. Let's go for the parts that aren't exposed, or that I am... are that are exposed. Excuse me. I think if we saw that happen... Um, I wouldn't be saying, wow, that's way too advanced for them. I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. I would, But if I yeah. don't see it happen, I'm like, yeah, that can make sense. But uh, Okay. anyway, that's one instance in this film, and there are a few of those in uh, Yeah, there are, there are like, Soldier. I think two of them or three of them in Winter Soldier. I don't know. I think I need there to. are more than, I'm pretty sure that there are more than two, and one of them is hyper like that. I'm looking <laughs> forward to yeah. getting to one of them, yeah. The, Yeah. the Yeah. one Probably about that, the, that sticks the minigun, out most right? is like, yeah, <laughs> the minigun. Don't That's worry, what we'll I was going get to back, say. we'll get back to that one, but yeah, yeah far from home. What else, what else <laughs> is there? All right, let's um, have a look sure. at the So next. I guess we can talk about the illusion scene for a bit. Yeah, sure. Um, Yeah. so the setup for that is, okay. Um, there's a, there's, there's a problem with how the, um, how the illusions are working, uh, with the, with the fire elements fight. So firstly, um, it's a problem that Peter happens, and this is just, a, this is not what I'm, This is not about the illusion right now. This is about, like, the contrivance. So Spider-Man webs onto a projector, like, right on, right on where he would need to, to pull it out. 
he yanks it, it lands right by MJ, and that allows the rest of the movie to happen. Oh, completely uh, agree. Quite convenient. Yeah, very convenient. Yep. I agree. Yep. And another thing is like, okay, so we know that uh, the drones, they rely on their own projectors to cloak themselves, correct? Um, I think... Um I think we can say that it could be twofold that some drones use their to, their, to uh, do it to themselves and the other drones would be capable of doing it to them because it's safe to say that you can cloak other objects using the illusion tech. Yeah. Well, right. Um, the thing the, is. So the drone that's sent after Fury that really stupidly decloaks itself um, before uh, trying to kill him so that it can get it blown doesn't... up. No, it doesn't stoop. We talked about this. We already covered this. The illusions, the, the illusion was, co the whole thing was compromised because so much significant Not damage. Not necessarily because we do see, we do see some drones that are still capable well, of this, Yeah, in. no, we do. This is one that isn't. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, here's the problem with this. It's not in contact with the taser webs at the time. It's it's, it's like the that, furthest drone that, from them. This isn't a part of the illusion. This is a, like a separate drone yeah. sent oh, well, if you, separately uh, from the illusion to kill Fury. Uh, yeah, you see what I mean? This so, isn't like projecting the, the monster. So if we yeah. know that all of the drones are connected to like one system and that it's a really complicated illusion, is it unreasonable to believe that there is a certain interdependence in terms of the systems working together to make everything work? No, I wouldn't go with that because like I said... Are uh, you saying it's he possible? Or well, not? Here's the thing. We, well, here's the thing. When he shoots the taser webs and he's like... He says, activate taser webs. Um, it's done. Uh, like, he busts a bunch of drones that are connected to the webs. But the thing is, there are drones that are still projecting. And the reason yes. they're still projecting is because they're not in contact with the taser web. Which no, would apply no, to no, the no, 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 no. There are drones that you can see that were not tasered that also yeah, decloak like, and I'm not even, take their illusion down. Whether we can talk well, about it making sense, I think it's very clear that the film is trying to tell us that by fucking with all of the drones of the electricity, it's fucking the illusion on a wide scale, including the drone that's on Fury. So wait, it screws over the drones that are screws over drones over there that aren't even like touching yeah um, there are touching not, electric so to web, clarify but, i'm yeah. not saying that that is the best way to run your software i'm saying the film is saying that's how the software is mm -hmm. running okay so would you admit like that's a pretty uh nonsensical way to design your software i would I, not I, agree that it's i don't think he anticipated this at yeah. all i think he was they were all running on one big circuit this is all a huge plan and then uh spider-man fucked with it well, and it's it's peeling I, away all of the illusions okay well i'm not sure that's the case whether Regardless of whether this is stupid, that uh, wasn't that that drone cloaking itself because it was by itself. Yeah. So d what we were saying was that it's an entire system that's working together to create a very complicated illusion. Think I don't of it think as it's unreasonable to designing... believe that drone is part of the network. Yeah, it's it's a part of the picture. He's painted this whole yeah. thing in prep, including the the drone that's invisible in front of Fury. Fury's planned to be killed. He's, he's this is always this yeah. is a part of the whole thing. But the thing about that is. Uh, there's still drones that are still functioning while this is happening, and they're still yeah, but some of them are parts of it. Yeah, if you yeah, look, it's, it's, it's peeling away. Working. It's peeling away right. loads of them. Yeah, is it not? Why would why would the whole thing be utterly destroyed instead of just parts of it being destroyed? I imagine well, it's all parts trying. Parts of it are destroyed, which yeah, yeah, on. but that was my point. Parts of it are coming down, and parts of it aren't because it's complicated. It's yeah, imagine it's, it's trying system. to compensate for everything. Yeah, it's just I don't know. Up. That's. I think that's a pretty flimsy. Do you, th uh, do you think uh, that it reason. would be better if, when one drone gets shocked, that the whole thing comes down, or would you prefer that if one thing gets shocked, that part of it comes down as a problem with this film? Well, what I would what I would go with it's it's neither of those. I would go with a third option where every single drone that was electrocuted by the taser web those would be the ones that stop projecting not the ones that aren't in contact with it that makes a lot more sense but the thing is you say that why like it's a it... choice i yeah, don't know that the, the system like the works that way do it. what do you it's mean it's a this, very this is... it's a very complicated illusion that, and this system was not built to do this edith was not built to make these things this is like beck's work for a system that he didn't have before that he's working with um why would it be perfect 
He's he's made also, it assuming that I'm, nothing's gonna go wrong. I assume that's why he has to turn them all off and then reboot yeah. and turn them all back on because this yeah. is not what was intended whatsoever. Um, I don't know because I, in this case, then like, why are there still drones that are still effectively projecting it though? Like, we can see that the whole time. So before again, decides. would you prefer that the whole thing comes down or that some of them come down? Would it be better if the whole system went down? Because I feel like if it did, you'd say that it's no. flawed that I, the I, system was built. But I don't, I don't understand why we. You're yeah. suggesting like well, why the, it should work a particular way. The, the film's showing it works this way, and this is a perfectly reasonable way for it to work. Well, I don't, I don't see how it's reasonable though, because um, the drone that's like even further away from it, that one gets uncloaked. But like there are multiple other ones that haven't been uncloaked when it's they're even hot. closer to the illusion, and they're actually connected to the whole uh, elemental battle. This one isn't. Yeah, they Why don't need to be connected way... directly, like literally pixels. They don't have to be connected. Well, yeah, but like, why? I just don't see how it li how it lines up that this one un uh, uncloaks, but the ones, uh, but the other ones don't uncloak. Well, it seems that most of them, of them are screwing up at this moment. Yeah, a lot of them are screwing um, up. Let me, let me you can remember see that. Um, the, the illusion is going patchy, as in turning off and on in different sectors at all times. It's like are my the drones turning stream. off and on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you keep an eye on like, the um the big spooky illusion, it's like it's it's the patches are changing locations until he yes. turns it off. I'll and the big I'll thing check, is that there uh, are just for reference. So well, to to reiterate, he jumps into all of the drones that he took down are in the big elemental, but we see later on that the drones are disappearing on other clouds, on fire, and on Mysterio's own like you know green gas illusion. The whole illusion is coming down in parts. I don't think it's unreasonable when we see that. Well, I'm just going to... Here you go. Make one. This is a quick comparison. This is before he shuts it down for both of them. If you look at those yeah. two, the different uh, things are shutting down and moving yeah. around. And the illusion was not it. built to ta to deal with, like, 50 drones getting tasered. And it's a, it's a software man. they all run on at once. Yep. So, like, every illusion is encountered in this, and so if there's damage done or confusion happening, it starts to go patchy everywhere, including the one that's after Fury. Hmm. Uh, so what? what's your next one? Uh, I'm just looking at the scene real quick just to all see right, if right, yeah. everything's lining up. That's all. Yeah. Um... Hmm. I don't know. I'm not getting the impression that they're just, that there's drones that are going uh well at least their projectors going off and on that's not what i'm seeing here um it seems I, like, i'm not saying flickering drones... i'm talking about like patches of darkness coming around as a result of the software having been corrupted or scrambled try and keep up with what's happening yeah. that everything's coming apart in a way that was not planned for like those two images I... would show that the drones responsible for its head uh, the off or looking to be off when he first does it, they're back on when he's uh, Beck's about to shut it down. Yeah, and again, drones that weren't tasered are coming down as well because Mysterio's tail ones there that are you know on the the green cloud they weren't tasered, but the system is breaking apart because it wasn't built to deal with this, with Spider-Man destroying like fifty or a hundred of them uh, when they thought he was dead. So the thing is, um, so you're mentioning like the the head thing like uh just disappears it's patching like, like it, the, the sequence patching, of it right, is right right yeah like i wouldn't call i'm not going to call it flickering or anything okay so um from what i'm seeing it's like it seems to be moving downward in the uh here I'll, I'll reference where this happens it's like right before he's about to kill it hang on give me a second Oh, uh, oh, um, I mean, yeah, it's back. No, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't I, know what his point was. That's why I was. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you want to uh, catch me up? I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wait on him to uh, elaborate his point himself because 
a, a couple of these things we haven't been on the exact same wavelength or he'll he'll be making a point and i think that he's making a different point and so we end up oh okay uh, I, it sounded like you um once. you could uh, sorry family came home yeah uh, okay um yeah actually yeah what i was all right so um i'm not sure like what the whole thing about the head reappearing is all about but my guess would be because like um uh because the what is it called? i don't know the cloud elemental um, would have to like move up and down like at parts of the like the actual planned projection so i guess that because it moves down then the part like above him would be unable to be projected but because in canon in his uh illusion sequence the the head moves down so i guess because the drones in that area were working uh, more, it was able to project the head thing? I don't know. That's just my so best guess. So basically, the, the gist of the point here is all of the drones that are running to create the simulation are running on a big network, and they rely on each other, and it's interdependent, and it's all being planned in a certain way. So when Spider-Man destroys a good chunk of the simulation, not only are the mm -hmm. damaged drones going to stop projecting, but because they're not projecting anymore, the system is struggling to un compensate. deal with, with this. Yeah, it can't compensate. And so the illusion starts to fall apart in various parts as it tries to like reset. And one of the drones that's part of the whole system is the drone that is invisible in front of Nick Fury. Yeah, I don't I'm think it's unreasonable. Say... Yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm listening though. Say... I'm willing to say that that's understandable. The thing is, I was just trying to point out that that drone that was sent to kill Nick Fury seems to have been uh, projecting onto itself to cloak itself. I think that's yeah. Fine. I mean, it, it may well be, uh, it, but like, that doesn't change. Otherwise, the fact there'd be another drone that would be nearby. And yeah, sure. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that it's part of the network, and so it's reasonable to believe that that one goes down well, as well in terms of its holograms. My original point was that the drone that was sent to kill Nick Fury was by itself. Which would imply that it was cloaking oh. itself because we were talking oh, yeah, about yeah, okay. whether these drones yeah. can cloak itself. But I, stu but I, I, I said it stupidly decloaked itself before shooting Nick Fury, ah, and that's see, led to a series I don't think of it stupidly corrections. Does. Well, so that's the thing. If it were to have uh, decloaked itself independently of like all this, because I think you guys are providing a reasonable explanation here. Um, uh, but like you know what I'm saying, like if it just oh, uh, decided I... to decloak before. What I will say is that, it, it, let's say the illusion was fully operational, and it decloaks mm -hmm. and then shoots him, I would be like, that's really weird. I don't know why it would do that. Like, it doesn't need to do that. But, that's not what was happening. Sure. Um, but yeah, like, the, the main point, of course, was whether these things can cloak themselves, which it appears, yes, you don't need two clone, two drones to, uh, to cloak uh, each other. You can just have one, one drone cloaking itself. All right, I'm um, back. I okay. just had to help family with a yeah. little something real quick. So uh, um, are we moving on from this one then? Um. Well, one more thing I'd like to mention about that is, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, the the drone in front of Fury that was meant to kill him, like he knows that it tried to kill him, and then it got blown up. So why doesn't Beck just send another drone after him? I think but Beck is very fucking busy right now. I don't even know yeah. that he knows where Fury is anymore at that point. Well, yeah, but um, wouldn't Edith a... warn him saying, like, yeah, go on? There's a drone that's right outside Fury's office, and all the drones have cameras. And also, um, you would think that once the, the illusion goes, like, starts going awry in Haywire, that that would be the time to kill Fury. But it I a long think time he has a lot of things to deal with at that moment that he needs to sort out sure, that but... are priority, like Spider Man and his friends as well. But surely there would be like sure, but he can be he's like he's got he's got a crew that he's working with here. Yeah. surely one of them would be. So, so what? So we know that there are a couple of people on the crew who specifically work with the drones. Mysterio works with the drones, and um, the scientist from Iron Man One, yeah. William, is like the guy in the chair, right? I don't know that because yeah. everybody, everybody else has different roles. Like, there's the guy who comes up with the law. There's the costume lady, the woman who does the electromagnetic pulses. So, who who would it be? William, probably. Also, um, yeah, but he's, I guess, he's busy resetting the simulation. I don't know that. 
Like, so, is it impossible that Fury was, like, trying to get away from any sense of them being able to kill him? Like, it is Fury. Yeah. Do we believe he's sitting in that room waiting for another drone to come and get him? Wait, what? Um... So, so the, the idea is that... Say that it, for the it, drone to come and kill him, if they sounds, send another one. It sounds to me like you're saying, like, why wasn't he sending drones after Fury? Why wasn't he making an effort to kill him? It's like... I'm willing to debate that point, but at the same time, how do we know that he didn't, and how do we know that Fury didn't defend himself? Is this SK or me that you're responding to? Uh, whoever... Meant, I, I, if I'm wrong I on the criticism, I, I recant. I thought one of you made that point. So my thing, my thing was there was a drone that was outside Fury's office, uh, or wherever that is, uh, sure. what, whatever he's doing there. Um, you think that once the, the illusion starts going awry, Fury has now basically found them out? That is mentioned to be a concern of Bex uh, earlier in the film. And if they're planning on assassinating Fury, then they should probably do this now. Especially if they yeah, know so for my, a fact yeah. that the drone's out there. So my question was, why are we, uh, why, why have we concluded that that didn't happen? That no one put any effort into killing Fury and that he couldn't have defended himself? Because Fury was outside... Sorry, so Fury was still in the office. Hill, or the scroll impersonating Hill goes up to the top of the skyscraper that they're yeah. in. Um, Fury's just standing in front of his yeah. window. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, so uh, I'm just scrolling through the film. So you have Beck goes, defend me, Edith, and then Spider-Man falls, and then he's like, oh shit, Happy's here, okay. You, I'll personally kill them, drones on auto to kill Spider-Man, and if someone then goes after Fury in some way, shape, or form, he's already had this much time to do whatever Fury's gonna do to make it so that uh, drones can't get to him or that he has defenses for them. He would be standing at that window the whole time, right? But that's what we see him doing in this. So, are no, you... it's not. We see him doing that, and then they blow up the drone, and then we don't see him until the end of the battle. So we don't know what he's doing. But, like, so every time that we cut back to is... Fury, he is standing in, at that window. No, um... after... Wait, sorry. After the drone fight gets blown up, I don't think we see him until the end of the entire... I was gonna say, I just... Well, I can't remember seeing him. Well, so I'm not talking about... Sorry. Just make, make it clear here. I'm not on SK's point of continuing to send drones after Fury. I'm on the point of the first and only drone that we see being sent after Fury. Are you are you yeah. saying that more than one should have been sent? No, 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 no. I'm saying that it, sh it, it should have fired on him once the illusion started going awry. Oh, well, that's, that's easily explained by everything's in mm. chaos. We don't know what's going on. Like, so there's no order that goes through to kill Fury at that point, because that's clearly yeah. not when they were going to kill him. I think obviously I would assume Mysterio is more busy with the fact that his entire illusion is falling apart, and then by the time he could have ordered it, it's already exploded. Fury's already. Maybe, I like, guess. He has seconds. Nah, I. You know what? I'm not gonna accept him. Maybe on that one, the plan was to kill Fury in a way that would be able to hide it in the illusion. I can. I would. I would imagine that it's safe to say that that was the plan, or that if not that, they were gonna shoot him a lot later on. So when the illusion comes down, was Beck meant to have parameters? Okay, so when the event Wait, so that Spider-Man comes along, to and the event that Spider-Man comes is? along and destroys the, in the event that Spider-Man comes along and destroys the illusion, immediately kill Fury. That seems risky. Like if that's the plan, and if not, he didn't have enough time because that drone got blown up like three seconds afterward, and he was already busy with a lot of other stuff. So was the idea actually for the this monster to travel over to where Fury is? Oh, well, I don't know Sorry, what the can original... We just, can we, like, can we... So what was your point? You said that it was meant to just shoot Fury as soon as the illusion comes down. Do you think No, I'm not saying that was meant for... No, 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 no. That's not, the... That's not what I'm saying the original plan was. I'm asking you, you said when the illusion came down, like, at the first instance, why didn't the drone shoot Fury? Well, that should have been a thing that they were thinking about because Fury... they know that Fury's so. in that the was... area and they're watching. That was the thing that... So did... what? what about everything that I just said before? Do you, like, disagree with all of it? No, I don't disagree with all of it. I don't disagree with the, so, the explanation that, that there's chaos. That's like You disagree with the explanation that there's chaos when the whole simulation I literally just apart. said I don't disagree with uh, the don't? explanation that there's okay. chaos. I literally just said so, I don't disagree. So what, what don't you disagree with? What do you disagree with then? Um, so but my, my, my issue here is it seems like you guys are uh, misunderstanding what I've said and Conflating what I've said with, with okay, said, re, so re, restart point. then. What's restart? What's what's the point? So the initial criticism was the drone is in front of Fury's uh, office. Mm -hmm. Fury is watching. Mm -hmm. Fury is a person uh, of interest to these people. 
um, the illusion starts going awry. And many moments pass, it, it, it seems, in the film where you've got this drone that's just camped outside Fury's office and it's not doing anything. They're not doing many anything moments? with it. Many moments? What's many moments? How long? Uh, let's see here. So the illusion, let me start at 1.38. It's 10 seconds, by the way. I've already checked. It's about 10 seconds. And again, it's all- yeah, I feel like, didn't we talk about this already? Like, this is just another yeah. thing to add on to Mysterio's plate. He's dealing, about everything's everything falling apart. He has to reset everything. He's probably so not started, thinking so... about the drone outside Fury's window right now. Gotcha. I think okay. that's perfectly reasonable. Okay, yeah, sorry. I, I, I got the um, uh, the order of, of events wrong. I thought that the uh, the drone decloaked when they reset the system. No, the drone re de decloaks as soon as the illusion starts to fall apart. Hmm. Okay. Um... So, so, are we, so this yeah. drone was, uh, I guess my question is, this drone was camped outside Fury's office and the idea was for this monster that Mysterio was fighting to make its way over to the sky. I have no idea was what Mysterio's plan be, was. It, it could, could be, be many things. things. Yeah, it could be that that's what happens or it could be that it just kills him at some point. Just fires a shot through there at the right time. Yeah. I thought you said that that was going to be suspicious. I s well, that's why I said the right time. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what Mysterious it Plan be... for Fury was exactly. I can think of a bunch of things he could do, but I don't know what he was going to do. Well, okay. I guess my question would be, what reason would he have to keep him alive this entire fight? So, what, that he should kill him before anything's happened? No, no, no. I'm saying after, like, the illusion was exposed, because he does say... You know, Edith, show yeah, but I thought, oh, we, yeah, we, we, uh, I thought we covered this. So the drone's yeah. been taken down, and we don't see Fury until the end of the movie. So we have no idea whether he sent more drones to try and kill him, or if Fury. I mean, I think right, it's safe so... to say that Fury didn't stay in the same room. So we don't know that yeah, he, have he didn't have enough time so... to kill him at first instance. And I think it's safe that to say he was... that changed. Would you say that he's trying to hide and take cover, right? I, we don't we don't even need to talk about like what he's actually doing because we know that he lived. Fury is like one of the most resourceful characters in the MCU, or at least he's supposed to be. Yeah. Even even if it's Talos not. Fury, he's still kind of resourceful. Well, he's equally as resourceful, maybe not as intelligent. Yes, definitely not as intelligent. Well, yeah, that's the film tells you that. Um, what I'm saying is there is nothing the wrong is, with what the film presents, even though it doesn't show us what's happening. So There's then, nothing wrong that you take from what happens with Fury uh, as, you know, after that point. Like, anything that you come up with is just not a part of the movie. So then, That's like, her. what... I don't know. What's, what's the reason that, like... Um, so what would Nick Fury do after the drone was blown up? Like, what are the possible things he could have... Uh, done to avoid being killed by the drones why why do we even care when we know that he's alive and that we don't see because, anything that's because because what i'm what? saying is that he was if he just said hey edith target nick fury and he can send the drones in pretty fast and nick fury's done but nick we don't even why would we assume that nick fury is still in that room after that drone has been fired right out? and i'm Exactly. So what I'm saying so, is, what was so you want me to tell you what Fury was doing, even though we don't need to see what he was doing. We could just infer that he's moved. Well, what could because he have we know done that he's that moved at the end of the movie. Right, but what could he have done that would have been that would have made him survive this? Leave the room, and then you don't know where he is. Okay, so Nick Fury was going to was going to leave the area to try to take cover, right? Why are you asking me to explain to you what's happening that's not in the movie? Like, well, do you want me to give you an explanation like, what... of, like, exactly what happens in the movie well, when we wait. don't see what happened? It could be a few things. What I'm trying be to... I think a better question is, do you think it's impossible? Is that your position? Uh, impossible what? For Fury to that have done survived. something that allowed him to survive. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's impossible, but I think it's... Is, he has a pretty high chance of being killed if he sent the drones to him. Oh, well, um, the fact that he knows that this is a potential, he's got his full team, there's all kinds of things Fury could have set up, especially with the resources, like I said, of uh, all the tech he has. Yep. Like, it could literally be a, like, let's go simple. There's a safe room, he just locks himself in it with all of his men. 
Hmm. Okay. And meanwhile, remember, like, Mysterio is already preoccupied. He's got a lot to deal with at the moment. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm happy to move on. Yeah, you know what? I'm. I think. I think it's. Let's go yeah, back go to Winter it. Soldier. You know what? <laughs> okay. Well, we're we spent a lot time. of time on that. <laughs> um. So I think the next thing is we've got a few things we can talk about. I think the sequence from, uh, the hospital scene is ridiculous. Like I, I don't even understand how it's possible that they they covered up Fury's death. Like I don't even understand the logistics of how they managed to do that. Well, like Especially none of the so. Especially with Hydra doctors, like, because yes. Hydra would want to confirm the kill, so why would they have allowed any sense of it being a ri And they would be aware of Banner's, um, formula, or Banner, whatever this, um, he uses. Because, again, they don't even, they didn't know up until, like, a couple of days ago that they couldn't trust everybody at S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. So everything Fury has mm -hmm. access to, technology mm -hmm. and medicine and formula and everything-wise, like, they know it too. The idea that they didn't confirm that he was dead... Or that they just saw that the heartbeat was low, and they were like, "Well, he's dead." Especially how advanced the tech is now. It's just like, man, that's some yeah. next level luck for Fury to have gotten through all of that. Uh, now, do we remember if there was anything more significant? Because I know that the next part that's relevant to the plot is the scene with Captain America and Pierce, like the um, name. hiding Danish. the USB in a vending machine when someone is oh, working on it, and, and people have filled yeah. in this corridor, and he is spotted. Just by yeah. some, luckily by somebody who is a good guy. Who's a friend, yeah. Um, and so then we proceed to him going up to talk to Pierce. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, is it with? Oh, yeah. I, I you assume you any, guys would you stop any, us if you disagreed. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. So yeah. there is a bit of a concern I have with the because with the Nick Fury uh, cover up thing, um, I've actually had this criticism at first, but then mm -hmm. I thought about like you know possible counter. So I'm kind of in the in the middle of this point. Um. So the thing is with Nick Fury, um, the doctors that were taking care of him, uh, they were the same like Shield agent doctors that were taking care of him in the secret, uh, the yeah, secret agreed. areas that they were in. So I, like, yeah, so Joe the, Russo was. So the question is, to them. Yeah. are Hydra not gonna like confirm? Be super, super sure, confirm it. Yeah, I'm surprised they even like hmm. these doctors are the ones Allowed that have access to, to him. Taken. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So. What do you propose? Like, uh, I'm not saying like they couldn't have done anything, but what do you propose? Would have so if been, I'm Hydra, uh, I have all of my doctors do. work on him, quote unquote, work on him. They don't save him. They're not looking to mm -hmm. save him. And then as soon as he's mm -hmm. dead, we incinerate that fucking body. Yeah. 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 Or I don't know. Even like, if you want to be double check, I don't know. Just like find a way to cause more injuries to him. Like, yeah. Or don't don't save Unless... him as peak. Um, I guess what I'd say to that is. Is it possible that because Sharon Carter was there, she would make sure immediately that uh, the doctors that take care of him are uh, are part of Shield and not uh, but not Hydra? Fury doesn't trust anyone, and she isn't aware of any. Yeah, of this. that's a good point. Not to she mention, them. I feel like Hydra, Hydra, like Robert Redford, would want to make sure of this one. This is super yes. important. Yes. Yeah. Fury yeah. represents and, a know, huge they... risk. Yeah, and if they're capable of, like, pretending to be police officers, like, surely, yeah, they could, you know, pretend to be the doctors that take him in. Well, I, I would argue they have more power than S.H.I.E.L.D. does, or any of the good guys. Seems that way. Well, yeah, they are yeah, S.H.I.E.L.D., yeah. right? Yeah, they, they have plenty of ways to stop him. Pretty much, him. yeah. Fury's plot armor. Um, uh, that, that, I think that's the last instance of Fury plot armor, so there's that. Yes. <laughs> oh, wait, no. No, it's not. No, it isn't. Oh. There's, there's still more. In the final battle, uh, but yeah, oh, then, true. then Cap goes up. So he's been told not to trust anyone. Goes up to Robert Redford. They have a conversation, and Cap tells Robert Redford, "Fury told me not to trust anyone." Stupid. It's probably Why the worst you thing you could tell him. Defeats, defeats the whole purpose of being told not to trust anybody to tell somebody that. Hmm. Yeah. And of course, the only reason this is happening is because Fury has implicated Captain America by going to his apartment instead of hiding out. So. Good job, Fury. And it's worse um, than telling him he, saw, he said nothing. In fact, what Cap yeah. should have said, oh, I missed a criticism from earlier. Um, sure. I'm going to do, do this real quick. I'm sorry about this. So when uh, Fury is giving his cover story, he says, ah, my wife kicked me out. You know how it is. Not sure uh, how many friends I got left or something like that. What he should be saying, because <laughs> mm -hmm. he's an idiot in that scene, he should be saying, Cap, I have no fucking idea what's going on. The police attacked me. The police. We need to talk to S.H.I.E.L.D. immediately. We need to get all of our men on this. Like, 
but something's going on. There's some mercenary group. I know it. Uh, she basically, you need to give off the sense that Shield is 100% cool. We like Shield. Shield's good. Something happened to me out there. I'm gonna need Pierce or whoever else to help me out with this. This is nuts. And instead, he's like, yeah. I imagine Shield's listening, right? They know what happened in that street. Fury knows they know what happened, and he goes, "Oh, hey, Cap. Yeah, I'm here because my wife kicked me out." Like, yeah, like, dude, what the hell? it's so, <laughs> so really suspicious. Stupid. You're giving away, yeah. like, and the idea that Pierce is like, okay, so he's obviously, we listen to that. We know you've t he's told you something. What'd he tell you? And he goes, that I shouldn't trust anyone. <laughs> like, really yeah, dumb. It, it, oh, but I think really dumb is almost, I don't even understand what is going on in your mind when he says this. Like, I can't, I can't yeah. wrap my head around why you I've would say this. I've always found this stupid. Um, but yeah, so we, so then, so then, you know, Cap leaves. The strike team is immediately there to arrest him, which makes you wonder why strike team wasn't available to immediately arrest Fury, but whatever, we've already covered that. So, the elevator fight scene is, is actually kind of dumb. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that are really confusing about the way that it's arranged in terms of what's happening. Like, as soon as they hit the emergency brakes, guys turn around, but like three or four guys are just struggling in the corner. But what we know is that all of the people in the elevator are there to get cap, like every single one. If so I they're can, not fighting with each other, they're just kind of fumbling for some reason. If I could just make it clear, okay, because I could I'm showing this to the people at home. So yes. just try and follow what I'm mm -hmm. saying, you guys. Um so guy turns to hit Cap. Cap seems to move the hand, then that guy l drops his weapon and seems to crouch with Rumlow, some other guy, and some other guy having their hands near or around him. Then the fight continues. <laughs> And we've shown again that they're moved backwards somehow. This is the Rumlo let's call them the Rumlo team. There's Rumlo and like two other guys, maybe three. And then Rumlo like falls over and cowers for like ten seconds. Yeah. He's just out for of the some... fight. And if you there's this one shot that fucking baffles me. They're, in, they're <laughs> Yep. They're dealing with Cap. They're all trying to get him, and if you the more muscle you have, by the way, the better. But in the background, they're just going, eh, eh, Yeah. Yeah. Eh. Like what's going on? Yeah, I've noticed this too. If they had done this, Cap would not have been able to escape. If they like, had all done like what hit they him, add more Rumlo. muscle, yeah. And Rumlo is good. still yeah. just recovering from nothing this whole fight until he finally gets yeah. involved, and then starts tasering. But by this point, it's already over. You've already screwed it, even though it should have been mm -hmm. impossible to screw this up. So, and again, <clears throat> if Cap captured, the, the movie ends dead in its sure. tracks. And I find it really, really interesting. interesting. That they're not will if they were willing to kill him, it would have been easy to get him. But they're not until he manages to get outside of sort of the potential of being caught. So then they they try to minigun him. And if it were that close so, to being willing to kill him, I feel like this is a really risky move. But at the same time, it probably should have worked and it didn't. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So one thing that you've brought up was that, um, that there's no way like they should have failed uh the operation in the elevator am i getting there right or they should have captured him when you got i don't that many bodies and if they all grip a limb he's basically you can't yeah. move if the four guys I... in the background hadn't been there grappling with each other for some reason they would have had enough force to pin both of his arms down so the concern i have with that criticism is that well we're dealing with a super soldier right here, and like this with this guy, like even one kick could knock somebody out. So I think my the the criticism I have towards the scene is the fact that instead of just having the strike team point their guns so Steve can't move, uh, instead they decide to crowd all these men in an elevator because that's what I think is the actual risk here. You know, like if he takes out some, like if he kicks someone hard enough, they could fall right out the window. That's a so, really I, risky thing. I get that screen. I go you, just real, hard, real, real right? quick. I just want to say yeah, so yeah. that initial kick that he does that probably fucks that guy's knee up completely. Completely agreed. But had three yeah. men mm -hmm. been grappling his He's legs, it, it's over. Yeah. You can't, and then you attach both of his arms with those magnetic things, and and then you just electrocute him freely, like he's done. Because that's what we see in this in the screenshot here is two people nearly push his arm up. So I think it's safe to say three people. It's it's up. It's it's gone. It's up there. Because I mean, Rumlo kicks it hard enough that it, it sticks. Yeah. Um. So mm -hmm. yeah. It, it three seems people. Like, it's done. It seems like uh, Captain America is the kind of character that is incredibly vulnerable in a situation like this. If if the attackers are very competent, I can see. Um. You put Black Panther in the same situation, and he's in a suit. Um. It's going to play out about the way that it does. I don't think you can stop him, no. Especially yeah, yeah. with his new suit where it just detonates. 
but like mm. Kappa is is a lot more vulnerable than that, and so in order uh, yeah. in order for him to overpower this many people, um, they have to be uh, unusually bad at their job for people that are like Shield agents, you know. Well, these are strike team. They're like the SWAT of Shield, and well, yeah, they're very like, familiar only, with Cap too. This would only make yeah. sense basically if uh, if these were not like military trained, it's people like normal cops doing this. or something. Yeah, maybe them, yeah. but not these guys. Um, but but so we have that, and so he opens the door, drop the shield, he cuts the wires. Um, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that he knew that the emergency brakes would kick in. Um, um I I'm still think it, I I I don't know how, how much about this. Like, it's gotta be unusual for the the wires to be like on display. I I guess I'll let it go. It just seems weird to me as a design. Yeah, I, I guess it's just, I don't want to get caught up on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but immediately, so he falls to a floor that could not have been planned because the wires were cut. He opens the door. There mm -hmm. are strike team on there. Are there strike teams on every single floor of this building? How could they have possibly known that's where he'd be? Yeah, I'm. Well, I'm fine with them knowing where he'd be. It's just that how did Wait, you get no, there so why? quickly? What? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I mean when I say knowing where he is. Like, yeah, how yeah, would they? Right. Yeah, so that's, that's how I would frame it. That, that's okay. Just yeah, yeah. Thing. Sure. Uh, so that happens. Closes the doors for whatever reason. They can't open the doors. I don't know why. Um, then comes the funny bit. Then he, yeah, he jumps out of the building, lands on the ground, and you know what? I'm okay with him surviving. That's super soldier, and he's hurt. Vibranium. It's all right. Shield. Yeah, the but, shield super soldier. It's all good. Yes, but are you kidding me? He's heading for the garage, lock down the bridge. How long does it take <laughs> to get to the garage, and how long does it take for the doors to close? Yep. The doors are closing. He even puts his helmet he on, which out. he doesn't have on. Yes, he does yeah, put his helmet on. It's, it's really absurd. <laughs> It's 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 ridiculous. Yeah, and remember, and remember to be clear with all of these. Every time that he stopped, the movie's over. Dead in its tracks. He's caught. Cool. Inside happens. Millions twenty million died. are dead. <laughs> yeah, twenty million. That's right. Yeah. So uh, and, and again, so the same then, standard applies to Far From Home, but there's more of this happening in the Winter Soldier. So this, so, I think it's important to clarify. Right, anytime Peter dies, the consequences. Peter dies, and his friends die, and some people in London die. And some kind of underplays it. A lot of people in London die. Well, that's the consequence. We don't want to yeah. understand that, of course, the... Mysterio becomes a victorious, but the I important part with, Mys yes. with Mysterio is that he's not looking to destroy the world or anything. He's actually he's looking, not to looking to pretend to, this to be forever. a hero. Yeah, he, he wants to do this so that it's like, oh, I'm Avengers level threat, next Iron Man, and then whenever threats yeah, like, come, uh, he wants to. Uh, the argument I'm trying to make here is that consequentially, he ends up fighting on behalf of Earth to stop threats. Like, he would do that. It's just He's not a good guy compared to. Yeah, he's a so bad obviously person. There are, there are, that's the stakes. But the stakes is if uh, if uh, if if Captain America loses, twenty million people die, and well, the world is if, drastically different forever. If we're to believe the threat, Tony Stark threat, is killed. Yeah. Stephen Strange is oh, killed. Oh, Tony like, Stark, yes, too. So when when the aliens come back, probably fucked. Um, well, so, they're going to kill every single a, Avenger, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so there's that just to, to put it into context and yeah, then he drives and they shoot at him to try and kill him with the Quinjet and he dodges it. So I guess I don't care about killing him now. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then he takes down the Quinjet and it's like, all right, so that's, well, that's that part done. Why do they so lose the, him? Well, the oh are, yeah. Like, how do they lose him? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Why? How, how do they lose track? Of yeah. Him? It's like, you would, th you would have thought that, you know, after he busted the turbine of a, of a Quinjet, they were like, oh, shit, we, we, we need a... I think a after he traveled so... at the speed of light to get to the garage to get out of the bridge, that at that point you'd be seriously <laughs> the speed concerned of about his capabilities. Um, also, it's really useful mm -hmm. if you put all this yeah, I agree. Uh, to the public. Be like, look what he's done. And obviously edit it favorably, but just be like, he's destroy. he's killing members of our team, he's destroying property. It's because he's... Um, He's connected to Fury, he's trying to generate loads of money by hiring mercenaries to blah blah blah. It's really easy to frame him with everything we have. Yeah, and so then you can have the, the, the world at large helping you with the manhunt. Yep. Keep an eye out. Somebody, Which, by the way, gonna go ahead and... It's not plot... Well, I guess it's a form of plot armor, not in terms of his health, just being not found. It's like, he's Nobody getting... Nobody ever finds him, ever. Look yeah. at that, he's getting found. Yeah. In the hospital where Fury died. They yeah. certainly have agents posted there. Dude, but remember, the amount of instances where Cap and Nat just get around and nobody sees them well, throughout it's a meme. the whole movie. It's a meme of yeah. they have Cap, they have a Cap they have and glasses. glasses, so it's fine. It's like, mm -hmm. that's yeah. funny, but it's not true. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, 
should we just keep going, or do you, you want to do you want to get back onto fuck? Because that's that's kind of a big block. Have you got? No, I, I'd stuff? like to. I'd like to just go through more of the Winter Soldier personally. Oh, um, oh. what what is there much to be said about the scene with Nat, except for the fact that she says like most of the intelligence agency doesn't believe that he exists. Well, yeah, that's going to be relevant in summary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll come back so to the, it. The next thing is we find out Project Insight, it's getting pushed forward. Yeah, yeah. And then and then we get to the, the realism. Well, so wait, wait, wait. They, uh, there's a couple oh, of just, we yeah. got to make sure that this is understood. Sure, it's going to matter sure. a little bit later. So <laughs> they take the USB, the USB that can't be cracked by like Fury with all the help of S.H.I.E.L.D. with his clearance, right? She puts it into a laptop in some like oh, tech I store. Was, that was what I was about to. Oh, that I thought you were, okay, go ahead, about. go ahead. No, 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 we weren't there yet. So yeah, they go to a Mac store and plug in this uh, flash drive in the in the Mac store to 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 try and track down they're, they're trying to figure out what's on it but it's encrypted um and what we what what Nat says there is it's encrypted but uh she can track a hostile malware uh and that's what apparently leads her to find the Hydra outpost now this is very confusing to me is she tracking the hostile malware, or is she tracking where the algorithm came from? The film is being very um, unclear I'm... about what exactly she's looking for. And why she is able to track it at all. she's finding out where it came from. Oh, okay, and well, to which, like, like, how so it's, 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 a, it's an AI. It's an AI that is uh, rewriting it every time that yeah. like, she's trying to crack this thing. So she's, mm -hmm. I guess, trying to track like the source of this AI, the source of the AI being Zola. So, so Zola... Now you two have given two different answers though. So SK, you think he's tracking where the algorithm came from and Southpaw, you believe that he is tracking, she, she is tracking the person who is rewriting the, uh, the, the, the thing to block them. So Zola. Yes, that makes more sense than trying well, to track where the algorithm well, came from. I feel like there's a problem with both of these, but well, I don't know which one. Yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's it's well, going to be I'm I'm taking it from the line where it says, I'm taking it from the line where it says this is a program that Shield developed to track hostile malware. So if we can't read the file, maybe we can find out where it but came from. But what is from, what is this? Is where it the came flash from drive? Is... What exactly is it? Like what is this? Um, that she's I think using? it's the files on it. If it's the files. So the on files there. on there for Project Insight can be used to track hostile malware. Um, so um, she says, I'm going to try. The program does that. So, might... so this, she says, I'm going to try running a tracer. This is a program that Shield developed to, to yes, track malware. Yes, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There right, we go. So to, to make, because I'm going to lay that, this yeah. is honestly like, I don't blame the fact that we have to go over this a couple of times. It's really strange. We got. The laptop, she plugs in the USB. We know she can't access the USB's right. uh, secrets because it's all to do with insight. It's the algorithm and stuff. So she says when she's trying to access it, something's preventing her. An AI that's like re-scrambling is a pretty clever one. I think that's Zola, mm -hmm. right? Stopping mm -hmm. her from getting into the USB. Whatever it is. So I guess he's connected um, to the internet? Right. That was, yes. I was going to bring that up a little bit later. <laughs> so anyway, the, uh, <laughs> the, what she tracks then is either him scrambling it or the like origin of this usb i don't know how she's able to track either of those yeah i'm not sure why that's the only thing i can come up um, with is that they I, wanted the her best, to the best justification is that she says this is a program she'll develop to track hostile malware so true i guess the program itself is capable of doing that but why would hydra have allowed a program to be able to track one of their most important assets whoa 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 whoa, whoa. we don't know if if hydra themselves uh like allowed this or like had, had any control and hydra part of this. shield though they're yeah, fully infiltrated part of shield but we don't so it seems like um the 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 answer as to how much of S.H.I.E.L.D. is controlled by HYDRA exactly uh, seems to be changing. Um, my my impression is S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to be a mixture of people that are like actual, legit, OG S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, right? They're the good guys. And then you have the HYDRA moles that are within S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I agree with where you go with this. Sorry, I agree we, with you. Wait, wait. So uh... they have uh, technology X, let's just say, in totality. None of that is going to be kept away from HYDRA, like secret people. They'll know what capabilities they have. Why would they allow... Uh, they will know what these, these programs do. 
why would they not design whatever their super secret stuff is with a block it like can't be tracked by this stuff because they have insider and in knowledge on this remember yeah shield have no reason to keep this from them because they don't even know they exist they'll be like oh hey bill like you know you, you work on blah blah remember pierce is literally the boss of their like um, sector and stuff he's hydra i i i don't know I don't know. It, it, it could possibly, um, they don't want to risk making it look like the uh, this program was sabotaged. But I don't know. I well, would I write think, something well, in. To honestly, I think the most or... reasonable interpretation is they actually want them to track this to take them to the trap. That's yeah. another thing that you could uh, infer, well, yes. Well, so, so this is the great part. <laughs> well, I was going to um, say, if we can way, see that, there are now other problems. Yeah, either way, yeah, there's because a problem. I was going to say that dare I take a guess real quick, so um, that means that they would know that they'd have to leave from the mall to go all the way to that bunker, Yes. right? So they would know which... They would know what roads yeah. they're taking. They, they, they should be able to track them. They would going. know that they're going to be there. Yeah. yeah. So well, basically, they could have sent, like, the Quinjets over there. Um, they could have had the strike team ready. Like, once they're there, it's like, yeah, you're surrounded by a bunch of armed men. That's over. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's over before it even starts. Yeah, we could. Um, yeah, is, if we want yeah, to go like to the what, bunker, like of course there was well, a million options on, they uh, had. There's, there's like what I've Hydra's gotten. resources are in this movie, it's just it's so plentiful that they have to be stupid for Cap and and Widow to to succeed. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. But uh, there, there was uh, there's two things on that. Uh, one, they should have called Iron Man by now. Um, yes. They definitely should have called Iron Man by now. But they never do. I can agree not with now or not at any point in the movie. Yeah, I can I can agree with Nick Fury, but um, with uh, with Captain America, he doesn't like he doesn't know. Stark he trusts well Black now, Widow right? more than he trusts Cap. Uh, I Tony think Stark. I just yeah, we need well, to be clean on this. So it is categorically true that he would call Tony. Tony is one hundred percent anti-system. He's and he's yeah. super powerful, and he's, he was he the one recently, who exposed that Shield were developing weapons. Yeah, and he recently Tesseract. almost mm. died to save the world. Like he's very much a good person. And if you can't trust Tony, uh, I don't Maybe I don't see how you can trust Nat. anyone else. Because remember, Nat's mm. part of Shield, and I would trust argue her. that right. um, this is so incredibly important, and we're so outmatched, outgunned, and outnumbered yes. that calling him is like our only shot. If we get Iron I, Man in, we we can actually make a difference. I do want to point out um, Tony being willing to sacrifice himself to save the world. Um, I don't believe that uh, there is no one in Hydra that would have been willing to. That's not my sacrifice really what I'm going to... with with that. I mean, he's like good of heart, uh, confirmed. Like that that changed. I I guess I was countering an argument that didn't exist. My bad. Like I thought <laughs> you might have thought that Steve didn't think of Tony as like a good person, maybe. Um. um... Well, the, what I was going for was that he doesn't know for sure. Like, maybe there's a chance that he's part of Hydra, but then at the he same time... He doesn't know for sure like, that Nat's not a part of Hydra, but he trusts her completely. I was going to say that, and same with Sharon yeah. Carter. Yeah. Yep. As someone who doesn't even know. Uh, and Sam, somebody who's mm -hmm. only met for a couple instances who could have been a Sam, Hydra yep, plant. Sam Wilson. Um, so, yeah, you, you got that, which is... Uh, and also, like, mm -hmm. they're not getting out of that shopping center I'll, anyway. Um, but, I'll yeah, so... Back. No worries. So, um... Oh, and also something to note, right? So, like, I would say that anything of, like, oh, Mysterio is stupid gets dwarfed by, oh, Hydra, a big organization it's with lots of intelligence and, like, operatives who are really skilled is stupid. I don't think it's close. Like, that any, that any oversight that Mysterio could have made, of which he didn't make a whole lot, are, like, not even comparable to how many Hydra makes. Over well, and over we're going to get again. into Mysterio's plan eventually, and you know, Mysterio's yep, plan you know what? Is... We'll get into that plan, and we'll get into Hydra's plan too. But before we get into yeah. that, shall we talk about Solar? The bunk. Well, the... We... well, let's oh, wait well... for SK to come back. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can. Take this a break is from this that, is the time for us to like just sort of to do whatever. No, no, no. I I want to like I'm trying to just go through the bulk of the uh, the Winter Soldier criticisms. Um, uh, like uh, this is just the time for us to just I don't know. It's fluff. We're just hanging out. Yeah, sure. Um, hey, why, yeah, you're absolutely. trying to get through the bulk of the Winter Soldier criticism. Well, it, it'll take a while if they really want to do I, I think yeah. we'll, after the <laughs> after the bunker and Zola, we'll probably swap back mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Yep, you'll get another that opportunity. Good. Sure. Yeah. I wonder if anyone out there is listening right now like, man, that Winter Soldier film. Hmm. 
I don't know. It's almost it's <laughs> almost like it's almost like hot takes are actually rather uh, credible sometimes. Well, I know, well, I know there are people out there. Just because it's hot. There are people out there who will listen to all of the criticisms of a soldier and be like, "Okay, you were nitpicking for most of that." Which is, uh, it's you know fine. What? Again, <laughs> it's gonna like, happen. You know, tw tw uh, but yeah, so 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 the yeah. Zola scene. Let's. Uh, oh, do you have something to say, Rex? I was saying, I I think there there are going to be people like that um, who will just not see. I mean, we. It doesn't oh, matter if you're fans of see? Snyderverse of the Last oh, no. Jedi. Oh my God! It doesn't matter if it's the Snyderverse or if it's TLJ or anything like that. Um, sometimes you just can't reach everybody. Some people are just that some people are tism. Some people are pure tism. But that is yeah. all right. Carry on. You can't right, win over SK, every heart. Uh, SK, you yeah. There? What's up? Yeah. So um. All right. Mm -hmm. So with the Zola thing, so we already talked about that there should have had people there. If if the more likely thing, which is that Zola lured them there. So they should have people there ready to arrest them. But anyway, they go in to the port and they find the hidden bunker. Now, this is not a huge issue, but like I do find it weird that Peggy and Howard didn't know that Zola was here when it was housed in the old shield headquarters. And they would have had to mm. excavate a lot of like A lot is an earth. understatement. <laughs> well, because remember we, we have it we have a thing, two hundred thousand feet square feet of data banks. It's a lot. Um, and and then they scan the little thing that's like, oh, here's the key prompt, and obviously scanning the number, like figuring out which buttons have been pressed, does not tell you the order that they need to be pressed in. And four buttons, a lot of combos, so they shouldn't have even been able to get into. We talk that about bunker. Valley Forge. Valley Forge, what? Nah, that's an Easter. <laughs> if you if you get right. that reference, you get you get candy, you get push yeah. points in the. You in chat? Okay. You just won. Yeah, you just, you got, just, a, won, you just got a. You won. You won about. You did it. Congrats. Yeah, I'm you did. So it. I'm proud of you. Whoever gets the reference first just wins the debate. Fuck it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um. So, uh, they say the tech. They go in, and now we're in, now we're in the part where they're in the 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 room with Zolo. This technology is ancient. Black Widow says the tech is from 1972. So in 1972, they had the capability of creating uh, Zola's AI. Now, I suppose to be clear now, whether it's exactly Zola, like they transferred his brain into data, or it is a copy of him, it is a distinction without a difference. Because this Zola that they're speaking to thinks like a human being and is like operating at incredible capacity, well in excess of like Jarvis, who I imagined was cutting edge, who was made in 2008. Wait, you think that's so already have that. Jarvis? So, what uh, it's the idea of like, so we have created somebody who seems to be like a human being in terms of the way that he's able to think. That's actually really complicated, uh, more so than creating somebody like Jarvis, who you can tell to be like, here, do this, do this, do that, who has a semblance of a personality, but is clearly not like a thinking person in the same way that Zola is. He's an impressive AI, Jarvis, but I think he that, is should, impressive, for that sure, should be enough yeah. to be like, wait, they had this, like, they 30, had this 30 for plus years ago? Years. Yeah. That's, that's pretty nuts. Uh, and you would think the technology would have improved in that period of time. Yeah, so immediately, oh. I was going to say, yeah? that there is no distinguishable difference between uh, Zola being in the back of the room with a microphone reacting to them in real yes. time than the computer doing it. It's incredible technology. Yeah. Wizard of Oz and shit. And that makes you wonder, why did you only do this once? Why have you not done this for many well, people? Let's have many, that many conversation. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, do you, do you guys disagree with that? That they should have made multiple different AIs like this? Well, I suppose like uh, the question comes down to um, how many uh, people in Hydra is it going to be worth going through all this effort, and also um, whether Zola would necessarily want it uh, like want people to know how to do this besides himself uh okay so i guess step one anybody who is particularly intelligent or resourceful or skilled in any sp particular field would be really worthwhile because having zola on these computers allowed you to create the algorithm that's going to let you take over the world Why i can imagine Zolas? yeah or just dot copies of solas if not just other people who are really intelligent inside of our shield and what, so what ends up changing ultimately if they have multiple uh, AIs like this? Like what, what's, um, so if it, cause they're about why to, would, like, why would you create any at all world then? 
Well, they're on the cusp of taking over the world. Uh, yeah, but Zola's... 1972, you're telling me nobody particularly important arose in, what, a period of nearly uh, 40 years? That there was nobody else who came around who you're like, hmm, you know what, we could use you on a computer. Well, yeah, that, again, that depends, that depends on whether Zola would want it to even be possible. Why do we assume that Zola wouldn't want him replaced? Um, because, do you think that having two would that... replace him? Because uh, in the first Avenger, we know that Zola, um, when he's captured, uh, sells out uh, Red uh, Red Skull. He cares very yes, much about you know self preservation. Uh, you have the um, wait of uh, wait um, no hold on actually we need to stop hmm, you there so we think that he has a sense of self preservation but he allows himself to be blown up. Yes, that's a problem. Yeah, that's the issue. Well, I would say but... that it's very out of character for uh, him to, well, to wait, do wait, that. Wait, so I agree wait. with that. Yeah. I think we've gone a little bit. We've fast forward a little bit. So you're saying yeah, that sorry, I'm yeah, cutting yeah. me off, and I'm, I'm. Go ahead. No, I cut you off deliberately. I'm sorry. I just, yeah. I want to go one by one because I just want to clarify. So you said, um, sense of self-preservation. As, as, is that reasoning for why he wouldn't want what? Um. So if if someone smarter comes along, uh, and is basically like smarter than Zola, or as smart as Zola, and they don't need to keep Zola, especially given how much space uh, he occupies uh, with all those, like, computers and shit. Mm -hmm. They don't need to use Zola anymore. So, my account of that would be that people have different skills, and that Zola is not just immediately replaceable. That He's people like, will um... have different skills, and that there could be somebody who has skills that Zola doesn't have who would still be really beneficial to put on a computer. I dot e, Tony Stark would be somebody I would want on a computer if I could. Uh, Bruce Banner. Uh, and I'm not saying that these but, would be the but, people that they'd select, but can he's you giving see examples. that if you've got Tony... Yeah. It would so, have to be so, loyal to Hydra, though. Yeah, well, yeah. Th there's going to so, be plenty. So they're going to be high-level so, agents. It's like... So, and and Zola, yeah. Zola is a mind, not as a but, Intelligence 9 AI. You know, it's a but mind. But to highlight the point, though, like... Tony Stark and Bruce are both really smart, but they are smart at different things, and that would be the same in Hydra. There would be people who are better than Zola at certain things, but things that Zola would be better at than them. You don't really lose anything by keeping both of them online, so I'm not sure why you would ever replace one, since he seems to be oh. functioning pretty well. Well, he's, he's designed Something their world domination plans in 2012, yes. right? Or 14? Right. 14. Hmm. So, what I would bring up is that with Zola, let's say, like, um, let's say there's somebody who is who has all of his skills, but either more skills or or they're even better, or actually both. Let's go with both. All right, they have all of Zola's skills; they're better at them, and they have more skills. So that would make Zola um, obsolete, and Agreed. they wouldn't really have a reason to to keep him around. So you, so you can't simultaneously argue that there is going to be someone who is like. Zola plus, but also not anybody worthwhile saving that's completely different from him, but really impressive. And, and also, um, there, there's a couple of things a, as well. Um, why do we assume that Zola alone has the knowledge to make this possible? Uh, because he's be the only one who's intelligent enough to, to make this. And but also, you said somebody who is more intelligent, better than him in every way, wouldn't he just be able to figure out how to put himself on computers if he's that I also disagree smart? with the premise. He was terminal. He needs someone to do this to him and for him. Yes. Someone else had to be involved. He couldn't have done this all on his own. There would have been people involved with getting the equipment there, people who would have been involved in, like, actually transferring his mind or copying it, whichever too. one it is. They have to Surely understand how everyone works. would have had all the information. So surely he wouldn't right. have had I'm all of the information Zola would have necessarily the... either. I'm sorry. What? Why do we assume that? Why do we assume that Zola alone is the person who did it and who has all of the information? Because we don't have any confirmation that anyone else does. Yeah, but we don't have any confirmation that anybody else doesn't. Yeah, so we're at a stalemate here. But well, not quite because well, we know that no. someone has to maintain the system. We know that someone had to do it yeah. for him. It's much more reasonable to infer that people would know how to replicate this than not. I mean, they'd probably try to figure it out, but I don't know if they would be able to figure also, it out. Also, I don't buy that he doesn't want Hydra to have access to this information. It is yeah, incredibly advantageous. Yeah. I think you cut out, like, at the last part. I Oh, I said I don't uh, buy that he wouldn't want Hydra to have this. It's incredibly advantageous, and his goal is beyond his life. Hmm.
Hello? I, no, we're, we're. Oh, we're, I was just, just, making, I'm just making sure. I'm just making about what's being spotty. So. I was just like, oh no, again. Oh no. <laughs> I guess while you're uh, thinking, I su- or, no, all right, go ahead. I was thinking, um, just while you guys are thinking, uh, I feel as if someone who is shown to be, uh, who really wants to put self-preservation is one of their big goals, that one of the greatest possible ways to make manifest that self-preservation is to create as many versions of yourself as possible. Multiple use. Yeah, that's yeah. Which that's more impossible. so the issue I take with not. with Zola, but they don't create more copies of him because they say like, oh well, they they cost me Zola. It's like, okay, why don't you have backups of him? You know, why yeah. did, why did they really kill stupid. him yeah, for this? Why did they why, kill him? Why did they kill yeah. him? That's, well, yeah, that's, that's the, the thing. They should have just sent a ground team there instead of an airstrike. They shouldn't have sent them there so, at all. They should have sent them to a fake place yeah. and had a bomb in it. Yes, but you know what? Even if you gotta send them to the fake place. Oh boy, Zola explaining his evil plan. Like this is this Wait, is another break. Right uh, before you oh, slip that in, I just wanted to yeah. clarify as well, just so we're definitive. I know you guys didn't agree with, didn't disagree with this, but you know that little USB they slot the USB into to get like a description. Just fucking put a bomb in that. It activates as soon as you put the USB in. Boom, they're dead. Yeah, like blow them up. Been great. Anyway, Karen. Uh, but yeah, so wait, 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 so, wait, wait. Uh, when uh, they yeah. put a bomb in, like, are you talking about the USB slot having a bomb in it? Yeah, like, it doesn't have to be a real one. You just make it look like it is and then blow it up. It could even be in the desk. It's basically like, like, like the, USB, yeah, the USB slot in Zola's. Because they know that they're heading over to Zola's. They could set that up real quick. I well, well Mahler, there, there's a pretty easy counter to that. We know that know. the Nazis are very, very, uh, they have a lot of paranoia when it comes to bombs and desks <laughs> at this point. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so, uh, Zola explaining his evil plan and everything that follows afterward is a, a, uh, a, a break in the story that is equivalent to the Fury assassination scene. Like, it is another just, oh, we are shattered <laughs> going forward. So, the big important part is that no matter what is said about the content of, uh, Zola's speech, Steve and Nat did not know that Hydra was active and they had no reason to believe that, but Zola told them this. And he told them that Project Insight was a Hydra plan. And he said, oh, we're going to, like, cleanse the world. And he shows this while he's showing footage of the Insight helicarrier's guns. Th- this this is too much. He's told them too much. It's over. He shouldn't have told them this. He shouldn't have said anything close to this. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how would he? How would Zola have, ex- have expected that Cap and Nat would have been able to survive... Literally, five <laughs> stories of rubble crushing both of them. So, this is my favorite part because it's a problem either way. They shouldn't have survived with how deep yeah, underground agree. they were. Mm-hmm. They're dead. They're dead. They're, it's over. And if they're dead, remember 20 million people dead. That's the end of the movie. Right. Uh, however, even if you are incredibly confident, Zola had a lot of options here. He could have just locked the door on them, said nothing, waited for them to get blown up. That was always an option. He didn't need to tell them anything. He could have just stayed silent. Lock. He gives them extensive uh, remember, information. It's so unnecessary. Yeah, he so, tells them so much. Could he... You, you bring up locking the door. Does he have uh, the ability to do that? Yes, he locks them uh, in when the when the thing comes to oh, blow them up. Oh, yeah. Okay. He locks them All in. Right. So yeah, he could have locked them in, said nothing. They're dead. Uh, Although, it's actually, uh, they, he probably shouldn't have locked the door because they would have gotten the elevator and that would spell disaster for them, certainly, if they had I, done I that. I don't remember yeah, that. Spell dead. disaster remember for them, dead. certainly. They are, they are disaster ridden no matter what yeah. if this was yeah. operating. And, it's just, it's, it's um, weird the decision to lock the door. But again, because, that's still um, better sure. than telling your even plan and then locking mm-hmm. them in. Sure. <laughs> And Zola is so supposed to be a do very you mean, like, lock him out? like top level no, genius. So, so remember, we've got a lot of problems with them even being in this facility. They shouldn't be there. They shouldn't have been able to get there. They should have been captured before they got there. They shouldn't have been able to get mm-hmm. into that room. However, right. once they're in, just lock them in and then blow them up with the missile. Don't tell them anything. And if you want to have your little Zola victory lap, you just tell them, "Hey, Captain, yeah. look who it is, me, motherfucker. I'm killing you." I'm a yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Like, because that's the thing. I that was number one. Don't tell him anything. But if he wants to gloat, if he wants to gloat, lie. 
just be like, hey, I'm alive. Ha, I'm going to kill you. I like that. Don't tell him anything. Telling him about the robot he's built in Australia that's going to rise up and destroy yeah, the world. Tell him something false. Lie to him. Uh, My army of kangaroos so is, will destroy the um, world. <laughs> the thing about that is the way that he approaches it either way is not necessarily a detriment. Well, as far as he should believe, not a detriment to um, Hydra's success. So I can see, like... I don't but see why he, even, he is, he is a smart dude. What if they have a phone open to someone who's an ally right now? There is he can anticipate. There's so many. Mm. There is no reason at all to risk this. He simply does, and we're really lucky he does. So you mean like, let's say if they're if they're broadcasting this, if they're um, it's recording it, yeah, they're on a phone call. It. Let's say they're on. By the way, mm. how does that phone not screw them over anyway? Like that. Phone must be shield connected. It must be like how else is Black Widow? Whatever. So she can um, track the shield but what if she has a call open to Iron Man right now? There's a there's another layer of uh, retardation to this that I think you guys might be missing. Hmm. Uh, sure. I don't think it's I don't think it's even necessary for them to be here in the first place because uh, this thumb drive is containing something that was downloaded off the Lemurian Star, which Jasper Sitwell was stationed on, and Nick Fury got. Uh, like people were going after Nick Fury specifically because of the business with the Lemurian star. So the problem is that, well, so that is an option, but again, it's, it's important to reiterate, they didn't even know that Hydra existed at this point. That's how catastrophic this whole scene yeah. is. They didn't know that Hydra was mm -hmm. a thing until uh, Zola told them, and him telling them that enables the rest of the movie to happen. Um, and, well, it's, and you know something what? going so, on with like shield being compromised. They don't know that Hydra exists, and they don't yeah, know that's... that it has anything to do with Project Insight. That's the big part. Hydra having infiltrated Shield fully is is a mind fuck. That's insane. That's like yeah. huge information changes everything. If Shield was, they've got agents inside Shield that are fucking with everything. That's a little different. Yeah, I think I can roll with the idea that you know, okay, it could be a risk if they're broadcasting this on call, uh, which would pass on the information to other people. Um, yeah, I think I think that would hold. Um, I would say when making this uh, when making this criticism, um, it's probably the first thing you want to bring up because we didn't even think that um, this was going to be brought up. I, I mean, I didn't watch all the streams that where you talk about Winter Soldier, but it's probably one of the most important things you want to bring up, like uh, why that would be a risk. Oh, sure. Um, and I just want I'm showing people at home because I just find this amusing. So they get into the elevator, yeah. right? All right, people at home. Yeah, I'm addressing you. So can you see this elevator shaft? <laughs> well, They're at the bottom of that, right? At the bottom of it. So if anyone listening who's like, "What do you mean five floors or five stories?" They have yeah. five stories worth of matter falling on them <coughs> after a missile hit them, and then it cuts to but them moving wait. a rock away, and they're on the surface. Yeah, that it's is insane. It's unreal. And the best part is. Then Hydra shows up a little late and they get away. It's like, There's why no, weren't you there? Hydra also, should be here already. They should be able to track them. Yeah, not to mention, like, considering how long it should have taken for them to uh, dig out of there, if they were going to do that, um, Hydra is only about 40 minutes away, like a 40-minute flight away from uh, DC. So, sorry, Jersey is, is a 40-minute flight away from DC, where they started. That so the big thing is they're already there. If they fire this missile, they know where they are. They're already there. It's done. It's over. If well, they're not uh, dead, they're and if we you. if we go with that they wanted to bait them to this place, then they've got even more time to work with. Yes, yeah. that's right. So that's that's multi it, it folds onto itself. This is what happens with with this Zola thing. It's so many things it can't function. Um, yeah. and I think my favorite part is it's just the the little cherry on top. Zola's out of character. He's not like this. Not in First Avenger, he's not. What is? He is not the type to do this. He's intelligent and reserved and wants to oh, yeah, preserve yeah. his... He's pragmatic. He is not a braggadocious, arrogant person uh, in the sense that he would taunt Captain America and tell him his plan and be like, well, you're going to be dead, so it's okay. It's not something Zola would do. Mustache so twirly. Yeah, it's very mustache twirly. It's like, ooh, that's really, yeah, bad. But, bad, um, bad, bad. Should we flip back to Far From Home? Far From Home, yeah. Uh, sure, yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, so one thing, um, and this is re in regards to um, Mysterio's plan with the elementals. So the thing is, is that if there were other Avengers that showed up for the, for the elemental threats, um, 
his plan basically fails. So for for example, why if we have if we have Captain Marvel there and laser blasts get shot at at the drones, it's like okay, that's that's game over. The drones get destroyed. The the illusion well, is pretty either, obvious. Either either the drones get destroyed or the laser blasts go through the illusion entirely. Wait, sorry right. to, yeah. to clarify. So with the elementals, not future threats, right? Well, with future I'm, threats I'm too, actually, specifically... because if the future threats would be like uh, illusions that he makes up, right? Mm -hmm. We yeah. don't have reason to believe that he will do illusions anymore after the mm -hmm. uh, London one. That is the Avengers level I, threat that gets him a seat at the table. I feel like that opens like a new can of worms, so I think we should save that specifically for later. Okay, and yeah, sure. On... So, so the yeah. elements was right. So the idea. So, I, so if I got it clearly, like he's fighting the water one, and then Doctor Strange shows up to help out. Is that the idea? Yeah, stuff like that, you know, because Doctor Strange was shown to manipulate the water in, in Endgame. Okay, um, so I guess the things that work in his favor is the first elementals are unexpected in locations that are far away from where the Avengers tend to be. So he could have the threat appear and neutralize it before there'd be any chance of anybody getting there to help him out and destroy the drones. Hmm. So my question there would be, okay, so... With Doctor Strange, uh, he can just see this, like, in the news, uh, same with the Sorcerers, and he can just portal there, like, immediately, and he's already there. Wait, so, the, what, there'd be, like, a news crew waiting as soon as the monster shows up? Well, no, 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 I'm just saying, like, there would be live reports of the situation out there. In the middle of, like, Guatemala, wasn't the first one in, like, Venice. a school village in Mexico? Oh, uh, Mexico? Venice, Mexico, Yeah, so I'm, I'm talking about the first and... couple, right? The things that get him on board, and hmm. then, so it leads into this point, as soon as Mysterio makes contact with Fury, he's now got access to, like, oh, who's available, who's not available, so he knows this information now. That can factor into his plan. Right, but that can change at, like, any moment in time. Yeah, it could, and then he has to adjust his plan. Right, he, but I don't think how you could he possibly adjust his plan if Doctor Strange shows up. Yeah, it's over. So, so if he gets told, all right, so Doctor Strange is un, uh, Doctor Strange is unavailable, and then he does show up. Do you mean like instantly without anybody being able to know? Because like if he's so unavailable that they can't even get contact with him, is he even on this planet or, or in this universe at, at this well, point in time? So the weird thing is, um, Talos uh, being Nick Fury. Um, he says to the real Nick Fury at the end that people keep asking where the uh, other Avengers are and he doesn't know yes, what to say. That's right. Yeah. So does he not know how to actually contact them? Um, well, I think it's the idea of what is he meant to tell other people about what the Avengers are up to. Maybe Talos actually does know. but Or maybe he doesn't in terms of Doctor Strange, but we know that he's unavailable. But also, it's a risk you got to take if you want to do this, this, uh, this project. He just That's has to a take really the big risk. risk. Um, really yeah. Sure, risk. really big, really, really big reward if it pays off for you, though. But like, if it doesn't pay off, it's like game over. And is it a really big risk when he's got very measured ways that he can get information about who's who and where's and where they are? Like, how also, big of it is is it, of a risk is it? I would you know? just picture, by the way, say he's battling one of these things, and then uh, Doctor Strange arrives in a portal, and he's like, "Hello, Mysterio." Like, you know, what's the best way to deal with this? And then he goes, stay back, Doctor! And then he fires right into it and kills it, ends the illusion. Because he knows yeah. that he's run out of time if Doctor Strange shows up. But what if Doctor Strange just shows up and attacks before... Yeah, what if um, he just jumps Like, he just tries to manipulate yeah, the yeah. water. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, then that might cause problems well, for him. Yeah, the plan I mean, can fail. He can definitely pay. fail. Yeah. Right. The issue the here plan is that he just straight up doesn't account for this. Um, I think he has done a pretty good job accounting for it by getting in mm. early to get his... You, you can say, mm, but like he got in early to get contact with Fury, and then from there he can get information about who's available. I think it's actually right, pretty. Like, clever, I'm not, to be I'm not with you. like That's... just out of curiosity. How would you, how would you do better than what he's done? Uh, so one example I would go with is because so here's the thing, um, you don't because Iron Man he's not a magic based superhero, uh, he's a tech based superhero. So with uh, Mysterio, you didn't even have to go through the the magical route. You could go with the technological route. Um, another thing is that the threats themselves Wait, sorry, they don't what? have to be like. Sorry, I, uh, I'm confused. What do you mean? Uh, what I mean is like so with uh, Mysterio, you know how he uh, makes it so his powers are like magical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So he doesn't have to do that if he just makes himself a tech-based superhero like Iron Man. How could he do that? Uh, well, well for illusion, example, if he were to create, yeah, the drones. Um... Yeah, but wait. So, but but remember, like Mysterio's got like a, a real suit. If he has to pretend that he's like Iron Man, he's gonna always need to have like some sort of fake Iron Man suit around that he can physically have when he needs to interact with people. That seems like a big wrench to throw sure. into his plan, like an extra thing he has to account for all the time. Well, I, that's a lot better than having to account for trying to trick Doctor Strange that these illusions are real. I'm curious how this, um, so you, you're picturing like the, the drones would scan an Iron Man suit on top of him or something similar, and then when he battles um, the illusion enemies, he's firing missiles and they're all like real missiles from the drones? Is that kind of how you not, see it? Not necessarily. So what I mean is like, uh, if he, if he uses like, uh, like the drone, like let's say the drones, like that's his ability, right? That's how he uses to f what he uses to fight people with. Um, um sorry, were you gonna say anything? Oh, I'll let you go. Go ahead. Okay, so yeah, uh, let's say he's like tech based, and that's that's basically his abilities using the drones to fight. Um, let's say let's say like instead of elementals, it's more like realistic things like um, I I don't know robots or something like that. That could be an example. Um, so if the fights were, were more so within, like, like technological based, more grounded, that would make it easier to trick people versus going full on the magical route. So a big part of Mysterio's shtick is marketing himself as a really cool hero. I think it undermines mm -hmm. it pretty significantly if you are Drone Man who has drones that you use. Also, no, drones it's, that it's are sort of very being... similar to Peter to uh, the tech that's used by Tony Stark, that's going to raise a couple of red flags. So I don't think that we were talking about him just uh, being Drone Man. More like having, um, instead of projecting the character of Mysterio, like he's made up, as a Doctor Strange style sorcerer, rather someone that's more like Iron Man. And I think that mm -hmm. that could also make a lot of sense, especially if, uh, like, for instance, uh, the hologram of Mysterio that we see pulls out, let's say, a flamethrower. But it's actually like the drone's flamethrower. It's like, okay, that makes mm -hmm. sense. And it's actually doing damage. And it'd be very difficult to, uh, like, debunk um, how he's doing this. You know but what I mean? But a big thing to remember is why would he care to do that if? As his plan is playing out right now, he is able to deal with this with no other heroes that are like magical to account for. And, and he's this, super and all, extravagant yeah. too. Yes, he is. It's very showman like. So he's he's trying to raise attention to himself, even though this is um, extremely risky, especially if other superheroes show up. He is right. trying to present himself as like I'm the new Iron Man. Look at me, big old hero man coming in to save the day the public aspect and the inspiring thing and how cool he is is like an element of it i'm also a little bit do, right, like just to clarify all plans from villains will typically come with risks yeah right but what i'm saying is that going with the more technological hero route uh is less of a risk compared to going on full-on magical like so you're already who, 10 would steps he, who would he be fighting? Like you're saying he'd be fighting like uh, said drones, right? Too? Robots, drones. Yeah, like so drones, robots, stuff drones. like that. Like you know, like the Iron Man two fight where like he's up against all the like the drone army. It's like yeah, something like that. So he's fighting his own drones. Um, right. I don't know if he'd be able to convince them that he's defeating a world-ending threat at that point. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, not necessarily because if you Compared make the it elementals. so. So if these are world-ending threats, then where are the other Avengers, exactly? That's a good question. I'm hoping the rest of the MCU answers this, the because the they were told, answer, obviously, yeah. when making this, that they don't have access to any of them, because they're all... We know where Wanda was, that's fair. As for Man, Falcon and Winter Soldier, um, I yeah. don't think we have the answer yeah, I mean, for those. They're, they're also not really going to be able to help much. True. Um, us, um, I'm assuming Doctor Strange is trapped in the multiverse or some shit. I, yes, or like, something else. And Captain Marvel's off fighting. I hope. Brawls, I don't know. Well, yeah, because Doctor can, Strange would have solved hope. all of the issues of uh, this film, the two TV shows. He should have been in all of these situations solving these problems. Yeah, he should be getting involved, but mm. we don't know. But yeah, like, even, even if they were um, to, like, let's say that the movie plays out totally differently and Mysterio wins and he's uh, considered, like, the next Iron Man, um, he's not keeping this ruse up. True. Not with um, anyone with any extrasensory abilities. I'm I'm willing um, to concede it will eventually have like, to be something he has to change. 
like War Machine um, and Falcon, they both have uh, the thermal imaging in their goggles and or Peter helmets. Parker. And Peter Parker. Yeah, Peter Parker's spider sense is what alerts him to there being drones and in, in the um, Europol building being an illusion. Um, and the fact that Peter Parker's spider sense is not working in this movie is very, very convenient. Like, it's so no, incredibly no, no, lucky no, 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 to... No, no, how, no, how, no. How? How? So, uh, we're um, we're going to have to talk about the entire character arc of Peter Parker if we want to get into that. No, so I'm I saying... So, Mysterio is hatching this plan at the same time that Peter Parker's spider sense is not working. Yeah, there's a good chance that, that. Mysterio... Watch me. So Mysterio has clearly planned this. <laughs> like he, Mysterio has designed all of this to happen the specific times. He's gunning for Peter right after he knows that Peter's mm -hmm. father figure has died and he's struggling with it. They have constant eyes on Peter. So he knows yes. that Peter is Do under significant stress. Sense? He doesn't, Do they know about his spider sense? He wouldn't have to. He knows that he's stressed the fuck out. Mm -hmm. So his spider sense stops working because he's stressed? Um, emotional stress and PTSD would probably affect your spider sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. But where's that in the in the film? Oh, uh, there's, um, there's a couple of examples. Out. I, out. I would say the the most prominent one is when he gets his photo taken and he starts to bug the fuck out. Um, yeah, have a bit of a it's, he it's can't almost, handle all the press talking to him, and then it all zones out. And comes like a hum of just yeah, mm, it's one of the most with it. standard ways of portraying PTSD in movies ever. Yes. So, so, okay, so you're saying, like, because of the stress and PTSD, that's what causing his, like, spider sense to, to well, not work. that and his so mixed sense the, of identity doesn't know what he's supposed so, to do. Yeah, so, mm. to tie into the okay. broader thing, to, t to talk about something that's, like, I think good, because we really haven't talked about much of that at all throughout this whole thing. Which is okay. Peter's arc fundament- yeah, it's fine, because, again, these films have problems. Um, Peter's arc fundamentally is tied to the sense that he doesn't know what his place or role is in this new world. He's struggling because his, his, his mentor has recently died. He died, which is an important thing to remember too. The world has changed pretty significantly, <coughs> and he really has no support network at all to deal with any of these issues. And he he is struggling. He probably, yes, and he fought in a war. See, he, he, I think it's safe to say he has PTSD. Uh, or if not so, PTSD, something comparable, because we see that throughout the movie. He is not in an emotionally sound place. And so now we have Beck show up, who's really nice to him, smart, he's friendly, supportive. charming, and, he, and supportive, and he can talk to him about these problems. And he reminds him a little bit of Tony Stark. And that's all part of the plan to trick him into so that he can succeed at his plan. And so... The Peter Tingle and his inability to rely on that, it is in a certain sense representative of he's just he's just scattered. He's not, he can't think clearly, he's really struggling. But as May tells him, in relation to trying to get with MJ, but broadly in relation to the whole film, just trust your instincts, uh, don't overthink it, and you'll be fine. That's like kind of the the core thing that is that uh the, the movie is moving towards. So he's, you know, he thinks that Mysterio is his friend. He's been betrayed. Uh, Later on at the end of the movie, he's starting to finally, so like, get that confidence in himself back. The confidence of, like, I have a place. I can make a difference. I can help. And, yeah, his, his Peter Tingle's back because he's, he's just, he's there. He's in the zone now. He's, he's back. He's found his confidence again. He understands that he can find his own place in the world himself. He just needs to do the best he can. And that's what Spider-Man do. That's like the central arc. So yes, it does make sense that his Peter Tingle isn't really working that well because he's just not thinking clearly at all throughout the whole movie. Then why was it working at like the start of the the illusion sequence? Which the start of which which one? We're talking about like the uh, big the, scarecrow the nightmare sequence. The what do you mean it's working? Mm -hmm. It. Literally, uh, do you think that his do you think that his spider sense is tingling when he starts to think, hmm, something's wrong here, or that he just I, figured it out? I, I would like to mention, by the way, yeah. I don't think it's binary. No, I don't think it is either, because we know that he can dodge bullets and jump around and do crazy stuff, but like the ability to do these incredibly pow amazing feats, like what he does at the end of the movie, I think that's like him like at peak. Right? Visually, peak we get a big old representation when the final illusion begins. Doesn't Peter like take a big breath in? Yeah, come on, Peter Tingle closes like his focusing. eyes. His eyes are closed, and he's running around and kicking their asses. 
because that's how on point he is at the moment. But as for that illusion, I think it's safe. Ugh, I keep saying it. I think it's reasonable to believe that he's just he's just noticed that something's wrong here. Like, wait, something's wrong. Uh, and then, he, you know, he he doesn't what, get hit. What does he notice? Um, so when you're talking to Nick Fury and it's like, oh, hey, um, hey, who'd, who'd you tell? Um, oh, this is really, this is really bad. Who'd you tell? And then maybe he's thinking like, wait a minute, Fury, you picked me up from like, wait, hold on, wait. And then it's like, oh, something's wrong. Like, Beck's here. Parker. I don't see how uh, it's that's totally. Not, that's not the read that I got from that scene. I'm, so, I'm confused. So, who else did you tell about? What reason did he have? Would you say he had to believe that Beck is something there? Something just so. Uh, I, sometimes I, I, you just I've got a reference. Feeling, it's the same thing that set yeah, me yeah, off. It's when Fury. Yeah. The last thing he hears is, "Who else did you tell? Who did? Who else did you tell?" It's like, yeah. Why is that relevant? That, but that is relevant because he needs to protect them. Well, <laughs> okay, so I don't need yeah. proof for this because I literally in the cinema was like, oh, fuck, none of this is real. So, like, Peter did the same thing. Yes, he had that same reaction. The Mahler tingle. And he was wrong. Yeah. You don't need a Peter tingle to figure out that something's wrong. In and besides, that area. he's got heightened. Peter tingle isn't off. I, I don't know that we would no. conclude that. It's not mm -hmm. working well. As it, or as well as it, it should, generally, yeah. Hmm. I did not get the impression that it was his spider sense that alerted him to something not being real. I thought he just figured it out like I did. Uh, it 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 came across differently to me, at least. Okay, yeah, it didn't come across that, that way to me. So in past like, time, I, I guess. So there's, <laughs> there's something. <laughs> there's something about like the the camera angle on Peter and like how it like kind of moves from like pans from right to left, um, that comes across as like they're trying to um, communicate that this is some. Oh, and there's also, if I recall correctly, there's like a a sound effect that that plays when this happens. Let me see. Yeah, it's like a. It's just, I I take it as he's thinking. He's thinking this through. And then it's like, oh. wait, is this place even real? Yeah. Parker? Um, I'm watching Parker. it right now just to it's see. Down. It's Beck. He's here. Watching it again, too. Um, what was what was it that brought us here? Because it was a criticism of Mysterio's plan, right? So we. So what what else is wrong with it? Um, Hang on, so we were, we were talking about the. I was uh, going to say, how did we get here? Oh, let, yeah. I oh, think so was, I was talking about extrasensory abilities, including uh, right. Peter's spider sense. Oh, right. So the people who would be able to see. So I guess right. the thing is, like, Peter's ability to see through the illusion. It's like, what, what, ex or, or anybody's ability. It's like, what does that mean in terms of, like, what the illusion is doing? Like, do we, how do we know exactly how anybody with extrasensory abilities will be able to see this illusion, right? Like, if they see a giant rock monster, how do they figure out that it's not a giant rock monster? What would be their means of doing it? I also, rock monster? I also assume that um, Mysterio has planned this to try and get this all done as soon as possible. Quickly as possible, um, so that he can be like, I'm he a hero. Gets, and yeah, then... he gets his status, his prestige, and then, um, I would even go as far as saying, right, if uh, Loki comes in with an army of aliens, just like he did in 2012, you know, for whatever reason, you don't make it up. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, Doctor Strange goes, and he's like, come on, Mysterio, I need your help. And he's like, oh, okay. And he'd just be like, right, I've got to just, just come up with a way to attack these things while also... Oh, well, actually, I can just send the drones. Because they're my drones now. And they're real. Because I have they're Edith. Tony's drones. I have Edith, that's right. Yeah. And if someone was like, why aren't you there blasting them with lasers? Like, the drones are better than me, and I need to stay alive to control them. Yeah. Uh... Because well, once he gets the drone, the he's got a log. Also, yeah. if we're getting really, result... like, if he's he's got his writer, he could literally be like, the longer I spend away from my home world, the less power I have because I draw it from, you know, its core or some yeah, shit. And it's, it's draining it. Like, it's just still made up. Yeah. Yeah. But people believe it. And if, and if he eventually said, said drone, I've lost all of my abilities, but I do have the drones and I've been entrusted by the most, like, the legendary heroes of Spider Man and Tony. Well, depending on how this film ended up, he could have said that. He could have said, Peter trusted me and I'm going to. Do the best I can. Hmm. I'm actually gutted that he's he... out because I really like him. Yeah, I, like I hope he comes more. back. I hope he comes back. Yeah, I like him too. He was kind of he was cool, yo. He was a cool villain. So isn't that the criticism that we brought up earlier about him uh, posing as more of a tech-based superhero than magic-based? 
Oh, well, so the, the counter, I think, that works is that he's going for the most extravagant display ever with l all kinds of lights, smokes, and just uh, mm -hmm. particle effects everywhere. It's, it's literally a show for the world to prove that he's the best hero ever. And that that's why he's settled on doing it this way. Because he, he can make it work. He's one of the most vain characters in the, the MCU. Yes, he is. Yep. Very vain. Like, the cape, he needs to make sure that um, there's no it's, it's creases fluffed. and stuff, and he needs to yeah, test it out to make sure yeah, that it's fine. he's, it's he's arrogant, isn't he? No, I said vain. Oh, do you... I know. I yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of the same word. <laughs> um... No, well, so uh, vain, no, no. not strictly. No. Vain is like you're concerned with appearances. Arrogant means you think you're better than everybody else. Hmm. Okay, that's true. Yeah, you can be um, arrogant and still not think the song's about and you. not be. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, so it's not just limited to Captain Marvel or Doctor Strange. Uh, there's also if if Thor suddenly shows up, yes, um, Thor wields it. lightning. No, you you are right about all these things. This is the time to do it. Um, if you look yeah, at the timeline, Mysterio probably thought, like, this is our best shot, we're gonna take it. Yep. Because otherwise his option is never try and just be relegated to nothingness, like, in terms of things forever. Like, there's always well, gonna be I a I don't know, his, 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 um, his illusion tech is really revolutionary, and I feel like, um, he doesn't have to do this to really impress people. That's so, his motivation, and... Now, uh, remember... Yeah, S SK, you, you, you can take the lead on this. Sure. Um, okay, yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, all I'm saying is like, okay, so you have like this revolutionary technology, li li limitless applications, yep. so it's like you would think you would want to, to go down that route of, um, you know, uh, using, you're using your invention to get rich and famous instead of just going down the route That's... of being a superhero. Well, What does he remember. want, though? What does he want? A recognition? It's, it's a lot more specific mm. than that. Um, what what would you say that he wants? He wants Tony Stark. He wants to be Tony Stark. He wants to be Iron Man. He feels robbed that Iron Man did what he did to his life, so he wants to take his position. He wants to be the best superhero on planet Earth. Right, but isn't that just in service of him getting recognition, or does he? Well, this is peak recognition. You are the savior of Earth. You're number that's one. Peak recognition, <laughs> yeah. As Elon Musk is going to be really outdone cool by tech. Tony. That's like yeah. that's pretty cool. You know, it's it. This is way above that. Whatever he could have achieved by selling, yeah, it. and plus, we already know that whatever that limitless application was. What was that? Because he is an unreliable narrator, and there is unlikely that. Uh, Tony told him he was unstable for something that was reasonable that he wanted to do with this technology. Yeah. And uh, don't forget, the first thing he does in front of Peter is recreate what Tony did in 2012. He's like, yeah. I'm gonna potentially die to save the world. I have no choice. I gotta do it. And it's just, he's, yeah. he's generating this uh, cult of personality. Because this is the thing. If we had a real-life Iron Man who did all the things he did in thing, he wouldn't even come close to Elon Musk. It's like, we'd be like, oh, Elon Musk's cool, I yeah. guess. But, like, that guy? Fucking hell. He's yeah. a legend. He's a hero. Yeah, but the reason I'm saying this right here is because the the route of becoming a superhero does have a lot of risks in him. People getting take caught. risks in life. I don't know what else I can say. People well, take risks. Well, yeah, but That's like this is not a risk that he wouldn't have yes, to it take. Is. Yeah, people take risks. Oh. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, there are a lot of people who were very rich and very successful who did incredibly risky things because they wanted more money and more success. It is not human beings do this like human beings can just do these things where they want something more that is incredibly risky when they already have a lot that guy who um did the ponzi scheme who ran the nasdaq what was his name he was like a billionaire but he ran a ponzi scheme because he wanted more money this just happens in real life that people do things I, that are incredibly risky just because they want more money or they I want don't, more fame i don't really care too much about the risk i just want to know do you consider it in character and from what we gather from yes. him in the movie it is the answer is yes um, if the risks weren't there, then I would, yeah, I would consider it in character. No, if the risks are there, would you consider it in character? Um, no, not necessarily. Why? Especially Why, not with his crew. Why? Not with his crew, what do you mean? So, you have not just Mysterio thinking that they can do this indefinitely, apparently, but also... No, 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 no. We, we cancelled that out, we already did that. 
You don't think that Mysterio's crew... So, do you think that Mysterio thinks that he can do this indefinitely, or... Why, well, we I, talked about... So we, we did a whole, yeah, we did a whole scenario of how he could uh, wind this back down once he's done his super extra extravagant display. Yeah, we did a... Uh, there was a lengthy conversation about this. So, we're past that, so he doesn't need to do it indefinitely. Because if ever things start to change, he can change his plan and account for it. I, I, I suppose he could in the way that you guys described. I think that's pretty reasonable, the way that we described it. He, he, he can find ways to make it work. He's already won a lot of people's trust. The benefit of the doubt if is some, something that he has tricked people into. This is what I mean. I think he did a pretty damn good job, and it's really yep. cool how yep. he did it. Like, um, obviously, getting that one distant monster, so he knocks it out before anyone else can, then he gets yep. access to all the information he's going to need about all the superheroes that he could get from Faux Fury. So then you can keep an eye on like mm -hmm. it's like these people aren't on our plane they're not gonna do this it's just like well now he just needs to talk to the team and be like so when will be the best time and then you find out like we're getting cl further and further away from when peter's dad the father figure died um and we're keeping track of the will and the elements of that he's got the glasses he's on a holiday it's like now is our chance this is the best chance we have we have to do the plan now yeah. and i mean we see that because when they're in venice one of uh one of beck's guys is visible in the background following peter parker i know who he is they're keeping an eye on him Mysterio is mm. honestly, I think he's good as he's a neat. villain. <laughs> I think he's good. I just like that his motivation is so interesting compared to most in general. Yeah, yeah, it is. And you could do a lot with it, which is why I do hope that he comes back later on. Um, maybe this was all a trick, you know, with the death. Uh, I'm not entirely... Go, go ahead, SK. Okay, I was just going to say, not entirely convinced... Um... Uh, by the counters being presented here, but I am happy to to move on because I think we're just at a point where it's just um just at a stalemate right here. Uh, should we okay. switch um, back to good old So back to Winter Soldier, I think then, right? Yeah. So uh well, while we're speaking gonna... Oh yeah, sure, go for it. Yeah, I was just gonna mention like another part of his plan that um oh. that doesn't hold up very well. So Okay. Um Okay, yeah. Okay. So he's he so Mysterio uses bullets to try to simulate the structural damage. Um, we see this in like the illusion test scene, where he tries to use bullets to simulate the damage of uh, the structures. Not yep. a very good idea because if anybody, like any cleanup crews, will 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 catch on to this and be like, "Hmm, uh, the damage was caught was suspiciously caused by like these bullets," and like the casings would be all over the crime scene as well. So it's like. That's not a very uh, good way to simulate the damage. That would only raise suspicion on whether or not the the elementals are real or not. Um, so, um, that you know that is it's an interesting observation because uh, I remember I wrote down a list of what we can see that the drones are capable of doing. Let me just <laughs> find it because I need need that so that I don't get anything wrong in terms of. Okay. So, because we have we have a lot of scenes where we 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 see how the drones work explicitly, like um, so they yeah, so they can fire bullets, uh, they can project electricity, shoot shock waves, uh, they can shoot lasers that melt things, flamethrowers, rockets, uh, cloak and project illusions, um, so I think everything there works pretty well. The bullets is the iffy one, um, but it sounded like Mola had something. Well, I, I was I was gonna say I, I think I think I simply agree with you. Yeah, uh, it's um the, the uh, those shells are gonna uh, cause potential trouble. I picture that the cleanup for um the destruction you'll cause very deliberately, of course, uh, will be pretty significant. And I think that like it's gonna be really suspicious. Um, yeah, but the problem is, why would anybody assume? How how would people be able to jump to the conclusion of drones? Well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like there was obviously like some some uh something. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, something like manufactured going on um, about the yeah, that... destruction of uh, the structures. Sure. Yeah, I, th yeah. I think it will. Um, obviously, there's a good like. I, I don't know if, if they definitely used bullets in the um the final fight. Um, they were obviously showing what they can do with the bullets in the in the scene with those pillars or whatever they are. But uh, mm -hmm. um, if they mainly use the sh the shockwave blast, they'll be and they'll be alright. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm okay with them using uh using that, but like 
um, if they're like using the bullets to rehearse like the whole um, the whole event that they're gonna do, it's like yeah, that's not a smart way to. Simulate yeah, I, I agree. They should not. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be worried about the shell casings. Yes, you don't yep. want to create that level of suspicion. They, they could okay. easily just rely on the flamethrowers and the concussion blasts. Yeah. And... Mm -hmm. Although it, there is a problem as to how they're able to uh, carry so much water around Venice and uh, in areas that don't have a nearby water supply. Um, what are you referring to? Well, uh, uh, can I the take area... a picture of it real quick? A picture of... Uh, what do you want? Um, here, let me pull it up. Um, because I think where it it like where it happens is kind of important. Um, you'll see when when the photo gets. Uh, some... You're talking about the Venice monster. Yeah. Give me a second. Okay. So um. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got it. I got it. Keep in mind, like the what we're seeing, they they are taller than than buildings right here. Um. Oh, and if you want the timestamp, it's twenty four fifty two. Um, why do we assume that that's water? Um, well, the area does like it is pretty wet in in canon. Yeah. Um, sure, it's wet on the floor, but what about all that stuff in the air? That could just be fake. Well, I don't know how like the I'm I'm concerned with like how it would have gotten to like gotten that much water around the floor to begin with. I mean, um, uh, interesting. It's not even nearby a water source. Water. But like, if you well, look, like once he defeats the monster, if you look at the amount of water in the area, that's probably how much was always there. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still troubled on like how they would have gotten the water over there when this is like because it's an illusion. This isn't very close. That uh, what's yeah? That's a big I mean, element. Like the... What if it's not actually wet? What if the wa what if the floor is made to look um... wet? Let me check, actually. So then, I, mean, I, I don't. I also point. don't think it's going to be too hard in the area to make it look like it's wet. Well, he's well, got access really to a whole bunch of. Them. I don't know that it, it's going to be hard to yeah. get that much water there. It doesn't seem to be no, that I, much. I, I, I'm pretty sure they were really close to a uh, a, a canal. Um, that it was close hmm. enough by okay, that you could so, get some water there. So this is this is a question I have then. So is the idea here that uh, the wetness of the of the vicinity is like. That's like not actual water. That's just fake, right? So the broad thing would be that there is a blend in every instance of real damage and real things and fake illusions, of course, yeah. and that they are being blended together in ways that make the most sense for you to be able to make it believable. So, like for instance, when the fire monster is shooting flames, it's like, well, the fire monster is obviously fake, but the flames are real. And they're being fired from the the uh, the illusions, and whatever way that it gets blended is just you know science fiction, you know hologram trickery, mm. including like instantly melting stuff. Um, uh, oh, what are you talk? Uh, I hmm. Do you mean the the one with the fire monster where the stuff falls on his it's back? It's like the floor and the statue. Yeah. So, with the stuff like the thing falling on its back, big old thing that you can do is the illusions can cover stuff up and make it invisible and then project, like, a fake version of it, right? So if he falls back on the uh, scaffolding, you could have the illusion show the scaffolding fall on his back, uh, but the actual one is still there, and while it's invisible, you just use some drones, melt it down, so that when everything's done, or the chaos is over, it looks like it's been melted, or it doesn't, you know, destroyed in some way. Hmm. I don't see why that would be implausible, considering how uh, use how good these illusions are, and what they could do, and what the drones can be doing in the background. Ah, uh, so yeah, so uh, in Winter Soldier, which which where were we up to? Do we want? Oh, oh, one more thing I wanted to bring up about the water. Um, just okay, not too much, but um, uh, so. Do you think like some of the water uh within the area is is fake and some of it is real or it's all real or it's all fake? I don't think that it even really matters a whole lot which one I think because any of those configurations could make sense given what we understand about the drones. So um what I would say is so what let's go with the idea that it was all fake. So if people like if people uh step in that area or they like and it's like not wet at all. Their shoes don't get wet. Uh, 
I think we or, can knock like, out it's all fake. Group... I don't think it's all fake. Yeah, I think okay, all okay. fake would be like the biggest stretch. That there's some water there, mm. but maybe the sheer quantity or you know where it came from. That's kind of trickery. Mm. So I'm still and if that's the case, around, I don't um... think people would notice, right? So like people wouldn't be able. It's I don't terrifying. think in that situation people would be able to think, oh, maybe this is fake water that's here, and some of it's real and some of mm. it's not. I don't know that anybody would be looking out for that. I guess Mysterio could, of course, like. Um... I guess add like a rule is in a story. Um, it's funny, like we're breaking down stories and we're breaking down like his story too. Um, it's like so um, maybe a rule could be made as like the water works differently. I don't know. That's the best assumption that could be made about it. I think I think it's easy to find a way to make it work uh, and trick hmm. people. Sure, I I think I think that part's fair. Yeah. Um. We going back? So yeah, uh, yeah Winter yeah, Soldier. Sure. Um, so we we just talked about the Zola part. So I guess we just want to keep going in chronological order. Uh, well, do you mind so, if I, I just yeah. what a sure. fucking moron sure. Winter Soldier is to just randomly turn up to the Shield like <laughs> Lord's house in the middle of the night when his maid is there? <laughs> fucking, yeah. what are you idiot. doing, you idiot? Is a yes. gun on the table, and you know, by the way, the construction of this scene, right, if I'm being completely honest, I think the reason this exists is to make us as an audience go, fuck no, Pierce, look out, it's the Winter Soldier, yeah. terrifying, he's and gonna kill the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D., movie. and then he's like, want some milk? And you're like, oh, yeah. oh no, oh, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s he, evil, this is, oh god. Mate, it's like, oh, he's so evil, Well, he and I was gonna say, mate. I think what they want you to think is that Winter Soldier will kill her. But then Pierce is like, no, I'll do it, and fucking kills her himself. Yeah. And like, so He's this so guy evil. is a villain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like immediately after that, they go to they they manage to get to um Sam's house. Uh and then they're like, Oh, everybody we know was trying to kill us. To which my question would be, Oh, you you mean Bruce Banner? Is he trying to kill you? What about Tony? Is he trying to kill you? You gonna give him a call yet? Now would be the time. Give I will trust this guy. I met once. That I met twice, yeah. Like that's mm. it. Isn't he's it just the once? Twice. Oh no, sorry, yeah, you're right, uh, it is twice. So he runs twice. with him and then he meets him at the VA, yeah. yeah. Um, and so then they about, talk. Um, hmm? Oh yeah, sorry. So, just a little bit beforehand, it's like, you know, with Nat and Captain America getting around, like, uh, getting around the city, like, afterwards, so, do you think, like, it's, uh, it's an issue that when Hydra was doing, like, the was putting their lights on the in the area that they blew up that they do you think it's convenient that they weren't found oh yeah but we already talked about that right they yeah so oh away. okay maybe it's maybe really, I missed it then. It's yeah, really dumb they didn't track them but now we have to operate as though they didn't it's yeah apparently yes. they didn't mm -hmm. track yeah. them it's like okay but, yeah, yeah when they're talking to there's a neat scene with black widow in that one because black widow is, is is doing pretty well in this well, movie it um, might it might be worth saying i really like everything to do with black widow and winter soldier yes she yeah, is. Uh, she is in a good place. But that um, should probably give you an indication of where our happiness is not lying. I didn't mention <laughs> any other characters. Uh, uh, but yeah, so they, they talk to to Sam and they figure out about Sitwell, and then there's the part where they're like, "We're, we're going to go get Sam's wings." That feels super risky to me. I feel like that should be really difficult to get well, those wings from Lock and Key, right? So, yeah, I think so, but. Um, the thing that I thought about when watching this is like, okay, maybe they had the impersonation technology so they could pretend to be like uh, people that would be allowed to get it. But it's like, okay, yeah, you should just case, wear that all the time if you have it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. And also, I don't think I don't think we could assume that they even had it. I, I think, don't think uh, these the, three well, have I, that. I, currently, I that, uh, SK was was uh, trying to like he was still in the middle making his point that he was thinking about that but ultimately doesn't work yeah yeah because like if if that was the case that would create issues elsewhere i'm saying like either way it would oh, well, create big, big problems yeah i'm saying oh, i don't, yeah, I don't think it's reasonable yeah. to assume they have that technology on them they're in like yeah they're on the run okay. they haven't prepared they have it once they get to fury's safe house um, of course but uh yeah they have, so yeah, they have, have like that. fort mead to get the wings which is a little bit um, of a, a... It's so funny, in the film they're like, we need to get past like three gated doors with loads of guards, it's like, no problem. It's like, no, 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 no problem. <laughs> like, this is a problem. <laughs> this is, um, they've got like barely any resources, and they can't trust yeah, anyone, yeah. but they can just go and get that, it's like, okay. 
Yeah, what if right. someone like snapped the photo of them? Power well, of editing. I don't even know that they can get in. I don't know what their yeah. plan would be. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so then they they go to get Sitwell, um, which is something they wouldn't have Wait. thought of if Zola hadn't told them anything. So oh, um, yeah. I feel like it's time to bring in uh, since they're at Falcon's place. Falcon is intrinsically important to this plotline for many reasons, mm -hmm. many points, and he met him the day the plotline kicked off. That's incredibly yeah. coincidental. I think yeah. that is silly, yeah. Without him, they couldn't have won. Several times over. He does a lot of things yeah. for him. So, there's that. Um, they go to get Sitwell. And so Sitwell told his bodyguards to leave, which is super helpful, because if they had stayed, they wouldn't have been able to trick him into uh, going up to the roof. And so they do. And they, they have the whole scene where they like, oh, Zola's algorithm, you know, it's... it's evaluates people's past to determine their future, targets their biometrics, basically, and kills them. That's a little stupid. Um, but you know what? Again, it's, I don't know, like, science fiction stuff. Um, and so then, roll we get it. to... We get to the highway fight scene. Oh, no. Um, so, oh, no. Sam is in the, so Sam is in the car, first and foremost. If the wings are in the trunk, um, everything that happens afterwards, I guess the wings are gone. Where's he gonna get the wings? Did they bring them with them, the strike guys? In the same van that they eventually captured them in. The wings without are gone. that, the whole movie doesn't happen. The, the wings, wings are, are gone. gone. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's uh, yeah. And wings just, are gone. just, I just want to make sure, right? Four targets in a car. We want to kill them all. That is. Yep. And we know where they are. Yep. So, so we're, we're Hydra, and we're willing to blow the fuck out of this highway. In public, we don't care if people see this. So he's that magnetic one that explosive disc launcher. Yeah, uh, you know what? Exactly. I'll do you one better. Use Predator. just a ballistic missile. Blow him up from space. Predator missile. Yeah, yeah blow him up. Like, you know, you know the thing that he uses to try to blow up uh, Black Widow? You could just use that if you broke, into, you broke the window yeah. and then tossed yep. it in. Yep. Blo so, so it's over. They're, they're all dead. All four of them. It's mm -hmm. over. Hydra wins. 20 million people dead. Several times over. Um, Winter Soldier picks the worst thing to do, which is to kill Sitwell, the defenseless one, rather than, like, Sam or, uh, Steve or Nat by throwing them in front of the car, or just taking the wheel out, if he doesn't want to blow them all up for whatever yeah, reason. We ignore, if we ignore driver, all of the yeah. other ways that he could kill them, he chooses the one person- He chooses the worst. That, like, yeah. all of them want Hydra destroyed, one of them is being held hostage. It's like, if you're gonna nail any one of them, probably not that guy. Yeah, element of surprise blown. So he picks the worst one. That's pretty catastrophic for a guy who is um the you know the the the, the greatest assassin right who's ever lived. Um, greatest. So we have all that, and then uh, yeah, the, the fight takes place. He pulls out the wait, grenade wait, launcher now. Wait. Oh, so he takes two shots: one through the car into Cap's head, oh, but Cap yeah, ducks, yeah. and one into Falcon's head. That's his hope. He doesn't shoot where he cannot miss, he shoots where he can miss. If he had shot center of mass on the seat, there's nothing they can do, they're dead. Yeah. Will's greatest assassin. But he doesn't. Um, but yeah, he, he gets flung off, and then they, they crash into the back of their car, which knocks the gun out of Black Widow's hands, rips the wheel out, and then they crash. Um, I'm gonna just totally disregard that, like, Sam's he has no skin left on his arms when he's rolling across the road. <laughs> yeah, that's what always bothered um, me. <laughs> yeah, so that happens. Cap gets up, grabs the shield, gets blasted by uh, a grenade launcher from um, Winter Soldier. He, go he goes flying into a truck. His shield is gone elsewhere. Truck flips over as it keeps driving a little bit. So he's out of the fight for a little bit. You've got it pulled up there. That shield is flying real far away from where he is. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and so then they're, they're doing their cool little slow walk on the on the highway, trying to kill and Nat. the awesome uh, music keeps... kicks in, because the soundtrack yes. is awesome. The soundtrack is great in this movie, yeah. The evil uh, It's really great Far From Home too, though. Yes. Um, like awesome. Mysterio's theme being, uh, just change the key signature, uh, not the key signature. Uh, sorry, yes, change the, from major to minor, and then it gives a completely yeah. different feel. Really cool, like uh, Vultures being the inversion of the uh, Avengers theme. Pretty cool. It's um, um it's yeah, interesting but, how the uh, uh, the music seems to carry the action sequences in this movie. Yeah. Well, that and the uh, editing, I think. It's the the editing, yeah. yeah. The editing, it's, it's the but, pacing. 
yeah, Nat, Nat dodges a bunch of explosions, gets down on the road, whatever. She probably should be dead from the from that, but whatever. Yeah, I agree. Um, she runs down. Um, she somehow manages to get an angle to shoot Bucky in the eyes uh, that smashes his glasses. Um, but and, and then there's all that stuff, and then she runs away. And for whatever reason, Winter Soldier says, you guys kill Captain America, I'll kill Black Widow. I'm not sure why it isn't the other way around, but um, whatever, you know, it's, he's, he's not very smart. Um, and so now we get, now we get the, the, can I, can I just highlight, it's a bit of a nitpick. Yeah. I just think it's amusing. These people who, obviously the best thing has happened, Cap, for some reason takes longer than anyone else to get up, I guess, because he smashed through, but whatever. They don't yeah. help him. They just leave they him behind. They all just left. <laughs> like, but oh, yeah, so thanks. he's in that van, and the four bad guys jump down, one of them with the minigun, unload into the bus, all of the bullets miss him. Now, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about that. That is unreal. But anyway, he runs out, jumps out. His shield is there, which it shouldn't be. It's either incredibly convenient or it shouldn't be there at all that it landed that close to him. It saves his life. And again, if yeah. Cap dies, 20 million people die. So that is it's absurdly convenient for him. Um, and so he, he like cowers and tries to block him off. Um, and he reflects bullets into one of the dudes, which is that. Um, and so the the big part though is he charges the guy with the minigun, and the guy with the minigun doesn't think, you know what, maybe I'll go for the legs. Like he this just is, um, shoots at the shield and I he think keeps running at him. This is the most famous floor of the film that most people know about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shoot him in the legs. Why are you shooting him in the shield? You can't but... possibly miss if you're hitting <laughs> if you're aiming for the legs with minigun. Mm -hmm. It Fire feels so frustrating to watch as well, because it's just like it looks so easy that he could just tilt it a, a little bit down, and then he's um, dead. That's all you gotta do. And then, of course, you know, Nat fights um, Winter Soldier, narrowly gets away, and she gets hit, and that's fine. But, man, if Cap was five sec- like, a two seconds later, she's dead. If he was two seconds later, she's dead. Very lucky that he gets there in time to save her. Um, now, I don't know if you want to talk about the fight scene more, or if you want to- or um, I, well, shall so I? Because we're at, we're at four hours fifty minutes right now, so I'm not I'm not saying that well we're reaching our cap. I, for all I know, we're halfway through. Um, but I'm not going to go through every single thing. I think that um, uh, the the major one for me is oh, the well, uh, well. Well, I don't know if you want to. You, you you seem you seem into it, Frank. You go right ahead. So, do you guys remember a little movie called The Last Jedi? Uh, yeah. No, what's that one about? <laughs> yeah, so so there was this fight scene that everybody thought was really cool, where um where where they're in a big red room and they're fighting each other. Uh, the little problem with that was that there was a knife uh, or a lightsaber that um they could have used to kill Ray, oh, but when they when this. it's when it's when they need it, it just disappears. It's gone. It's just poof, magic. It's gone. Um, so Winter Soldier has three guns, uh, generally on him and a knife. So he has an There's assault two knives, rifle. Usually. He has two knives. Yes. So. He has uh, the the rifle with the grenade launcher, uh, and he has a machine pistol and just a you know semi-automatic pistol. So when he fights Cap, he starts shooting at him uh, with the rifle. He drops the rifle, grabs his machine pistol, um, starts shooting at him, and then uh, Cap leaps over the the car, kicks that machine pistol away. So two guns down. He grabs his pistol and they 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 start shooting at each other. Uh, wait, no, wait, he starts wait, shooting just, at him. So one thing I want to clarify right uh yes. the entire scene we we assume he he uh, he came here fully loaded right so mm -hmm. he pulls out the scorpion go shoot 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 and then he has to reload there are uh, he um, fires I the... that was a jam <laughs> oh it was a jam oh either way <laughs> Either How way. convenient! By American. <laughs> How convenient! Yeah, whether or not he's out of ammo or he's jammed, it's just like really convenient. Um. So yeah, he shoots the pistol, and then the pistol's just kind of not present. Now you have it pulled up, Mola. But what exactly do. does it look like for people there? So you can see him with the pistol. He gets punched, and then yes. the pistol's gone. It looks so. All we can assume is it's back in its holster, or he's lost it. But then there but is no. In the fight. No evidence of the pistol yeah. on him throughout the scene. Yeah, so it's we like, don't oh, see it in must be gone then. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, like, um, it must uh, be gone. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Here's how we know it must be gone because there is when when he catches the shield that Sam uh, that the cap throws at him. That is your peak opportunity to get out that gun that you definitely yeah, have and dead. shoot him as he runs and close the distance. Cap's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, like um, uh, they have. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. Uh, so I'm sorry. I just want to say the only uh, fix for the pistol that I can think of is they explicitly show like with a great camera angle cap clearly smacking the pistol out of Bucky's hand and the pistol goes flying off. And then he collects um, it I, later. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. yeah. It, like I, I, I am against guns just being knocked out of people's hands and they oh, never yeah, go for I it I agree again, with you. But... And I think if, if we were simply shown enough evidence that he might have picked it up at some point, be okay. I don't know how though, because but, we well, so the way to do it, right? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. It would have been really convenient, yeah. but they didn't even do it. It's just a hole. So you see this part where he's thrown by Cap. If we could see evidence of a pistol on the floor anywhere around here, it would be, it yeah. would turn into a dramatic convenience. But instead, it's just a hole. He just somehow a has a gun, because, materializes yeah. one. And we hey, see this. Yeah. Can I quickly just uh, point out? A, a movie with a really great fight scene that accounts for like the one gun that is in the fight. What's that? Mission mean? Impossible Fallout, the bathroom fight. Oh yeah, man. Mm. Oh yeah, falls, right. falls, falls out of the Asian man's holster. Wow, uh, Asian clatters man. To the, to the ground next, like in the bathroom stall next to them, so it's not in there with them. They simply don't see it because they're focused on getting into the bathroom stall because they hear guys coming. And the gun doesn't really ever come into play until the Asian guy ends up near that stall where the gun uh, fell down, and he reaches for it and almost kills Ethan. Yeah, um, um I actually think you know yeah. the part where they knife fight. Uh, it's pretty pretty awesome. It's still awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it looks a, really cool. Yeah, it's a shame the stakes of this fight are fucked with though, <laughs> with everything totally. surrounding it. As he he doesn't have it. You see full body shots where there is no pistol on him at all. It's he doesn't have it. It's gone. Um, but yeah, when he needs it to do, like, oh, who the hell is Bucky? Gun suddenly appears. Um, and, that, and that leads. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That leads directly into also, the police forces were willing to gun Fury down in the road. There's an active war zone type thing going on here, but they all decide now we will arrest these guys. We won't shoot them on sight. That's how the action scene ends. It's a big old oh, mother but, but slab but also, of war armor. We can't, we can't gloss over the fact that Winter Soldier was a split second away from putting a bullet in Captain America's head, and Sam just shows up just in time to yeah. save him. Yeah. And he's about to do it again, but just in time. Black Widow's got the grenade launcher, scares him off. You, just in time. At least he has the shield at that point. Yes, that's true, <laughs> but still. Goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> he was not ready for that. Um, Even before that, it's I find it weird that Bucky was just like after he was unmasked because like you know you want to get that mask up back on right away you don't want people knowing who you are um, yeah but that so he's more. just <laughs> <laughs> he's just like standing in front of Captain America just staring at him as Cap is staring back it's like shoot him <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah no he doesn't um and then that leads us right into the arrest scene where all four heroes are put in the same truck and it is the last truck in the convoy. Again. I just want to make sure we, we reiterate, they could have shot them on site, it was an active war zone, these people are attacking, like, their yeah. men, quote-unquote, they're all fugitives, they've done blah blah blah, but they just don't. And it's weird because Rumlow, mm -hmm. it's almost like they've all agreed to arrest them, they all come in like, uh, oh, stop, freeze, 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 and then they're like, wait, don't kill him here. And it's like, wait, if, if the orders were killed, then why weren't you shooting at him? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Just, oh, not here, not here, but we'll do it to Nick Fury in the middle of the city in front of everybody, and this whole... Yeah. And we'll when, do it to Cap and, and uh, in front of, like, the yeah, and highway. Cap is currently yeah. a wanted man. Like, he's they got a manhunt active for him, and he, he's been fighting. Like, they had all the excuses they needed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, no, they put him in the last truck of the convoy, and they don't kill him while they're in the truck. And wouldn't luck have it, Maria Hill is on this truck and saves their lives with the lightsaber to dig the hole out at the bottom, which would have been impossible if they were in different trucks. Or, alternatively, if they were all in one truck, but it was in the middle, instead or of if, at the back. Imagine Rumlow was just like, nah, I'll go with all them, right. with my guys. You can go in a different one, random yeah. person, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and, and again, yeah. if they are stopped, 20 million people dead. So, yeah, just... Just, mm. <laughs> just to remind it. It's another one time. of those things. And yeah, so, like, uh, it would have so been fantastic. It would have been grim as fuck, but can you imagine that he gets into the, the thing, they're all trapped, and he just slices all of their throats one by one because they can't move, and he's just like, yeah, this is the way to get it done. Because they, they yeah. apparently plan to dig their graves at, the, at like this <laughs> random site they had done that. <laughs> yeah. 
and they approach the back truck with their guns drawn as if something <laughs> has already gone wrong. It's like, why did you put them in the back of the truck, like the convoy? I love the editing, the though. It's like, there's been a lightsaber, so they're, they're gone. Yeah. There's no way. It's a lightsaber, so you're done. There's you a teleporter device. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of a concern I have with that as well. It's like, so they say three holes start digging, but there's, there's one hole, so, like... I don't know. No, what do you mean? Wait, uh, he he wait, sank wait. three holes to bury them in, like yeah. to, to kill them and bury oh. them in the one th hole. Yeah. In the oh. back of the I thought I thought you were yeah, gonna highlight okay. it is an incredibly fucking bizarre place to dig graves. They're like <laughs> yeah, because I was gonna say I was yeah I was gonna say wait so if that's what it, that line meant then that's a really stupid place. <laughs> yeah, look at it. It's like why would you dig graves yeah. here? Can can you dig graves here? Is there well, you can have some strong shovels. Maybe they have a lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I don't so, know. So, um, yeah, question: Did they escape once the trucks had stopped, or while they were moving? Uh... If the if it's while they were moving, that's gonna kill them probably. And if not that, it'll separate the fuck out of them, and the the driver should probably notice. Him in the rear view mirror. Mm. Something shitty, but but if it's while they were stopped, they had seconds to get through that hole before they would have been right found. But it had so, been, yeah, like what if they had, moved had, like, a while they were going or something? In? I don't even know oh, that they okay. could get all four of them through that hole before they check the back. Mm. Well, three of them. No, four of them. Yeah, it's four. Yeah. So um, that doesn't yeah. work, well, movie. I know you think it works, but it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, so many times that uh... the editing saves these characters. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, do we want to switch over? Yeah, you got... Uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. Blocked, far from home. What you got? Uh, so, okay, so there's this this funny line from Mysterio, but um, uh, he says, more casualties, more coverage, I gotta cut to the static. Uh, London is a beautiful city, they will, uh, they can recover, whatever. Uh, and then he says, uh, when its new savior descends, all those casualties will be forgotten. Okay, in the in a post Sokovia Accords world, those casualties will not be forgotten. Um, I Sorry. so if so, your your concern is like when you say casualties, I don't think he's refer so casualty means like injured person. He didn't say collateral, right? Um, oh, well, he's told like uh. This is gonna cause gonna cause a lot of casualties, uh, more casualties, more coverage. That's um, a big threat. And all those... Yeah. yeah uh, just to make yeah. sure, I'm, I'm not sure if we're on different. So, uh, the way I understand the line is that he's saying a lot of people are gonna die for our illusion, and then his people are like, "That's kind of fucked up, isn't it? We don't have to kill people." And then he's like, "Don't worry, they'll be forgotten." What he's referring to is that this horrible monster demon is going to kill people when it's actually him, but nobody's gonna know that. It's just gonna look like he's not doing it. He's saying it to his team. And of course, he's the hero, right? So everybody's gonna be like, what a hero, he saved the yeah, world. Yeah, like, we're not like, dealing with yeah. um, a Wanda situation in Lagos. We're dealing with, he's, he, an enemy comes up, it's hurting people, he stops it. There is no, he wouldn't have caused any collateral because he's just firing lasers directly at it. Like, I doubt, because it's his illusion, I doubt he's gonna have a moment where he, like, pushes it into a bunch of, a school bus full of children, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> Um, he's like reassuring his know. team, is what I'm saying. I'm not sure about the whole like all those casualties will be forgotten because. Um, well, well, it's interesting it be... that you say that because there are casualties that have been forgotten by people who watch some of these movies. It is kind of ironic, but like the Sokovia Accords still exist in this universe. Yeah. Um, well, but I'm confused. How does this? What do you? What do you think? How is um, that a problem? Like my brain is struggling with this one. I'm like, so, so you're saying that the accords would be like, "Hey, Mysterio, the horrible monster killed people. You have to answer for that." It's like, well, they wouldn't know it was his. Well, yeah, but like, the, they would, they would still care about the fact that like all those people died, and he seems to. I mean, be like, people no, are gonna, no, people, people will care, but the idea is they're not going to blame him, and they'll be like, "Well, you saved the world. Like, good job. You saved the world." So yeah, yeah, people did uh, die, but you said it's, the world. Um, I've always seen it as a really cool character moment, so they're like, this is sad and bad, while he's like, it's fucking, nobody's gonna remember him once we get X amount forward. That's not the point. Mm -hmm. They're saying, like, it's immoral, and he's like, nah, nah, we won't remember it at a certain point. Yeah. 
But wouldn't it be more impressive, like, if he wants to impress people so much, wouldn't it be more impressive if he was able to take out this monster with minimal casualties? More casualties like indicates none. how big of a threat it is, yeah, I, think I the, would say. The, obviously, yeah. the idea being, like, this was this was a world-ending threat that he single-handedly destroyed, and the more death count there is probably defines the bigger impact. If this thing attacked all of London, it was like no one died. It'd be like, wow. Okay. So really, that wasn't so bad. Uh, and again, people died. <laughs> But again, like that, that then just results in the question of like, where are the other Avengers? Which again, we'll have to see like the other movies that are coming out. Um, yeah, first, the, I suppose to, to account for this. But I will go as far as saying I like, I think can... Far From Home does better than the other two shows. Being I like, think so. For sure. I mean, yes. WandaVision. I mean, at least Falcon they. Winter Soldier are garbage. Uh, like complete your I, I That's would fair. Say um, at least well, I meant in this regard, they like... do give a shot in those other two shows. I, I think WandaVision tries, right? It says like they can't get a hold of. Don't they suggest that I fucking don't want to remember that? I, can't even think, I don't even remember. They do. I don't, I don't, I don't think they do. In that case, yeah, okay, ignore that. They're all just garbage. This this film at least has Spider Man asking about them and that they're unavailable or otherwise. Like at least yeah. they tried. <laughs> And yeah, I want a good justification for Doctor Strange. I hope they take care of that. I wouldn't rely on mm -hmm. it, though. Um, another thing. So, <clears throat> with, uh, um, with Mysterio uh, figuring out that, that Peter and MJ figured out that his whole thing was fake, so at that point, he would have um, figured out, okay, I need to tap their phones and see who he told. Um, and I'm pretty sure, like, the scene with Ned, uh, finding out about Mysterio, um, when he gets told about that, uh, I'm pretty sure Mysterio would have tapped their phones to make sure, like, uh, you know, who is Peter telling, um, so it's like, okay, if you could tap their phones, and I assume he would tap their phones at this point, then... Why didn't you just kill all of them right there? You already know who he told. You want to make sure you can't leave any loose ends. So he's going to put sure. Peter in a really tough position where he's like absolutely going to give him the truth as soon as he gets... Because yeah. I, I, I think you're right. I think he's probably got a lot of evidence of who he has told, um, but he doesn't know if that's all of them yet. And of course they're surrounded mm -hmm. by the other school people, so he's probably going to try and figure out a way to kill all of the suspects once he can. Yeah. Hmm. So I guess he just wanted to just to make sure uh, later on because uh, you know yeah, there might seems, be people um, that he's that he's missing out. He seems pretty elated in his fake fury once he finds out uh, what Peter like who Peter's actually told. He's like, "Ah, you're so fucking okay. stupid." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, another thing. So, um, when uh, when Mysterio is like pretending to be Nick Fury. Um, and he says, who else did you tell? He notices something is off. Like, mm -hmm. why would you reveal that it's an illusion? That's a pretty bad idea. Well, so it's, I um, would say that it's a, it's a pretty double bluff, right? And I thought it was pretty yeah. clever because it only just occurred to me right when, um, he asked him again, who did you tell? I was like, oh fuck, this could be fake too. Uh, I don't know. And, um, that's part of what he destroys Peter with. He makes him question his perception of deciding things between real and reality, and so you stress the fuck out at the end of that scene. Um, and then, of course, Fury is just like, just tell me! And he's like, yeah, 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 okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so I told this, awful. like, he's... The point is to just completely over overload him. And, and that's, so, that's kind of what the whole point of the illusion scene is. It's just, it's it's an overload of, like, information input. Obviously, re-referencing his father figure's death. Yeah. Sure, but, like, you'd think that after that entire sequence, that would only give him more reason to... Uh, believe that anything that he sees isn't is not real. No, so, because the big thing with he Peter fall? is it's like so. So the whole thing with the illusion scene is okay. So you make him not trust reality, and it's like oh, but uh, Mysterio has just been and oh, oh Nick Fury's here. Uh, who who to tell? I uh, uh, who and then it's like oh, who'd you tell? And just yells at him. It's like well, and I can understand. Especially given eye, the arc that Peter's going on at the moment. If you keep an eye on the scene, uh, yeah. it's obviously attempt one is point blank. He tries, and then he yes. sees Peter's like, something's wrong. And so plan B is, okay, he's figuring out that there's an illusion. What we'll do is reveal that everything is fake except himself. Oh, ignore me. Uh, or Fury. And so he's like, I'll kill Fury, quote unquote. 
and he, he shoots him, and it's believable for Peter that he's been shot with something that he can survive because of his body armor, and he's gonna turn up later yeah. and backstab Beck, because Beck didn't account for it. I think... And he's just like, oh fuck, I'm out. Him. I am out of the I fucking think. nightmare illusion sequence. Yeah. And then he's like, Peter, Peter, we need to know. We gotta save him. Who did you tell? His, his, his men are on the way, I think he says, right? Like, we gotta look after him. He says him. the men are tracking down anybody who, who might know what he's up to, so who'd you tell? Yeah, I think that Beck notices it's not gonna work this way, so it's like a plan B of trying to convince him with a double bluff. Yeah. And I think, I think it's a mm. really effective double bluff, because showing Fury get shot at that moment, Peter's not going to be able to put together, oh, this probably isn't Fury either. Like, so much is happening that he can't latch onto anything at the moment. But it's enough. It's enough to, like, whittle down his defense, I think. Um, I don't know. Because even then, like, with, uh, with the whole, okay, Mysterio got shot and uh, Nick Fury's asking who you told, like, even that could be fake. Yeah. yeah, of course that could be fake, but Peter's, like, confused. Um, I just well, said... I mean, you would think that... Sorry, go on. So, um, I, I don't want to re repeat it all, but, like, so you have to take every single element of what's just happened, and his mental state is almost destroyed, and then he's got someone yelling at him to save his friends. <clears throat> and he's like, yeah, 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 I gotta say their names. Yeah, but, like, his mental state, I think, would give him even more reason not to trust him, because... Again, he does, he can't tell what's real, what's not. So, remember, the central arc of this film that is reinforced consistently is that Peter does not trust himself or does not have confidence in himself. So I think it's really sound that somebody who is really lacking in a confidence and belief in himself and his abilities, who believes he's already screwed up badly, would immediately buckle if Nick Fury was, who he believes to be Nick Fury, is yelling at him. And remember, it's we pretty... need to save your friends. It's pretty convincing. It's um, he's back to reality. The reality news that existed from a little bit earlier when he saw it briefly before yeah. it recovered, and then Fury's got That's the right. the wound, or at least the thing, in uh, to be like, yeah, that fucking shot me. And it's like we did it though. Yeah. And he's limping as well. It's just I, I it's really good. Like it, I could it totally is. see Spider Man folding on this, being like, oh, thank fuck, you saved me. Hmm. I don't know. I still don't buy it. I guess we're not gonna agree why, on this point. I guess my question would be, why not? Well, it sounds like from what you said, you just you think that he would have clued on, right? Yeah, because like again, he knows like what the illusion tech can do. He knows this is well, something Mysterio probably. I would argue uh, that that is would... the the you're you're right. It's a complete stalemate because like this is a state of mind thing, and like we think that all the resources uh, the references point to it, but you think that there's a chance he probably should have seen it, and that there's more of a chance of it, so there's... I don't think anyone can prove yeah. anything definitively here. Sure, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, this is another thing where it's just, chat's just gonna have to decide who they believe more. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh... Um, okay. Uh... Do you wanna... Do, do you got something else oh. that you wanna do with Father Yeah, Mark something first? about the train that, that I find weird. So... Did he plan for the for the train to show up like at the exact time, or did he just oh there's a train I'll I'll just utilize it like he cause... has drones with cameras so I imagine that he yeah sees the thing coming I uh, so... picture it's on a set run time so he knows when the next ones yep. are riding in and he just and has to delay I'm Peter go... enough to get on the I right think one. I'm gonna guess Lamb and Berlin the... has a really effective uh it's Germans you know like <laughs> really really uh good traffic mm. management system and, like, infrastructure. That train probably comes fairly frequently. It was one of Zola's algorithms, the train. Ah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. yeah. I'm, I'm surprised... Effective. I'm surprised that that's the Nazi train joke that you came up with, Rags. <laughs> what do you, well, I, I have no idea what you could possibly be refer referencing. I think <laughs> I, I had a solid joke, and I Racism. wouldn't have taken that in any other direction. <laughs> I can think. Um, I, so, there, there's six million different examples of better jokes I could have told, but I think I settled on a good one. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So, okay, with that, let's say, um, let's say he told, uh, he told him who he, who he told, uh, after the train has already passed. So, what was he going to do? Was he going to kill him with the drones? Oh, so you're asking uh, if the train wasn't an option, what would he have done? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm assuming he's planned so that the train will be the option, but I, I, I would, yeah, I, I picture he can kill him with the drones I if he has to. I shoot him, yeah. 
Yeah, okay. So what I'm saying here is like, so if he uses the train to, like if he uh, gets the information out of him at a time where the train isn't there for him to kill him, then that's pretty lucky because with the train, he assumed that would kill him, but it didn't kill him, which I'm fine with. Like, yeah, I would assume that if I, if I didn't know the full extent of his abilities, I would assume the bullet train would have killed him. So that's fine. But like, if it was not in an instance where he was he could use the train and if he had just used the drones then that's game over that yeah but well so, I mean, he has full control over the illusion so he got to pick the time when the illusion ends yeah two two things to clarify is yeah. one if the train wasn't coming for another two minutes he can just toy with peter and the illusions until it gets here um Secondly, but, if he kills him with his drones, it looks like Peter, Spider-Man, Spider-Monkey, whatever, he's been shot to death, while instead he's in an accident where he got hit by a train. Hmm. I think the train is easier to cover up than bullet holes. We don't have to do anything. Yeah. He's gone. It's yeah. just like, yep. Well, I mean... Yeah, I guess, like, with the train, um, yeah, you can just... Because here's the thing, what I'm what I'm thinking about right now is like, okay, if he shoots him with the drones, I guess he'd have to he'd have to dump the body somewhere, which I I know the the Edith drones they they probably can't just pick people up like that. He'd have to pick him uh, up himself, and he'd probably have to walk to um, I don't know wherever he's gonna dump him. Um, so yeah, I I would imagine that would take longer than just waiting for the train. So yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Shall we um, um, hop back, or are we do you wanna keep going? Yeah. Let's let's hop um, back to Winter Soldier. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we got up to the part where it is the well, they've, they've gone back. They've met Fury. Do well, you want to take that one. Well, yeah. We get we get a little <laughs> bit of a flashback set while we're getting told that he's about to get his mind wiped, old Bucky. And this right here, this little shot, has reminded me of something that I definitely want to make sure we mention. Uh, I um, I'm not oh. saying this to Southport or to SK. Okay, Ni this is not mm -hmm. directed at either of you. I don't give a fuck if this happened in the comics, okay? Just putting that out there. <laughs> so, it's pretty convenient that in the first Avenger, Bucky falls off a train into a chasm, like a pure, like, it, to find that body, to even know that he fell or where he fell, pretty intense. But they found him before he died. They dragged him all the way to Hydra.com, wherever they would live. They gave him... <laughs> Hydra.com. <laughs> they, ga they gave him an enemy soldier the most impressive prosthetic arm I've ever seen, and then they uh, managed to- they go to the, the lengths of brainwashing him instead of- and, and giving him a super soldier serum, which by the way, they were unable to replicate successfully. Uh, he's the only one that they were successful with, and he happens to be Steve's best friend, which is something that is really useful uh, to this film in terms of saving Steve again and again. However, had this been anyone else, let's say someone they could control fully because they're a Hydra agent, uh, Hitler. It would have been over. There is a lot in that that's incredibly convenient to this plotline. What do you think? Yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah. Someone's gonna say, but he, Bucky was Winter Soldier in the comics, and I was just, I just wanted. But to Bucky was Winter that. Soldier in the comics. Well, yeah. then <laughs> find a more logical way to have Bucky become Winter Soldier in the movie. You, yeah. You want to know something funny? Uh, in the comics of uh, what is it? Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, uh, issue 13. Uh, you want to know how the conflict with Mysterio gets resolved? How? Oh. He flat out just tells him his whole plan. He tells him that it's all illusions. He tells him that it's all fake. Because, oh, he thinks he can kill Spider-Man anyway. Even though you've just told him very useful vulnerabilities to take you down. <laughs> I don't... Yeah, so it's like, if it's in the comics, like... That doesn't mean it's a good thing. Yeah, we're. Uh, <laughs> I, I I think that we should have clarified this uh, or disclosed this at the very beginning of of the uh, of the discussion. Sk and I have a strict fuck the comics policy. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. <laughs> especially yeah. when, especially when a lot of them are really stupid. Like the the a lot of the older comics, they have. Oh, a, it's not like a lot of really crappy writing. It's not like I've I've presented panels of uh, real Spider-Man comics in the, uh, the the text chats here for Bringy and, or uh, Rags and Mahler to read out together. That's never happened on nope. EFAP, ever. 
I think they're great. So, for um, me, carry right along. Sorry. So we get the we get the part where we find out that Fury's alive, and we kind of covered that. So we get the big plan, which is that they are going to uh, use these little cards to put them into the uh, helicarrier, and Fury is under the belief that these cards can be used to bring the helicarriers down safely. He says that they can salvage them. Um, that's really important. Keep that in mind. So, uh, oh, well, actually, I guess it will be relevant now. To which, uh, Captain America says, no, we're, we're going to destroy the Helicarriers. We're destroying S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. is corrupt. We need to take them down. Um, and we're going to get them to blow each the, themselves up. Everybody unanimously agrees on this. Nobody has a conversation about whether or not there's a lot of collateral damage that they should be worried about. Or even whether or not Cap is even right on principle about the idea of getting rid of the helicarriers rather than salvaging them. And it makes you wonder um, if Cap is aware of nukes. Yes, because he says that nobody should be allowed to have helicarriers. Uh, and as it turns out, helicarriers saved the day in Age of Ultron. And Avengers. And, and Avengers, that's true. Um, but ultimately, yeah, his decision is nobody gets to have these. We destroy these instead of bringing them down. Um now, I suppose we'll get back to the consequences of that decision, but I think it's important to note that there was no discussion about the necessity of bringing them down, like that we must, that we only have a short window of time to take them down. Um, and if they do have a short window of time, then Fury's an idiot who doesn't even know what his own tech does to uh, to bring it down. Um, or it's, it's the other problem where he just committed to that choice. Um, and the consequences of that choice, well, I suppose we'll get back to those later. Um, however, before they go to do their mission, which is pending, there's not a lot of time before Insight launches, Cap thinks it's a good idea to sneak into the museum and steal his suit. Um, man, talk about priorities. He well, would rather steal his old suit. When, when we watched, and EFAP fans, you'll know this, Batwoman, I believe the reaction to episode 3, season 1, <laughs> uh, yeah. we took major issue with Batwoman deciding, which by the way, really cool idea. You're trapped in a building with loads of civilians that need your help, but you're not in your suit. So what do you do? She goes home, redesigns the whole suit, and then comes back and helps them. Uh, <laughs> nowhere near as bad in this, but holy fuck, this is not what Cap would do. Yeah, this is really not what Cap would do. Um, you start yeah. adding up these, makes you think. Um, so anyway, um, they they get they manage to break into Shield headquarters. Whatever they they somehow did that uh, without anybody noticing them or stopping them. Um, and then he well, starts up. Oh wait, I, sorry. I we if, need to walk it back. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, I'm not sure exactly where you're going with it, but if we were to if we were to with the information we have that they have, what's the plan? Now, I can think of a pretty good one. Here, I'm gonna go with this, okay? So everybody gets their super spy coverage face things. We take the yes. positions of all of the members of the board, because apparently they're able to do that, which, by the way, I think is a problem, but I'm gonna let it go because, uh, you know, they're just that good and they've got all their resources. <coughs> um, you, you know, and, and so you, you, you do that, you go up to the room with Pierce, any one of you can just either knock him out or whatever you want, you then pose as Pierce, because they can do that with this technology, and you just order a delay on Insight. You're like, nah, gotta be delaying it. In fact, we're gonna be sending down the uh, the board members for an inspection. And then they go down to the uh, the areas, specifically the areas with the blades, and then they're just like, yeah, we're just gonna have a look, we're just gonna have a look, replace the blades. Like, oh yeah, yeah, just have a look, yeah, it's all chill. We're, we're your bosses, you can't do anything about this. And so, yep. um, nobody dies, they neutralized all the tech, and if fucking Cap wants to destroy them, I'm sure we can find a way to do it without killing many civilians but nobody uh, cares but to try we, this plan out because there's not enough action in it no that's right they, they need to do a one where the, the broadcast could be shut down immediately but they just don't um but yeah um uh in terms of like uh, now we we already talked about because when i look at my notes all i've got is cap on the helicarrier's peak plot armor but then i also write falcon dodging all of the helicarrier ammo stuff is complete plot armor <laughs> so like we already covered that um so i guess it would be going back to the the pierce part where they've gone upstairs strike team goes in they're like hoo hoo we bad guys we're not gonna arrest pierce we're gonna arrest you um bom, bom, and bom. so yeah, and then they have, and then there's all that stuff happening outside, and he's like, "Oh, you know, 
if you could if you could kill these bad guys would you do it with a flick of a switch uh he says no and pierce grabs his pistol to shoot him but then black widow jumps in now she punches him and for the next 10 15 seconds while the action scene is happening he is standing there with his phone he could press the button because she is wearing the little tag to burn a hole mm -hmm. in all of their sternums it's over it's done um yep, and, and it's i just want to highlight yeah, the hilarity yeah. of this image <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you got you got that. It's uh man, oh really bad. Um, and and I mean we didn't talk about this with the plot armor, but having the control center of the helicarriers unguarded at the bottom, protected by glass. What the hell is that about? That's some of the stupidest yeah. ship design I think we've ever come across. That's really bad. And there's yeah, no yeah, no people defending it either. What? No. Well. So this is interesting. Uh, <laughs> I got lost when I was thinking about this while watching this film again. So, Winter Soldier knows to go down there to protect it. How does he know that without Hydra also knowing, meaning they should have people defending it? Yeah. Problem. <clears throat> it's big problem, yeah. Well... Because uh, that's what enables the whole final battle scene to happen. Yeah. I mean, out of curiosity, how do you guys... Feel about Winter Soldier right now? Just getting a barometer. Ooh, um, yeah, I think I might lower it to possibly a two. Um, I don't, because I I haven't noticed like a lot of the stuff that's being pointed out right now. It's like, goodness gracious. Yeah, I knew that so was where, bad. Where was, but man, where was uh, so where was Spider Man really for you guys? But uh, you know, where was that? Um, for now, because you said, I, you said I, I, from I wanna, was about a two, didn't you? I think. Yeah, I want to, yeah, yeah. So, what I want to do is take all of what was said into account, reassess it, and see, uh, do all of these hold, and when I revisit it, whenever I revisit it. Um, but for now, I'm, I'm sticking with like, yeah, a two, okay, yeah, uh, okay. I want to rewatch, I, I, I want to rewatch the movies after the debate to, yeah, uh, come to a, a full determination. Um, I suppose because we kind of covered the plot arm, I was just going to say, why is it that Natasha Romanov's alpha access pass both exists and hasn't been removed? Uh, so basically she because, said, yeah, he, she was he says you have to have cat. two alpha passes, and she's like, yeah, I got Furies. And it's like, why is yours on the record? Why wouldn't they have removed it? Also, why do you have alpha level access? You're a soldier. You're a spy. Like, why would you have alpha? Alpha level is presumably for the top brass. Yeah, well, it gives you the power to dump all secrets online. There's no fucking way she has that power. So, oh, by the way, to clarify well, in terms of they... the 20 million dead that we've been saying, the 20 million dead, by the way, for anybody who... That's Pierce. He says they're going to kill 20 million. On screen, we see, like, 700,000. Yeah, 700,000. he says 20 million. Either way, it's still a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you, um, yeah. you going to say about um, the alpha level thing? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so I guess it seems that they need uh, Fury and Pierce to uh, both like do some sort of confirmation before uh, getting access to like the the files. But it's like, how did Fury sneak in his access? Like they cleared all his uh, access. They got rid of his clearance. It's like, how did how was that possible? I don't know. Oh wait, sorry. If I made a mistake, is it is it the two alphas are Fury and Fury Pierce? Because in that yeah. case, yeah. that's even worse. How come it's only an eye scan? Well, the, it, yeah, I, it should just check and see if they have a face. Well, <laughs> I I I'm more so just like Jesus Christ. What if you're under duress? Like, you, there's no proof. You just you want an eye scan, and that's it. you like authorize. We need two alphas. Get your eyes in. Like, I don't know. That surely there's passwords. There's Further, uh, like Maybe yeah, like fingerprints. Guys, guys, so I've always had this uh, this issue. So he says you need to look with both eyes open. So and, and like that's how they're able to do this is they apparently didn't erase uh, right, right, like, right. Nick Fury's yeah. biometrics for his his well, left eye, so, which is. <laughs> I was gonna. So that's the thing. That was where we we're gonna go next. I, I sorry, just to clarify. So it's not Black Widow's. It's it's Pierce's. But the yeah. requirement to use it is literally just his eye. It didn't actually, like, you don't need anything else. I just, I'm sorry, I just didn't think they would have such shitty security. Uh, but what, secondly... What if the scan was literally for his patch? 
<laughs> so now you need you, to have the, the, the right dimensions for this patch. <laughs> I think um yeah. I think we'll all agree alpha level access that's going to be limited to a very select few. And I'm glad that it's only Fury and Pierce. These are very high ranking members. Now, if you think of the pool of alpha level access as possibly like 20 registered, one of them is going to be wonky eye. You're like, what the fuck is this? And it's like, this is someone who has yeah. access to this apparently. And it's like, knock it off the system. Who is that? And it's like, it's registered to. It has to be. It can't just be wonky eye. It has to be registered to something. Like, yeah. yeah. And it would have to be registered to Fury. Like, or unless he calls it, like, you... you know, Rumsfeld, and it's just like, who the well, fuck no, is Rumsfeld? Remember, I think the computer said, yeah. hey, Nicholas J. Fury. I think the computer says Nicholas J. Fury. That's fucking dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, and another thing that comes to mind, it's like, a dead person has alpha level access. I think that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I... I've never understood this part, and it's crazy because obviously it enables uh, the rest of the plot lines to come. Nice one, Winter mm -hmm. Soldier, I guess. You yeah. did it. Mm -hmm. um, I think, oh, they could have, Hydra could have shot down Fury's helicopter as it was landing, and then that would be the end of the movie too. Because it would obviously be identified as non-friendly. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, like, that. so, this is the thing about having uh, stakes this high, right? Um, it becomes really, really important to uh, make sure that you don't have issues like this present in your story, because every time, because you keep on mentioning 20 million people die if, if this uh, doesn't happen, right? Um, every time that there's an issue like this, it's very consequential. There's like, yes. sort of a, uh, you need, like, the higher the stakes in your story, the, like, the higher the stakes the writing of that story should be. Just a the, little the general solid tip, basically. Be, yeah, well, but, to be. Uh, just to make no, it clear what, to everybody, what, what, at... what, right, what go I'm ahead. saying is yeah. like the, the higher the stakes are for you to make sure that that story is airtight. That's the point I was trying to get across. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know, just for the sake of clarity, there are more of these in Winter <gasps> Soldier. There are more. I don't. Oh I don't my know. God. It's a big list of these. Oh problems. my god! So, I am. I yeah. am. Look, I am all in favor of exploring all of them. You see, because again, uh, you know, what I said about uh, earlier about how I don't really care for hot takes. I lied. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my goodness yeah. gracious! Are you an illusion? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, I'm just trying to keep track because, um, because I know where a lot of this leads. Um, in terms of we we talked about bumping into and then um, oh. Do we want to do we want to talk about how the final fight scene is like absurd? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, how um, <laughs> Bucky not crushing the blade. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, there's <laughs> that, but there's that's not even it. But there's that. You're right, because if he crushes that blade, the movie's I'm, over. I'm he just saying. Throw I've, it, I've, yeah. I'm just saying. I've noticed that from day one. There's there's a plenty of these things that I trust me. I've noticed these from day one. Yeah. Um. It's yeah. Uh. So he he could have crushed it. Um, they're having a little fight. He has two guns. Uh, when they both get knocked away, one of them is just out for the rest of the movie. The other one is there, but only when convenient, even though I think it's sitting on top of the railing. Well, I have no idea how so the guns are getting around to where they're I'll going. I'll just, uh, a quick guide to the life the of this yeah. pistol. Uh, in your own <laughs> copies, I can't give you the timeline, but, uh, it's just the... The typing. <laughs> SK, your keyboard's oh, so bad. loud. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, he obviously attacks with the two pistols, they both get knocked out of his hands, and we see one of them fall and settle on the railing. It's just chilling out there. It's right there for those at home. Just chilling out. Next shot uh, that you see of the railing, it's gone. You can't see that pistol again. It's just out. Um, oh. The next time we see it is when they both fall into the ground, and uh, Winter Soldier just picks it off the ground. Um, but luckily for him, it not only managed to teleport because it was settled, it... it manages to get to the exact place that he ended up falling down after this fight. And if it wasn't just, you know, you, you, sometimes you wish, you're like, if only it was that silly. But, um, Cap's shield is knocked out of his hand, and it happens to fall right in the place that Winter Soldier ends up falling, and so yeah. he can pick it up. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, guys, you might be thinking, well, that's useful for Winter Soldier, and you're like, no, no, it's not useful. No, because it the thinks. shield the shield tricked Winter Soldier. It made him think that it would be useful, but instead, he in doesn't fuck. 
I don't know how to just. It's just so annoying. He he thought he. Th <laughs> you know what? It's Cap's property. He figured he should have it back, so he True. threw it out of him, so that he could then use it to block all of the bullets that just he to... fired at him. <laughs> so for cause and effect here, he throws the shield and it bounces up and then down to Cap, which is very yeah. rare. People who throw that shield usually bounces back to him, but this time it went straight to Cap. But if moreover, only just <laughs> he had shot at him instead of using the shield, would have killed shot him. him in the back. Dead. You win. Game over again. But it gets worse, gentlemen. We have two uh, shots he shoots later at least, so he's still got shots mm. in that gun. The shield is thrown at him. He boops it away, and then he goes in for the knife attack. You have a gun. <laughs> he has no shield. You got him. Yeah, and then, uh, you got him. Possibly the funniest part. Uh, I get if you guys can pull up your copies because I just want to do oh, this th for, man, the, pe for yeah. the people at home. I'm <laughs> yeah. doing it this way, okay? So, <laughs> people at home, can you see Winter Soldier right there? He's like, Yeah, I got him. He stabbed Cap, he's tossed him into that wall. He's got most advantage right now. It's going great. You see that right there? That's where the card is. It's right there. It's like two feet away from Winter Soldier. Next time we see him, boom, he's on the ground. Oh no, he's fallen over. He slipped he tripped over while he was trying to get the thing. And then by grabbing it, which by the way, crush it, obviously we went over that, it's donezo, but uh, it, he gives up his leverage and Cap's got him and it leads to Cap uh, neutralizing him. He yeah. slipped on a banana peel, unfortunately, and it, it lost him the fight. Yeah. Well, he could have still pulled it back with a clutch victory when uh, Cap's trying to climb up to put the uh, the thing uh, in the in the little chip thing, but Wait he's shooting minute. at him and he just he just. Are you talking about the time where Winter Soldier disappears for forty seconds? Yes, that's yeah. In the um, climax of the movie that saves the, the lives of all the people in the last few seconds. Is that oh, what you're wait, no. What? Oh, oh it's, it's, it's before that. It's, <laughs> oh, oh no. he's shooting at him while he's climbing up to uh to put the chip back in, because he he hasn't gone for forty seconds quite yet. He's shooting at him. He's not landing the shots. Um, but somehow, from an angle where he shouldn't have been able to hit Cap, he hits him, and that incapacitates Cap nearly until the end of, uh, you know, the, the countdown. Yeah, just, just, but, well, I just want to show, wanna, get, just yeah. make sure we got the shot right. So, he's shooting at Cap from very far below here. Once Cap gets above that railing, he's got no shot. But somehow, yeah. magically, he still does. Um, but, and then, and it's funny, it's funny how it just flips, that the problems just stack on. Yeah. He doesn't have a shot here, but for the next 40 seconds, he doesn't make any attempt to get up there to stop Cap for sure. He just stays on the bottom until the helicarriers start shooting at each other, and then he gets crushed. Yeah, Winter Soldier is literally teleported out of the film to prevent the hero from winning the day. Yep. Fascinating. Pretty dumb. Um... Now you know what. That's that's a lot. Um, that was a lot that we've home? covered. Oh yeah, I and think. you know what? You guys have talked, and I know you have before uh, about. We haven't focused much on 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 the main star of the show, Peter Parker. Um, do you guys hmm. have any thoughts on 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 the boy Pete? Uh, we can, we can go over the... that in a s second, yeah. We'd like to go over uh, that later. first. I wanted to say. Go just for to, it. like as an update of what I think of it right here. So after going over like all the instances of the plot armor, I'm gonna be have to like, yeah, it is way worse and uh well not it, way worse than <clears throat> soldier, but like significantly worse. Okay. Okay, um, uh cool. So what you got then if you don't want to talk about Peter Parker? Um Alright, so do you wanna talk about Shield now? No, you're talking now. What what do you got? <laughs> oh, I, I was talking to them, so... Oh, yeah. Let's, do, let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about S.H.I.E.L.D., that's okay. All right, so with uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., they don't seem to run a background check on Quentin Beck. Oh, I'm so um, glad you asked that. Oh, God, he's so excited. You know why? I'm so <laughs> glad you asked <laughs> do, that. Do you, just, do you just know what I'm saying right here, and you want to just uh, move go, forward? Go for it, though. Explain, explain your full point. Okay, okay. So the thing about uh, the scrolls is like, or sorry, about S.H.I.E.L.D. is like, okay, if they ran a background check on him, it's like, okay, Quentin, there's a Quentin Beck in this world, so that's something that, something to keep in mind. Uh, you monitor his home, and he's just suspiciously never home. It's like, okay, that's another reason for sus sus you know, suspicion to be raised. Another thing we know about the scrolls is that in Captain Marvel, they've established that the scrolls 
are capable of uh, simming like recent memories of their host bodies. So that like is the ultimate lie detector. So if they had that, then yeah, they could just turn into Mysterio at some point, find out if he's telling the truth, and they would know. Oh, this guy isn't telling the truth. If they were to turn into Mysterio, they basically have access to recent memories, which would pretty much guarantee that they like he'd have recent memories of him interacting with his team and plotting basically um the scrolls are able to imitate the memories of the people that they is that recent memories yes yeah. that is established in captain marvel what is what does recent memories mean um so i guess i'll give an example um because i watched it recently um so i'm so the... sorry for you Captain Marvel? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so, like, Carol says uh, to, to a scroll, did you know the password? And I guess it's, like, something like a password would be recent enough for them to be aware of... Um, I guess that's how far it goes, when they were given the passcode. Um, so, I don't know. Recent, I guess... <laughs> within like the day i guess i don't it's i hate how they set up the rules it's just it's not clear oh, it, can, it actually, can make them pretty um, sorry can we so you had the two points right the first one of the background check the second one of the scroll so with the first yeah. one there was a quote that quentin beck says when he's he's talking about his plan with his buddies the story mm -hmm. you created of a super soldier from another earth named quentin fighting space monsters in europe what do you think you can infer from that sentence uh, that possibly his name isn't actually Quentin Beck. Yeah. Um, so is that like what you, what you're implying here? So that's our, that's our first thing first, right? With the background check, this could very well be an alias, in which case it's going to be a lot harder for them to be able to verify who he is. Mm -hmm. Um, so about that, so that creates a question. It's like, okay, so then... If that's not actually his name, then how did he? How did Peter transfer control over to him? What do we know about Edith? Well, I mean, if if Peter Parker was gonna transfer ownership over to John Smith, I don't know. Do we? Do we just imagine that Edith has some sort of way of like intuitively? And I'm just plus, that it was registered. Quinn Beck's name will be registered now because yeah. that's what they call him. It's like if hmm. you know, Edith will know, they know him the Beck. by Quentin yeah. Beck. He means that creature in front of him. The Quentin Beck, right in front of him. Whether or not he's named Quentin. Um, but is there no sure, visual recognition thing. for uh, Beck, given he's like a... So, is it implausible that there would be other people who live in this world who... Because if, if we imagine that, like, the idea of people from multiple dimensions, that there could well be people who look like other people. The question is, what cause would you have to check if you've seen this dude fly in doing crazy magic to be like, let me double check the stock database, or you know, to see if if Quentin, if uh, if a guy who might not even be named Quentin Beck who looks similar to no, him. No, it's a matter of uh, when when Peter's got the the Edith glasses on and looks at Beck. Yeah, yeah, because it would show like the names they would pop would up. Would it show stuff. his name? It doesn't doesn't that stuff show up when you when you've like turned it on to ask about information? Uh no, it does show the name. It shows uh, like for example, I'll. That picture shows yeah Jay when it's on Dell. right when it's on right what if shield said hey peter can you check uh if this guy can you use edith to check if this dude is telling the yeah, truth yeah that screenshot doesn't help you though when it's on is it on in the scene where he's with back he can... talking to him also well, wait he why turn he, it on. He, he, but wait why know. why That's wouldn't this question. be answered by the multiverse who'd be oh, like oh yeah and of course because the registry now of like back this is back quentin back right and i'm why saying it go if to, they were is automatically you know the right thing. and if they're what? right and to verify if he's actually telling the truth they can check like uh like for example his home if he's so suspiciously does stuff not can't use home, edith so can we just are we are we going to drop the edith part because they can't use edith only peter can ooh, use it at this point ooh. in time what you were saying like oh well with the glasses they can check to see if if uh if if it's uh, no 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 uh, i said they I could they the could scene. ask him to check they could say um, hey can you do this Man, I feel like at this point, it's not even something that they're even considering anymore. He's already helped them out so many times. 
What, what and he mean? says he's from a different dimension. So why would you even believe that, like, by scanning the glasses that you'd be able to figure anything out about Beck? If you believe now that he is from another dimension to come to fight uh, aliens. And plus, if we already have now that this face, Quentin Beck, whatever this guy is, who they can assign the glasses to, that he has his own file of, like, this is Mysterio, why would there even be a problem with the name that shows up? It'd be Quentin Beck. Um, hmm. I don't know I mean, because isn't, isn't this a thing that Shield tries to do typically in verifying uh, people's stories, especially like even if they come from other well, worlds? Well, I mean, supposedly? we keep saying Shield. Is this Shield? This is like Fury and Hill and their like thing that they're doing. We keep calling them Shield, but what are they? Well, yeah, but like, they. Action. I guess they're like Shield agents, and Fury yeah, sure. would obviously want. I mean, them it seems to, take... to me what we saw of them might actually be their team. And that they have yeah. some kind of access or coordination with possibly other groups, but that's the problem. So little world building is done in anything post yes. game now that we don't really yeah. know what everyone's capabilities are. Yeah, I um, I don't know how much credence you want to give the uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe wiki, but they do refer to to the um, the the lady that tells Peter to to take off his clothes is a Shield agent. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's 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 not a big deal. It's just the idea of like, what is, what is Shield at this point in time? Yeah, sure. There's 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 a pretty big yeah. difference if it's just like some private outfit by Nick Fury, and if it's Shield. Yeah, you know I mean, um, yeah. Uh, so I guess I guess the the broader thing was Peter. The glasses are not on in that scene, so he wouldn't see his name. Uh, and even if he did. I don't see why it wouldn't be the file that he probably has now that is I am Quentin Beck. And Fury did not have access to Edith, so he couldn't have used that to uh, to to get that information. And as for whether or not he would feel compelled to, I mean, Mysterio has already come in, saved his life and Maria's life, and it's Talos. She's not quite as distrusting as uh, Fury. I can believe well, yeah, the but real that's... Fury would be super hardcore, like doing that. But Talos has demonstrated sure, himself but... to be a little less smart. Than Fury. Sure, but if you think that Ta uh, if sorry if Talos was being sent by Nick Fury to literally pretend to be him, then don't you think that he would uh, train him or prepare him in some way to act to react in situations the way that he would react? It's kind of um, important. I don't know how much sure. you could prepare someone but, for that. Yeah, I was about to say how time. much. How much could you do? And uh, unfortunately, um, we don't know the nature of. Yuri's uh, leaving. We don't know if it was rushed. Well, what what I would go with is like, okay, so if the scrolls are this like are, aren't as competent, if they're just this incompetent, then why? Are I you don't know that this is incompetence. I don't know that Fury could have possibly known that they would have to deal with a guy who could do this. It seemed to be that they his, were more so a stand in. Tricking people. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah, that yeah. they have to deal like, with something like this. It's better for them to be there, to have a certain presence in the world, than for no Fury at all to yeah, be around. They're like Fury's eyes and ears on Earth while he's doing cosmic stuff. Yeah. And of course, you need somebody to give Peter the glasses, right? And you need yeah. somebody to be to be doing that. Right. Now, yeah. So that that would be what I would say about all of that. I don't know, because with with how S.H.I.E.L.D. works, like, especially we, as we see in the first Avengers movie, uh, the thing that they consistently do is that they run background checks on their heroes. They uh, they even keep tabs on them, like, you know, in the in Winter Soldier, um, Nick Fury, um, was he, he tells him that the place was bugged, and then Pierce later on says, uh, did Fury tell you that he was the one who bugged it? It's like, so he does keep tabs on the heroes that, um, that are on his team. Mm -hmm. um, because yes, he's not entirely Fury, trusting of them. Real well, Fury. I was going to say, right, like, um, saying... so we're dealing with, we're in post-end game, and they've got nothing to really work with in Mysterio? Like, does he have an yeah. apartment they can bug? It's like, not, probably not. He's probably got way, he probably goes invisible before he ever goes back to his lair sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And as for, um... even if they did the background check and found out that there was a guy who looks like him who worked for Tony Stark, I don't know if that's even an- and even if you knew that he worked on Buff, I don't even know if that's enough for you to be like, maybe he's creating il illusions to trick us, because that was specifically, like, holograms to be used in, like, 
a, a like a setup, like as a projectors mm. to for a stage, not like that you would be able to use that tech to create these incredibly brilliant illusions. And even then, seems like he's helping you. So I don't know what a background check would necessarily yield for him, especially if Quentin Beck isn't his name, which I think uh, it's reasonable to infer that it's not. Right, but yeah, but he, the thing about, you know, oh, well, he's helping you, like, you can say this about uh, Hydra as well, because Hydra, um, the situation with Hydra is literally bad guys pretending to be good guys, so they even have precedent for the fact that just because someone's helping you doesn't mean you should just fully trust them. Yeah, so, I mean, I imagine that Fury wouldn't have, but this is Talos, he's not quite right. the same as Fury. Trying to keep up with uh, Mysterio, in a way. So, yeah. Hmm. I have a question. Uh, he was sending. So, I guess the idea is he only sent Talos to to give the glasses to Peter, and like that's it, right? Nothing else. I would say that the broader objective. The problem is that we don't fully know what he's doing, so it's hard to say the hmm. soundness of his plan. But based on what we have, all I can imagine is it's better for people to think that I'm around, even if it's a slightly inferior version of me, then it would be for me to not exist in this, yeah, this world. Okay, this so they, but this is subject to change depending on how future MCU projects... Uh, yeah, out, right? sure. I mean, it depends on what the explanation... It could be stronger, uh, it could be weaker. Yeah, it could be stronger or weaker. Depends. We'll have to see what, uh, what, what comes of it uh, in mm. future. And of course, I mean, I think all of this helps in explaining why Fury is behaving in ways that are a little out of character uh, throughout the yeah. whole movie. He's a little bit harsher. He's a little bit meaner, um, more standoffish. There's a lot. He of doesn't that. know. So, like the, the 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 thing that gave it away to me was Fury's like one of his traits is really good at dare I say manipulating slash accounting for his hero's emotional states. He knows how to do it, and he fumbles it with mm -hmm. Peter. And I was like, he wouldn't have fumbled it. That's ridiculous. And then it's like, it's not him. And I was like, oh, okay. I, uh, I, I was just, um, when I was first seeing it, it was, uh, the fact that he just, he acts a, a little bit more bumbling this time around, uh, than he usually does. It's yeah, just, it's the way so. where it's like, you, you, you watch his behavior, and it's like, I can believe that that's the guy from Captain Marvel, not Nick Fury, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not like, I think that Samuel L. Jackson does a decent job at playing Ben Mendelsohn playing him. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, what, what else, uh, what else do you have? So, okay, so if you're sending him to ensure to the world, like, yeah, we do have, um, Nick Fury is still around, it's like, okay, then you would want him to be prepared to physically, uh, be qualified to be like Nick Fury, because if you don't do that, then that can... I thought we, I... sorry, I thought we, didn't we talk about the whole thing of just, like, whatever training you give, I'm not sure that... Talos could have ever been prepared for Mysterio. The role of Nick Fury. Or, or yeah, fully even the role of Nick Fury. Yeah, well, yeah like, you can like, do your best, gonna... but... Right, but would, like, would it be if... better for there to be no one at all, I guess, is, is the question, than somebody who just well, isn't as good as you at it? I guess, like, with the whole they need to give Peter the glasses thing, like, would it... I don't know, would it have hurt it to just that's have a one, shooting agent? That's one reason why you might want to have Fury around, a fake Fury. What if what if crazy things are happening on Earth and you need someone to let you know? But hey, you can have that guy double up and pretend to be you and keep a tab on things. Because I mean, if no if there's no Nick Fury, mm, makes you wonder about how like much easier it might be to be able to to get away with certain things. Well, the thing is, for me, I guess, it's that um if someone that's impersonating Nick Fury fucks up um as like like you know impersonating as, as nick fury um that could basically fall back on nick fury like fury is basically taking a risk by having anyone impersonate him and uh sure. essentially take up um, the mantle he's taking a risk if there's nobody around at all yeah and uh, it seems to me that talos is like his secretary almost his eyes and ears yeah, and he owes him well, big time. Well, because when he so. the phone call, he's like, "Oh, hey, so you know things didn't go as plans, and you know people wondering where the Avengers are." It's like, yeah, it seems almost like that's his role. It's just be like, he "Hey, so here's the happenings on Earth." Yes, he does. Like, or, or maybe he's. I mean, I don't know what that means other than he might be working on it. Yeah, like he's got the information he needs. Mm. Uh so yeah. 
Yeah, I'll I'll think on that one. I think that that could work. I don't know. I'm gonna check on them when I when I rewatch. Fair enough. Uh, uh let's what see else? what else. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um right before the Prague fight, uh they say like, you know, they still won't evacuate the city, right? Mm-hmm. So why is that the case if Shield has proof of the elementals being real? As we like we have precedent of this from the uh three other elementals and they have proof of when they'll be there and that they will be there <coughs> with their satellites, so why don't they evacuate Prague? Uh I don't know sorry. that that proof is substantial enough. Picture yourself yeah. as Prague. You're like, we have footage of this weird rock monster. Another one's going to come in your city. He's like, the fuck is any of this? Oh. Uh, also, we got yeah, like a but... giant festival that makes us a shit ton of money. So, um, hmm. yeah, but the thing it's is, like the it's like thing, with... right? Um, was that? It's like the Jaws thing, right? Where it's like, oh, they're sharks. Well, this is like our biggest day of the year. So, fuck that. It's kind of the same situation, I'm guessing. And yeah, I just I don't know that they 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 have I enough reason to one. believe it. It'll be uh, like, well, it has happened three times, and Mysterio knows Mysterio and Shield knew that this stuff would happen. So, but like, this is Prague, and who is Shield to them? You know, again, you got to remember post end game. This is a different world. They, 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 like, I could just mm. totally picture them being like, "Fuck off." Um, would they would they believe Mysterio though? This isn't the whole point. Like, um, that they believe that these things are real. He's from an alternate dimension. Um, they would have Mysterio vouch for them to. Um, well, Mysterio is brand new up. on the scene at this point. This is part of the thing. Mm. He's still got work to do to really establish himself as like the hero that everybody should listen to. Yeah, because they haven't even heard of him until Venice, right? Our characters. Well, uh, the public yeah, doesn't know who he is yet until Venice. That's right. Yeah, that's where Mysterio comes from. Man of mystery. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Uh, uh, the last thing I think we touched upon this briefly, but um, mm -hmm. uh, Halo says like you know people are asking where the Avengers are, and I don't know what to say to that. Um, but it's like okay, so did he know where they were, um, this whole time or what? What what's the what's the situation here? I picture I'm gonna go ahead. I would just assume, like, if he has no way to contact Doctor Strange. He doesn't even know where to begin with mm -hmm. contacting someone who's in a different dimension. Um, and then Wanda... And we know Thor's off-world. We do know like, that. Wanda, his best bet is those people... What were they called in... Uh, were they S.H.I.E.L.D. in, in WandaVision? I can't remember. Sword. Sword. Oh, so he might be able yeah. to get a line with Sword, and then they're not going to tell him anything about what's happening in Westview. Like, yeah. okay. I wouldn't even and we can. Wanda. We could safely assume that they're factoring in one vision when writing this, right? Um, uh, maybe. Well, so let's no, pretend no. for a second that one vision doesn't exist. Then I would be saying, I guess he has no way of contacting Wanda. She must be up to something, and that we'll find out what it is in a later installment. Which technically, mm -hmm. one vision does account for that, despite its shittiness. <laughs> She's off the grid. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, or I, I in think... another dimension. It's just like this is stuff that Fury would find hard, I imagine. And so he's he's especially out of his depth, uh, Alos. He's doing so, the best he can, all right. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll think about that when I when I go back to it. I think that sure. that could be valid. Um, you want to head back to um? The well, problem with, with Winter know. Soldier, we're um. We're at a point now where we can start doing some summarizing for total damage. So if yeah, you guys wanna... and it feels like you guys still have some points left to make. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I guess with... Do with, you want to go with Peter Parker? You know what? Sure. Why don't... Let's, uh... let's All do right. it. Are right. we asking Southport? <laughs> you want to talk about that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I, so, I mean, FK is the one that's, uh, you know, more... Qualified to handle this, I think. Sure. <clears throat> Go for it. So, um, Stereo says that him and his whole battalion, 
could not stop a fire elemental, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and he's also told that nobody else is available to help, right? Yeah. So, why is it that he's just like, nah, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna go on vacation. So, you know what? I feel like there's a lot of context that you've left out in that summary of, uh, of, of that scene that's just happened. You that his can watch write it. I just want to go on vacation. So, he starts with a lot of things when he gets explained this. First, he's like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, like, I just, I'm just friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. It's like, why is this relevant? Well, remember his frame of mind. He's just come back from going to a massive war and died. He died, which is the important thing as well. And his mentor died. And he's been doing stuff for a while. He's had nobody to talk to. He has no confidence in himself. He doesn't actually think that he's in a position to help. And he's kind of right because he can't help nearly as much as Mysterio can deal with this situation. And every person that he lists who could help out is more qualified than him. Now, as you said, he's they're not available. So it's like, oh, there is that. Um, to which he immediately moves on to. Um, he's worried about the consequences of revealing himself to the world and the damage that that's going to have on his life. Um, that's a thought that he has, whether or not that's relevant or like whether or not that is broadly relevant to the case that he's trying to make, whether or not he think like whether or not that's a, a really good point is not what matters. What matters is what does he think is a good point? Um, what's his frame of mind? But I feel like the big thing that really helps out in terms of uh, sort of demonstrating uh, what position Peter is in, in terms of his character is Fury says, all right, you can leave. Why would Fury let him leave if it was a world-ending threat? Peter must be thinking. Okay. So, firstly, I would like to go through, like, the whole... Yeah, go point um, by point, sure. Yeah, yeah. So the one where, like you mentioned, he died and that Tony died, uh... And, uh... I'll start there. So here's the thing. Despite that, he's still willing to help out the water monster. Yeah, his gut instinct is to help. That's who Peter Parker is. Good guy. Right. But I think with that scene, that that gives... I don't think the whole, well, Tony died and he died is enough to, to stop him from saving people if he's if he was willing to help out in that situation. Especially if this Why? time around... I don't buy that. Especially mm -hmm. if this time around you have uh, a, you know, a monster that's probably going to destroy the world. So, what people do out of instinct tends to tell you a lot about who that person is. Peter, when he sees a threat and sees that people are in danger in front of him, immediately jumps in without any regard for his safety or even his secret identity. He just jumps in. He helps because that's who he is. When he's in a situation where his brain can start telling him things, like he's overthinking things, which we know he's doing, you can start to trick yourself and say things that you don't really believe or things that you don't actually fully... Uh, sort of subscribe to it, like things that things that don't really hit home to who you really are. And I think here's the big thing. If Fury had pushed back on Peter more, do you think he would have like run off? Like run away? Do you think that's what would have happened at the end of that scene? Um, or do you think he would have helped? I think he would have helped he would have helped from the start. I don't see any reason Do you for think him he would have helped from the begin? start? You do. You do. Uh from well if he if once he's told that nobody can help and that Mysterio couldn't handle it, it's like, yeah, from there, he would have helped. He was told that Mysterio couldn't handle it, even though he saw yeah. Mysterio handle it. They're asking for his help, that's, that's different, true, though. but what do you mean? The reason I say it's different is because the Fire Elemental was said to be the most powerful one, and yeah. uh, that's the one that destroyed his world. It wasn't, it wasn't the but... one. You know what? Peter got pushback. Peter expected pushback when he talked about his secret identity thing, and then he didn't, and then he left. If he got pushback, he def he would have helped. He would have. He wouldn't have run away. Like, if, if Fury said, nah, you're helping us. Like, you are. You're not leaving. Peter's not running yeah, away. He's gonna help. Yeah, that's because he's surprised. Like, oh, what I was trying to do actually worked. Like, you understand, like, he's trying to get out of it with fake excuses. He Fake excuses? These are legitimate are points. Fake. We can we can go over that. Well, right now we're on the whole like uh, Tony died, he died. Do you agree? Like that would not be enough for him to not be willing no. to help people. 
to to help people when he sees that there's somebody else who can help and it's not right in front of his eyes because and i feel like just immaturity is an element that needs to be remembered he's a kid like why do you, why do we believe that he would be totally in the right frame of mind to be able to jump in and help and just be so eager when we already know that he's not doing well because he does that in homecoming he does that in infinity war he did yeah it, uh, before he died movie. yeah before he died but he did it in this movie when the thing With was the right in front monster. of him yeah when the thing was right in front of him yeah he did but all those other so ones that wasn't... was before he died okay but Would like, you be happier if in the scene with the water monster, he turned his back and walked away? No, because that would be character assassination. Oh, so it's not then, right? So he he actually did help uh, when he saw that monster in front of him. Right, but I don't have an issue with that one. I'm talking about the, the one at Prague. Yeah, but you're saying that this supports the idea that he would immediately jump into... It, 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 like, that he would be presented with the choice of, uh, hey, we... we you know, help us with this one, that that just immediately supports the idea that he would. If the when stakes are... Different... Go ahead. They let him leave, though. So what are the stakes if they let him leave? He tried to, if, get, if Fury he tried to make it so. The... If, Fury, if Fury says, uh, this is like a big deal, and then he says, nah, I, I, no, sorry, no, I'm not, I, no. And then Fury's like, okay. Fury's clearly not concerned that this is, a, like, gonna end the world, at least from Peter's perspective. Uh, no, he, th that was his whole plan. He was trying to make fake excuses no, to get Peter's out of it. No, from so, they're not fake excuses. You keep saying that, but they're well, not. Well, I mean, we can get into that, but we're just, well, we're trying to go oh, point well, by well, point. Well, well, hold on. Yeah, okay, so, uh, point by point in terms of, like, the things that he says. So, number one, um, I'm a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. This is, like, beyond me. Do you think that that's an illegitimate point for him to bring up? That is an illegitimate point mind? because why? you why? can't be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man if there's no neighborhood. Yeah, that was before he died. Right, but we already brought up the fact, okay, he died and Tony died. He was still willing to help out with the water monster. Yeah, so the one right in front reason. of him that didn't seem like a world-ending threat, first so, of all. But so, also, so, the, the thing that he does... I, I feel like it's really important to make this distinction. Do you think that there is no difference between the thing that you do out of instinct and the thing that you do when your brain is starting to talk for you? Um, do you well, think, I think there's no meaningful instinct, difference? Out of instinct, you have less time to think and understand what yeah, the stakes it's, are. It's, yeah, it's more true to what you actually believe, I would say, what you do out of instinct. Right, but when he has I more time to think about it... You. Sorry, go on. And I think I think that I don't think that this is I think that this might just be a difference of perspective, but you know what? You can overthink things, you can just have irrational things pop into your head that mislead you. That is entirely possible when you have more time to think than when you have less time to think. Less time, generally, it is the thing that is your gut reaction of like, this is right, this is what I need to do. And that's what Peter does. The gut reaction is help. When his mind starts playing tricks on him. It's like, oh, wait, no, I'm not, I can't help here. No, I, I, I'm worried about my secret identity. No, I, I don't want to get my friends in trouble or in Even danger. Even when he's told that the stakes are the, like, the entire world and everything. Yeah, but then they die. let him leave. They let him leave. He was right, expecting a bigger fight. He doesn't, he doesn't know that they were going to let him leave, though. He was expecting yeah. more pushback from Fury. He was shocked that he didn't get more pushback from Fury. And yeah, that leads me to believe to... that... He... Yeah, but here's the important part. If he got pushed more, do you think that he would have stayed and helped? I don't know. Um, what do you mean you I, don't know? You think he would have run yeah, away? You really think yes. he would have run away? The answer is yes. No, he would no, have no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that he would have uh, definitively run away. I don't know how he would have reacted if he got more pushback. I don't know how much more pushback he would have had to have gotten yeah, before because he this... finally conceded. So Fury, Fury says, th this will end the world. We need you. We need you. You're coming. You think that Peter would have run away? If Fury said that, no. So then I think we can agree that this is not character assassination then, because it means that when push comes to shove, he's going to help. Um, In that immediate moment, he won't run away. He will not run away. He's not going to turn his back. Like if the fire elements were popped up before him, he wouldn't have run away if he hadn't gone to Prague. Well, the problem is that we're, we're dealing with a hypothetical of, well, if uh, if Fury did something differently than he did in this Yeah, scene, so then... if Fury did something differently, that's right. The point, so the point Fury is making Fury is that anything differently. the impression Peter is given is that he's not needed. But yeah. that's not true because, again, he was just told you that... You can't say that. No one... 
because he's like, what go? No, that's that's after he already tries to give excuses to get out of it. It doesn't right. matter. He is let go. That's after he tried to get out of it. He is he let go. To... By... He is let go. Can't... So he yeah, doesn't he... believe he's not, he's needed. If he was needed, he wouldn't have been let go. Hang on, hang if on. He doesn't believe so he's needed. The... Here's the thing. He is told that the world will that the... when Mysterio and a battalion, mind you, went against the fire elemental, they lost, and they have nobody else to help them. At that point, he should know that he's needed. Um, Except it, they let him go. And in an isolated situation, no, I think you would be right, but now you have to factor in every single other mental uh, position he has, as well as... Yep. Uh, well, just to run down them again, right? Desperate for a break, wants to live a normal life, is experiencing significant PTSD, survived a war, died, watched his mentor died, doesn't believe he's the right person to be the savior of the world. He wants to hang out with MJ and his friends. He's lost literally the person who was guiding him on all things related to superheroes. He thinks he's going to blow his cover and put everyone he loves in danger. He thinks they're going to be able to handle it. He's told he can leave. Yeah, but why would why would he think that when he's just told that... Because they, he's a 16-year-old who is going through extremely tough shit. This is, this is the most cool. stress, most... Like, I don't even know how many characters have experienced more than this in the MCU. What are you talking about? Just because he's a 16-year-old, that doesn't negate the fact that he was told no, so, that... So, critical is what... It's <clears> not <throat> about whether he's right, it's about whether he believes this to be true. Yeah, and but he, has he a wouldn't lot believe of this to be true. Why, though? Because he's why? just told, like, once again, him, Mysterio, and the Battalion could not stop the fire elemental, and he's told nobody else is available. So you're gonna tell me that he just but thinks, then they oh, let him leave, if though. I... No, no, hang on, hang so on. Clearly, they don't, they don't need him. In but his frame you're, of mind. Cite, you're citing a scene that happens after. You're citing a line that happens afterwards. So here's the thing. But he remember, still tries he to was push back more with push. Yes, but that so, doesn't. Okay, okay. Why is I, that I have a better question. So, though? if if those excuses are like fake excuses, okay, if they're fake excuses, would you agree that it, it is against his character? Oh, but you're never going to get me on them being fake positions because these are legitimate know, but, points to bring up. Well, I'm asking, I'm asking what, if that was the case, would you? Well, what do you mean by fake? Do you mean like fake as in he doesn't actually believe in them and he's just trying to get out um, of getting in, in danger? What do you mean? Yeah, well, either, either he wouldn't believe in them or it's out of character to believe in them. Then... I don't. Can we ever How argue that that's out of character for him to worry about his yeah. identity being revealed? I don't think there's any scenario that that still wouldn't be a well, worry. Well, because I have a I have a couple things to say about that in itself. So, firstly, um, letting people die just to keep your secret identity, um, like, is Jonathan Kent his Uncle Ben or something? Like from Man of Steel, it's like this is what this sounds so, like here. No, you've completely same... reframed what we're talking about here. Like you've gone off the rails. So this is a reason for him to not want to get involved. If he is told that's not a good enough reason, then he's just going to do it. That's the whole point of this scene. He's told that it's chill and he can leave. Yeah. Um. To be to be analogous with the Jonathan Kent scene, it would be like if Spider Man saw the water elemental, walked away, yeah. and then Jonathan Kent was like, good job, Peter. That was the right thing to do. Right, but he's basically doing this right here, except he's just it's just prolonged until, like, it, there's more time he has to prepare for uh, the fire elemental, and he's doing nothing. Um, well, how far do you want to extend this? There's a lot of things that heroes don't do anything about in the world. They're not constantly active. This is a kid who's oh, desperate yeah. for a break. But here's the thing. You can't have a break if the world gets destroyed. Yeah, but remember, he, he doesn't think the world's going to get destroyed. Yeah, that's Fury the key part. He doesn't believe break. the world is going to be destroyed without him. So after being told that Mysterio and his entire battalion couldn't stop it, and that no one else is available, he thinks that the world won't get yeah, destroyed because Fury, the fire Fury let, shows up. Well, the most, Fury, and so Mysterio let so him go. Fury let him, yeah, they let him no, go. They don't. And, okay, yes, they not do. right away. Yeah, yes, okay, from I, his perspective, they do. Yes, they do. They let him go. No, no, hang on, hang on, yeah. hang on. Yes, so, yes. So... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So he says, um, when he when he says, uh, what about this uh, this person, that person, and they say no, he he makes the excuse, oh, but my identity. Yes. If that worked. So there's yeah, plenty of things he could he have said. He was trying to. Yeah, sorry, go. 
I said there's plenty of things he could have said. There's all kinds of reasons he could have brought up, but none of them are going to be good enough mm -hmm. if the threat is truly for the world. But to his surprise, Fury concedes. He's like, yeah, you know what? You're right. You can, you can actually sit this one out. Right, but he does, like, well, here's the thing. His plan going into the um, this conversation was to try to find excuses not to do anything about it. Um, no, his his plan was not to do that. Was not his plan. He wasn't walking into that bunker immediately, like, oh, what, what? Well, no, what no, can no. I, I mean, like, afterwards. I like, after oh, being told yeah, the information. Yeah, when he's told, hey, this is like, you know, that we, we you, you need to come help us do this mission, but they don't need him because that's ultimately the important. Or, or moreover, it's not that they don't need him, it's that Peter believes that they don't need him to because and they he, let him leave. And you have to remember, he also thinks he's kind of useless right now, and that he, he, thinks he, he shouldn't be involved in yeah. world-saving events. And that, yep. again, super stressed out. He's terrified. I think it's, it's so important not to underplay that he is not in a good frame of mind. It's, that's what the film's about, is getting back up on his feet after he's died and lost the person who's guiding him on being a superhero. So, I'd like to get back to one of the things that, so... With the whole identity thing, and he says, you know, oh, I gotta keep my secret identity. What good is a secret identity if the world is destroyed? I feel like you didn't listen I, to anything we just said. I don't, yeah. Um, um, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I want to go point by point on this, because there's a lot of, uh, a lot to break down here. Well, the problem is that whatever you want to break down, if we can't get past this fundamental point, we're just not going to agree on this one. Well, I mean, the problem with this point is like, oh, well, um, he doesn't think he'd be useful. It's like, well, he was useful. He saved people's lives uh, with the with the water elemental. Because, again, we see that, uh, what is it, like, an orphanage nearly gets destroyed by collateral damage, and he saves them there. So whether so or not he's capable of saving them doesn't mean that he would necessarily believe how useful he is. People can be incredibly talented at things and believe that they suck. That is entirely possible. Whether or not there's evidence to prove one way or another. Yeah, but Peter he has no reason to... Wait, what, sorry? Uh, I was just like, there's, he has more reason to believe that if he doesn't show up, then people are going to get hurt because, again, this if is... If he is a totally is rational power. agent, yes. If he is a 100% rational agent, zero stress or but anything... But you don't need to be 100%... You don't need to be 100% rational to know this. He could believe that he could cause more harm. That is not... How could he cause more unreal. harm? It's not about whether or not how, it's whether or not he believes that it's possible that he could cause more right, harm. Right, I'm asking why does he believe that? What if he fucks up? Like, what if he makes a mistake that would have been better if he wasn't there at all? I was gonna say, why do we? Why would you need a specific reference? This whole film is self-doubt. He just, he's, he also doesn't want to die again. Yes, there's that as well, and he's a 16-year-old kid, so you know what? Right, I but you're gonna die anyway if you don't... No, he doesn't, believe that. He, he doesn't, doesn't believe, believe that. that. he doesn't believe that is the case. Like, you keep using the reference, yeah, but we here's... keep responding with, he doesn't believe that. Yeah, right, there's but that, a, there's that he a... has no reason to believe that based on... plenty of told. reason to believe. He I would believe it. Reasons, yeah. I was surprised when they let him go. I was like, oh, I'll be that serious. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, what what a character believes is in discussions like these often, in fact, it is more important than what the actual case is, especially if they're being deceived or if they're not thinking clearly. Um, that's the, the frame you have to look at things. Well, because, right, yeah, it's not about whether or not he's totally rational or whether or not he's 100% correct. It's about what's in character for him to, to think what, or what anybody sure. thinks, right? Right, but I'm just basing it off the information that he's been told, and what you're saying that he believes contradicts what he's been told. Well, it, except it doesn't, because they let him go, so clearly but he you, isn't that important. No, no, no. But we're talking, even after, like, uh, he's told the information, he still tries to weasel out of it. Yeah, but, but remember, remember the first instance where he says, I can't help, his immediate thought is, what about all these other people? So it's not like he's just running away from them. Like, his immediate thought is, right, and there's got to be someone else who's better qualified, right? So how do you paint that as, like, a full-out character assassination that Peter would be like, hey, maybe Thor would be more useful? Which is true. Thor would well, be more useful. that's not the issue I take with it. The, the issue I take with it is that he's told that no one else is available. He's told that Mysterio couldn't handle it. Yet he's still trying to get out of it. Try he still plans to do nothing about it. 
I don't under the belief uh, plans to do nothing is a bit of a jump because again the reason why we keep bringing this up is if Fury had said motherfucker you are working with us to save the world I guarantee you he would have been like okay okay yeah and that's that's the important part had he run away then I would agree that that's character assassination well, but that's not what would have happened well what information does would he get out of Fury saying that so Fury is just putting the foot down, like, you are necessary in no uncertain terms. But he gives he off the reverse impression. Understand... Yeah, he's he a gives kid. Off the reverse he is impression. literally a yeah. kid. Okay, just because you're a kid doesn't mean, like... It also doesn't mean it's not, not that way. This... Dude, he died! Yeah. Okay, and what's your point here? Well, uh, do, you, um, do, do you, you think he's not in a good question? frame of mind? Yeah, like... He died. Other... Uh, he he his mentor died in front of him. Right, and he was still willing to help with the water monster. Oh. So I don't think that holds. Do, so do you do you just totally disagree with the idea that what people do out of instincts is like that that is a di there is a difference between that and what people do when their brain is is in play. Well, if he has well if he has more time to process and understand the stakes in the situation, you would think he'd be Not, more sometimes to more help time. Out. So there's something called catastrophizing, which is where you just run away with your thoughts and it makes everything seem catastrophic. When in reality, thinking won't help you. You just need to slow down and not be overwhelmed by your thoughts. But the things you do out of instinct, I think that speaks very true to who you are as a person. Like, if you see somebody in trouble and you run in straight away to help, that might not have been something you'd have done if somebody came up to you and said, hey, we need your help in, like, another day to come along and help us out with this thing. You might find ways to talk your way out of it because, you, you know, scared or whatever. But, like, maybe in that moment you run in and help. I think that means that you're the type of person who's going to run in and help. I think that well, that's an easy thing to pull away from that. It kind of goes both ways in that there's people out there that would assume that they would um, come in and help someone if they and then they wouldn't end up in a yeah. situation exactly. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, there's there's a personal experience I I, I had involving uh, seeing someone getting um, kind of assaulted or abused uh, in a in a public parking lot, and I uh, kind of like without even thinking about it, just started like coming over there to try to stop, but guy got away, but. Um, but surely you can see what I mean where if you if you had more time to think, you might rationalize reasons why you shouldn't help. That well, there is one of there is a negative thinking, you know, going on. Well, yeah, relatable... I wasn't really thinking about like how dangerous it, it could have been for me. Um right. and I I um it, it, it's it, it wasn't something I really thought that I would ever do. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. cause I don't like to be of the, the mindset where, yeah, if this thing were to happen, uh, in real life and I were to witness it, I would totally take action. Um, well, something that's really relatable I... for a lot of people is when you're a kid and you go to the swimming pool and you're on like the diving board or the high dive. And like one of the things that you, you pretty much everyone gets told is don't think about it. Just do it. Just jump. Yeah. Just do it. You'll be fine. The more you sit up there. Um... Staring down at the water, think about how terrifying and awful it'll be. The more hesitant you'll be, you just yeah, do it. Like I mean, it's the Nike and if you push them in, then they're in, and then they're like, "Oh, it wasn't so bad, actually." Yeah, and it's kind of like what May said. You know, don't overthink it. Just trust your instincts. You'll be fine. It's like a microcosm for everything that's going on with Peter in that movie. Yeah, it's and it's happening now because of everything that just happened to him in the timeline. Yes. And I think and it's I'm bold. Seen it in the instance where he didn't have time to think, he just runs it. Go ahead, Mola, by the way. I was going to say it's bold of them to explore this, because uh, I think it's uh, it's not something that we like to have to rationalize. That like We like to think of our heroes as basically perfect, a lot of them, in terms of their, their desire to just run out and help. It's like, this this is totally a real thing, where he's like, Jesus Christ, like, what am I doing? I'm way over my head. And it's like, we got another world to save, and it's like, I, 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 I can't, like, I, I don't know, I do um, and then just throwing out reasons because he's he's beyond exploding in his head. Yeah. Which is all I mean, we see at the, the beginning of the movie. At the beginning of the movie, with that interview, he's like, "Hey, do we have any <clears throat> questions about the neighborhood?" It's like, yeah, he's trying to keep it down, but they keep asking, like, "What if aliens come back? What are you gonna do?" It's like, dude, he's he is not in a position to be like dealing with this. Even I'm not the title sure how of the I movie, feel about it, sort there, of, because because there's there's um just there's just two different brainwaves for me uh, happening here. One is just the fact that he's being told that there's this imminent uh, potentially world-ending threat um, coming to Prague, but then of course there is the trauma that he's experienced because and the fact that he is what 16, 17, 
Um, he and he's more. Yes. He's 16? Okay. It's a little confusing to me because um, I thought that Homecoming took, like, he was 15 in Civil War and Homecoming. I thought he was then... 14 in uh, Civil War, actually. Maybe I'm wrong. But he's still a teenager. He's still, you know, he's under 18. He's under 18. 18. Under 18. Yeah. yeah. Um, whatever age he is, it's like, you know, um, your brain chemistry is going to be even more volatile um, and your emotional health at, at the same time. Uh, at that age than you will as an adult. Um, and so that's the thing to factor in as well. Um, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm having a difficult time like reconciling those uh, those two different things here. So. I think it's just a disconnect maybe of like the, 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 the fully rational perspective is, you know, uh, help. But from Peter's perspective, there's a lot of conflicting thoughts and a lot of reasons why those thoughts are there. It's not unsupported is the big part. We have references in the movie that tell us what frame of mind he's in. Uh, and, you know, just in the other movies, he did die. He fought in a massive battle and he nearly got blown up by the raining fire. And then he saw his mentor die. It's a lot to go through, especially when you have no one to talk to about it. It's why, it's why Beck is so, able to, uh, so easily able to manipulate him. Because it's like, that's exactly what he needs right now. Um, um do, do you do you want to yeah. keep going on this one or i, mean, I, I feel like, like we're okay, at a i guess we're here. just gonna we might yeah, have to call the stalemate yeah yeah um, sure and i also sure. i yeah, also want to progress i also want to eat <laughs> well uh, oh well well it's time we, we, i think <laughs> for my nuclear take i suppose mm -hmm. now yeah i'm assuming you guys have been curious about how we so just definitively call that one is worse than the other when you might say if you categorize the issues like what exactly are the issues with uh, Winter Soldier for character now we've given a pretty strong inkling we are not happy with Zola we are very not happy with Fury we are very mm -hmm. not happy with Winter Soldier these are serious damage to all of them but mm. Steve Rogers is thoroughly assassinated in Winter Soldier Wait, hold on. Uh, to clarify, to clarify, I think I thought said earlier that you were happy with uh, Natasha and you were happy with Winter Soldier. No, I'm definitely not. We're ha not if, happy if, with Winter Soldier. I, 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 yeah, if I said that, that was sorry, a, I, that was misspeak. Yeah. So if, if if you were happy with Natasha and who else? That's it. That's okay, it. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it's inexcusable what they did to Cap and Winter Soldier, and it's something I felt for a while, but just keep quiet on, because I know that it's one of the most unpopular opinions in history. I kind of gave it away, where I've talked about Civil War fixing Winter Soldier many times, being that they hold him accountable for the damage he did. Um, and I do, I, maybe I, I do love Civil War a little bit for that, because it really helps rescue this film. But um, Cap is stupid, selfish, and uh, insane, like, Reckless. psychopathic. And he's been yeah. destroyed by Winter Soldier, but I'd say the other movies in the franchise kind of heal him up until he hits Endgame, and then he's destroyed again. And then he's destroyed, yeah. Oof. Um, so... It's it's catastrophic, yeah. Where to begin? I suppose... Uh, by other ahead. movies in the franchise, you mentioned, you also include Age of Ultron, I guess? Yes, I like him in Age of Ultron quite a bit. Okay. Um, in fact, I honestly think Age of Ultron compensates quite a bit for this film. They take, they push him all the way back into being what I think Cap is, where he's he's not mm -hmm. willing to leave the Rock without every single civilian getting off there with him. I think that's mm -hmm. awesome and totally what Cap would say. I don't think what yeah. he does in this fucking movie is anything close to what Cap would do. So, the most important reference uh, will come, I guess, second. The first one we we mentioned it, but now I want to really hit home how fucking dumb it is. He decides to get his suit from, I assume, the Smithsonian, instead of heading to Project Insight that is set to kill a million, well, 700,000 people. Every second counts, and he fucks off to get his suit. It's not even bulletproof, by the way. Yeah, That, that is painful to watch. Useful. It'd actually be really it's cool to free. see him, like, take this on uh, in a street clothes, if, if they're gonna go head-on like this, you know? Well, no, he needs to get his suit, alright? It's for the, it's sim it's, it's symbolic, the right? Yeah. He need he needs to inspire the people in the uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. Triskelion who turn and help him out. The people in that building who come to his aid in his moment of need. So, 
from what we understand, he has decided on his... Uh, by the way, the theme... I, I've seen people celebrate Winter Soldier for its approach of the theme of security versus freedom, and I think that's laughable. They do nothing with it. They're literally like, hey, you know what's better than freedom? Having a gun to everybody on Earth so we can kill them before they even commit the crime. <laughs> they literally do a fucking minority report, and it's like, they brush that off real quick. Cap's like, you know, I, I, I don't like that. I think that's bad. And no one should have the power to just, just have a whole handgun to the world. And it's like, Cap, we have more <laughs> than enough of arms of this already. I don't know where you've been. So it's like really weird. But also, these things are the very things we need to fight off stuff like Loki. Like, without superheroes, this is humanity's best option. Doesn't None of this is discussed. He just throws it out. He's like, nah, bad idea. He's like, okay, that's nuance. And by the end of the film, they basically say, yeah, freedom's better than security. We're done. It's like, what? No, you didn't answer, you didn't explore any of this. One of the big frustrations for me is the Cap never gives a fuck about why anybody in S.H.I.E.L.D. is a part of HYDRA, why HYDRA exists, why everyone's ideology is this way. He's just like, nah, you're the bad guys, I'm gonna beat you. And maybe... Which you might say, like, well, does he need to? And it's like, I think if you're gonna be trying to broach the subject, you should try and get to know the people who are, like, security first, freedom last. It's like, at least talk about it. The film is literally like, freedom's the best, woohoo, let's, let's kill everyone. It's fucking absurd. But putting that aside, he's like, no one should have the helicarriers whatsoever, we blow them up. And now, if you can see, this is where they are, Cap knows this. These motherfuckers could land anywhere. Look how close we are to mm -hmm. civilian populations. This is insane. Cap would and never do this. And that's assuming that any of the shots don't miss. Which we is have absurd. them neutralized, the we can land them, and he refuses and says, no, blow them up, and it's, oh, it's so funny, this film is like, but Cap, TV. if we blow them up while you're on it, you might not make it. It's like, yeah, he might not make it. All the people who gave their lives to fucking fight for him and the Triskelion might not make it, all the ones that are still alive, all the civilians running around having their day-to-day -day might not make it. Not a single tear shed for yeah. any of them. Don't they give a fuck. Lives, and the, the, lives. the sad part is, nobody else brings it up. At least if I, it was just him and everyone else was like, oh, Cap, what are you doing? You, it's, not, it's, it's still catastrophic, but having every other character be like, yeah, this is fine. And uh, no, he nearly kills Falcon, and nobody mentions it. Yeah, and but even though he nearly kills Falcon, we know that he killed innocent people in the Triskelion, people on his side, because there yeah, were a people lot of target shots in the Triskelion when they were about to fight. That building was not evacuated. And that's, again, it doesn't even matter, because it could have crashed into Washington, D.C. What if they went to the to the right or to the left where all the buildings are? Look at that it's collateral damage. This, this is inexcusable. This is absurd. Yeah. And Look it's so that. fucking How funny close. to watch Cap grandstand uh, Tony in Age of Ultron when he's done this. Like, oh, you're a fucking, you're a legend, aren't you, boy? <laughs> you, you, you're the one with a clean slate. And yeah, it's so cool when Civil War just shows the people screaming as these things land. It's like, yeah, you did that, Cap. You fucker. Yeah. It's like the biggest flaw in his character, but it, it's it's too much for me. I don't believe Cap would have done this. And if he did do it, you have to have him incredibly regretful of the decision. But they don't. They don't even acknowledge it. The ending is like, woohoo, we did it, everyone. We beat the yeah, bad guys. It's like, motherfucker, look what you did. He saved Taken. us. He saved us. I look at... The, the, it, it's it's just amusing because like even if no civilians died they could have but hi, but shield <laughs> people died absolutely Cap no did that he traded those lives he doesn't shed a tear for the people who risked their lives to help him out because nobody should have this technology and that's for captain america alone to decide which is another knock against the theme the the, the message is hopefully one man will decide whether or not we're allowed to protect ourselves as a as a, yeah. as a state it's like fuck off Mm -hmm. With the Triskelions, and remember, the Triskelions are such useful weapons, uh, not the Tris- fuck, the Helicarriers. Yeah. The Helicarriers are so effective as weapons that at 3,000 feet, they can kill people in New York. So these are well. some really useful <laughs> weapons. Well, yeah, it makes you wonder, for as bad as- for, for, for whatever issues anybody could pull from the drones, the fact that apparently the, these things are so good that they can kill people 400 kilometers away at 3,000 feet. They have guns the that can- The Earth doesn't uh, exist, I guess. They can account for 4,000- do you say 400 or 4,000 miles, sorry? Uh, I think it was 400 miles or 400 kilometers to so, New York, which is part of this the target area. To shoot someone from where you are, 
400 miles away or whatever, you, do you understand how much you have to account for to be able to nail that shot? <laughs> it's, yeah. not, it's not a thing. Apparently they can wind shoot resistance. It, uh, as far west as Columbus, Ohio, from Maryland. It's at hilarious. At feet. And anybody's going to bring up any issues to do with how the droids work compared well, to this. <laughs> so first of all, Hydra start World War Three. Straight away. Yes, the economy's done. There is no economy. Um, it's over. It's over! They plan uh, to wipe out Russia, 20 million China. Americans. They yep. think this is a good plan, and they believe from Zola's algorithm, which, holy fuck, if it said this was the plan, I'd be like, guys, maybe don't trust the 70s AI German. I don't know. I feel like this is a bit sus. But you go, kill 20, 000, sorry, 20 million Americans, and the rest of them will submit. Like, you know this to be true. Have you accounted for the rest of the world? Have you accounted for yeah. how China launched one nuke and knock out your three helicarriers? Or Russia, or the United Kingdom, or France. Like, as if all of the world is going to watch you wipe even out? The rest of the, even the rest of the United States military apparatus. Yeah, they're not just going to, you know. Not it would be insane. <laughs> and then you have people who are timid, right? And they're like, oh, I'll, I'll stay under the boot of Hydra. Yeah, they have their whole family <laughs> killed. They're like... Okay, I'm feeling a little bit different about this now. I feel... Yeah. Uh, I, does, the, uh, does the algorithm account for this? Like, how everyone's going to behave after all of their family is killed? Like, I wonder. Yeah. And all of this is for control. That's Hydra's ultimate goal. Control. Because chaos is bad. It's not like anything chaotic will happen with half of the people who died in World <laughs> War II dying in a couple of days. Well, to, to and... b uh, bolster as well, again, with the theme, it's like you see full security, they kill everyone. It's like, what the yeah, fuck are you everyone. talking about? <laughs> like, <Yeah>. Hydra <laughs> represents security gone to the extremes of murdering 20 million people. You're like, fuck off. That's so stupid. How could this ever benefit them? It's really, really stupid. And again, they would have succeeded if Winter Soldier wasn't so fucking stupid that he made all of the worst possible decisions when it comes to assassinating people. Which assassinates so him, because we're told Yes, he he's, assassinates himself! Yeah. He's, he's, he's what, the world's greatest assassin of all time, he's passed through 50 years, he's done all kinds of amazing jobs, he doesn't- he's not known by any intelligence agencies, he's a buffoon in the entire fucking movie. Makes all of the wrong decisions. Um, I mean, and you know, he nearly killed Fury. Um, I, at least he's got that. He nearly killed him. The and and that's okay because Fury helps finish him off himself off. And I suppose it's time. Fury also, there's a lot of little yeah. little bonus information coming out here. But every time on EFAP where I say Winter Soldier super intimidating in his two movies, like, nah, I just meant Civil War, not Winter Soldier. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not even oh, close. Well, he's he is such an idiot in this movie. Now, can you at least at this point appreciate, I felt like mostly this way about Winter Soldier for fucking ages, and all I get told by most people is it's the best movie in the MCU. Mm-hmm. A little bit and frustrated. You know, <laughs> you know what? It's really amusing because when I re-watched Winter Soldier, I wasn't paying as much attention as I needed to. I arrived at, like, it's, it's a disaster. It's catastrophic. Yeah, I mean, I, like, here's the thing. I didn't think about most of these issues when I first saw the movie. I, I, I spotted some. Um, spotted others over time. Uh, spotted a lot when rewatching this with Evan, but there's quite a bit that you guys are pointing out that I missed, too. But yet everybody was Same so here. sure. They were so sure that Far From Home was so much worse than well, Winter Soldier. Well, in fairness, do you guys feel any differently on that, or are you still undecided? Um, so... Undecided right now, but I think both of them are pretty weak. Yeah. I just like, you know, forgive me, but like, I, I just feel like the, the they're so clear cut the insane issues in Winter Soldier. There's so many of them. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just you stack them up. Plot armor and Far From Home. It's like that, but more and for more characters in this movie consistently throughout. I feel um, like more characters were assassinated and more clearly. More, well, yeah, yeah, yes, I definitely. Just on that are are like um, Hydra has way more resources than Mysterio for sure. Um, and villains, and as far as villains go, holy shit, Hydra's fucking stupid. Yeah, that, yeah, like completely squandered. I think with Zola, because after the stuff we went over with Zola, it seems like yeah, they've pretty much assassinated Zola. He's a totally he's he's a very different person, that's for sure. But that was just, one of the things every... that I noticed when I first watched the movie was like, I don't remember Zola being like this in uh the first <laughs> Avenger, but see when I first saw it, I was like, whatever. I because 2014, it's like I wasn't uh particularly consistent in in this stuff. All I remember is like 
uh, seeing shit like Dark Knight Rises. That was the first one where I'm like, Ugh. holy shit, this plot is complete garbage. Um, but yeah. Uh... So when we when we look at this in in totality, it's like so mm-hmm. Winter Soldier plot garbage. Abs, it breaks at like significantly at several mm-hmm. points. Just it. Cat- it catastrophically characters is like hey we've got black widow but like everybody else it's not even that they're static it's that they're significantly damaged if not destroyed uh theme incredibly simplistic and not supported by the 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 text itself like it's not in this it's, in it's this actually movie, absurd like, like it, it, it yeah. believes we should destroy the helicarriers that is the correct yeah. answer even though that's just so <laughs> not true and they save cap's life in in age of ultron proved him wrong um eventually and, yeah. and well he good. was already wrong because oh. it's just yeah just, no, I know. earth I know. needs defenses cap like are you yeah. nuts where do you draw the line and they don't address any of this they don't talk about any of it and, it's simple no, that's right but like far from home talking about like what is it where do you sit in the world what you should you do when everything's like falling apart around you i just i like the the plane scene i think it's fucking fantastic good good um, stuff great character yeah it's it's great it's on theme and it's on character and and then it's like world building far from home doesn't do a great job this movie just it iron man doesn't exist all of these other entities don't exist it doesn't take account of anything that came before and it certainly can't really factor in as well into what and comes it, afterwards it absolutely f- fucked uh joss whedon up <laughs> he had no he didn't even know they were gonna get rid of shield yeah uh, so, um, why do why do people like this movie so much? Is the thing. Why is this movie so popular? Uh, I think I can tell you. Go for I it. I think. I think. Um, firstly, it's well paced and as a as a movie in terms of things are constantly kind of happening. Um, mm-hmm. you, you never really. Uh, I think it's paced well for general audiences to read onto it. And keep with it. There's not really many scenes that I think most people would go, oh, can this get over so we can go to the next thing? Um, um, it has that vibe of a action spy thriller almost. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's very, it, it's one of those it, surface it's super pop punchy in terms of movie. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's, this is very much a Hollywood. Uh, look at the heroes fighting the evil bad guys. Action, oh. suspense, explosions, gunshots. With a, a little super, bit of character um, sprinkled in. Super interesting thing to figure out what people do like about it, okay? <clears throat> Rags was almost a test subject for this, and I didn't uh, blame him whatsoever because the only time I've remembered this was in prep for this debate. I said to Rags, how did they get to the Nazi AI? I was like, oh, you know, they, they arrived by cars. No, 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 no. What led them to the Nazi AI? And it's like, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, like, I couldn't remember. I like, like okay. legit tried to remember and I couldn't. What like what took them where did they go after the Nazi? AI? What was the information they gained? Where did they go? And it's like uh I don't know. <laughs> and if you so people who've seen this movie, really hard to recall how everything connects, but you don't care because the action scenes are really cool. And uh, you yep. really like like all the actors are on point, and it's really a, a big action fest, and it's super. The stakes are so high, and you get loads of Budget revelations. Is high. Stakes are high. It's very clear. Music's good cool. versus bad. Music is good. Um, and again, they, like you, someone who says like this is their favorite MCU movie, I would have loved to have asked them those questions. It's like, what did they get from the USP? They'll be like. Oh, sorry, that's already given them too much information. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, yeah, I, I, I think they they found it because, you know, they, uh, yeah, they, you know, they were looking for, uh... They, they're, they're vaguely recalling the actual plot points. They just get lost in the movie as they, as they watch it. Yeah, things move really quickly. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure it was only within the last couple of days that that USB scene was something that I was like, I need to actually listen to this because I've never really listened to it. Like, how did they get it? And it's just really strange. You just try and figure out what it, what even they're saying that happened, and it's very, very... Like, the movie's full of it. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I think they did a fantastic job of sort of... It's kind of like Spider-Man 2, I think. It's, um, it's that elusive... Oh, yeah, that elusive element. It is... I don't know what we'll call it, but a movie, if they has that element, it can get away with all kinds of shit. Is it called fun? Could be. Entertainment? Could be. Um, it's like it's a fun yeah. movie to watch. There are so many ways to um, to essentially capture fun, you know? 
because like a lot of us can get a lot of fun out of stuff making sense someone else might be bored by that and they just want to see the silver ball roll across and then blow up and, and and natasha jump on top of bucky and try and try and kill him with her wire you're just like yes fights um well uh yeah i don't know i obviously there's there's probably more details we could both sides could go over with both movies but Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like the case has been made uh, uh, for, for, on, like, my goal, like I said, was to really gun through a lot of what's wrong with Winter Soldier. I feel like at this point there could be extra things that me and Fringy could mention to hurt it more and more, but... Probably, yeah. Uh, the, the, the number for me is, it's a two, and it's... It is a two for it's me as just, well. It's yes. sitting like a sad clown in on a two. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, like a it's little clown really boy? low. Yes. It's really low in the MCU. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the uh, MCU at its worst, and people yeah, will be like, this "What?" Is than I it's like, this is sorry, it's worse than I thought. Yeah, I remember when I, when I, I don't know. I, it's just, it's, it's, it's a lot worse than I thought. Even after my, uh, my, my oh. rewatch for the Endgame video, it, it's, it's probably only going to get worse, um, over time. Because speaking from experience with Spider-Man Two, there's been like more and more uh, discussions oh. that me and Eskin have <laughs> had about that movie, and how inconsistent it's like. So Harry thinks that Spider-Man killed his dad. He knows that there's this newspaper called the Daily Bugle with an anti-Spider-Man bias. Why don't you go to the Daily Bugle? But it, it's that sort of thing, right? There's implications yeah. about what the first movie's ending sets up that's completely ignored in the second movie. And I like completely missed that shit while I was like gunning for that film. And I was gunning for yeah. it hard. Um, and it's like, it's one of those things where when there's this many things, when there's this many... Uh, central fundamental issues with the story it's only going to like multiply over time it's like the last jedi yeah i'm excited yeah. to revisit it and you know it's it's people when when you hear like oh far from home's like winter soldier is worse than far from home it's one of those things where it's like nah come on nah no way no way do you, do you mind if, if I, yes way yes uh, way indeed <laughs> when, when you my... start to yeah Drop your what? Do you mind if I publicly drop my current take on it right now? Well, you guys are welcome it's to do public. whatever you want. Yeah. Um, uh, well, right. well uh, let me wait. Let me clarify. Are all five people here happy for this to go out? I'm totally happy with this to go out. Yeah, I am. Absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah, I like. Well, it. Rags, you're the last one. <laughs> 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 well, I suppose it's okay if everybody learns about EFAP's newest incredible hot take. Why not? We, we do have a reputation to keep. Dude, it'll happen. Someone will see a new take we have and they go, these are the guys that hate Winter Soldier, by the way. Can you believe it? The thing. I don't know if I agree with you guys on everything you've said about Far From Home, but I don't have particularly any disagreements to voice about the Winter yeah. Soldier. It's garbage. Winter Soldier like, is, I mean, there's a couple yeah, things where I was able to push back, uh, but, like, you know. I'll be curious. Um, I'm assuming you guys that. possibly feel that Far From Home is in the two categories. Well, would you uh, at least say it's like a 2.5 compared to this as a 2.2 or something yeah honestly i would say yeah like if i if i were like gun in my head like yeah 2.1 or 2 for winter soldier 2.5 or 6 for farmo what about you but, South yeah Paul? um yeah probably the same thing it, it's like uh given what you guys have given me again without re-watching the movies uh with all the um all the stuff that you've you've set in mind right um, I'd go, yeah, there seems to be a, a difference in quality between these two movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, uh, and that, I would, that's cool. I'd be down, like, you know, after, not today, obviously, but at some point, like, if you want to talk more about the movie and, you know, in preparation for a little video I'm making, um, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, you know what, uh, shoot me a message if you want to talk about it. I, it's going to have to be sooner rather than later because this is soon to be flushed out of my brain. Um, yeah, like I'm happy to not have to look at these notes ever again. <laughs> like, <yeah>. really revisit <laughs> these movies. Um, but I mean, you know what? I'm I'm so glad to hear that. Um, uh, however, if I were to tell you, you know, my my perspective is that I think that there is a reasonably uh, noticeable difference between these two films. I don't think that it's close. Though I wouldn't call Far From Home a good movie. Um, I'm not even sure that I could be pushed up to decent because I think that there are problems for sure. And like the way that things hang together, 
eh, but I mean, Winter Soldier. What score would you, uh... Catastrophic. Um, it would be between three and four for me with Far From Home, but this is just categorically mm -hmm. a two. Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that we at least got you guys down to a four or three. Sure. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's cool. Um, Winter Soldier mm -hmm. is worse, though. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. It's, it's, yeah. It's, that's that's the worst one. I'm just glad that we could drag you down yeah. from a six. Yeah, yeah. You know what? And I'm glad. I, I'm, I'm so think... glad that we we could finally talk about how Winter Soldier is not good. You know, well, I, I do. I, I do feel was... a little like a weight is off. I can finally be open about what's yeah. big shit I, now. I feel like this might be the best debate that you guys have done on your show. Well, yeah. um, they're gonna say you buy a South Pole because you're in it. Because you're well, on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, even though I'm, like, on the losing side. Um, but, like, I don't know. We came together. We we share um, a very similar standard. And uh, all parties involved came away with new information and developed their um, opinions a little differently, I guess. Like, we, we all are different people now than we were when we uh, entered <laughs> yes. the call. Now. Yeah. yeah. I really like um, this. I think this is a good format, and um, hopefully it got the it achieved what we were gunning for. This should come out uh, next Sunday, Saturday, Saturday. Yeah, uh, we'll um, so a week's time. But uh, uh, we'll see it. The the tummy is grumbling right now, so well. Um, <laughs> if you guys want to do me, Rags and Frank, you can skip this. But if you guys would like to yeah. talk about your channels, why people should subscribe, they'll find a link in the description. Uh, tell them what you do. Um. I'm going to destroy the Winter Soldier in ah. like an hour and 30 minutes or however long it is going to be. I don't know how long it's going to be. That's just my Sign guess. I'm going to destroy, <laughs> yeah, good luck. Gonna destroy <laughs> the Winter Soldier. That's why. There you go. You got to talk in like movie Bob speed if you're going to do that. <laughs> um, well, uh, I'm assuming you do breakdowns of, of media on your channel just, just to give them a, a sense of what the mm -hmm. fuck's going on here. Like, <laughs> I don't know. You, yep. This is your time to sell yourself. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I do stuff. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, South Pole, what are you up to? Yeah, I'm going to go eat now. See ya. All righty, dude. See well, around. so there's, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening lately. Uh, a lot of calls I've been in with Evan. Um, we've been watching through a show together. Um, and I, I've been sitting on this for a while. I think I'm ready to go ahead and announce it, Mahler. Uh, this is, this is the hot take that I've been teasing on Twitter for months now, and people are getting really annoyed by what it is. Um, it's like, what, why do you keep on teasing your hot take instead of just dropping it? Um, and the reason is because of everything I went through with the Spider-Man 2 saga, right? How EFAP chat reacted to that when I, when I dropped that, it was really funny. Um, but I guess I'll go ahead and drop it now. Um, so a long time ago, and maybe some of you guys have, uh, figured this out already because I've, I've been dropping hints here and there, especially in, in this little debate. Um, a long, <laughs> once upon a time, I was recommended by many, many people, especially in this community to check out this little show called Batman, the animated series. I watched a couple of episodes. Oh, no. They weren't very good. Oh, no. And then I watched about a dozen episodes, and they weren't very good. And those episodes included POV, which people are is like, oh, yeah, it's like a Rashomon type. It's not Rashomon. It's half-ass Rashomon. Uh, Evan and I rewatched it uh, just to be sure. And, yeah, it's bad. Um, Evan and I watched through most of the show together. Evan had seen the show when he was a kid. He grew up on it, and I didn't. And I, um, I, I, I was going in mostly blind. I'd seen some episodes a while ago, but I didn't grow up on it like Evan did. And I made Evan rewatch it with me, and most episodes are not scraping above a 4 out of 10. Uh, as it stands, only 20 episodes... Um, and that's including the Sub-Zero movie. So it's 19 episodes from the show and the Sub-Zero movie, that's a 6 out of 10 or above. And guess what? Heart of Ice, it ain't one of them. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I am working on a video about that show. I'm going to rip it to shreds. I am not sorry at all. 
you guys really should not have recommended me to watch the show. Oh. And the stuff that I've been saying on Twitter about, hey, should I check out Batman the Animated Series? Here's the plot twist. I had already seen the entire show. Um, there's recordings of me and Evan reacting to it. And I, I, I even recorded some of you reacting to some clips, Mahler. I don't, so, I don't know what you mean. I've never heard of any of this. I haven't seen hundreds of clips of funny things you've shown me from that show. What are you talking about? Wait, you didn't say that. Oh, yeah. So maybe maybe people will be wondering, what are some problems with Batman the Animated Series? Like, um, just little patterns to look out for. And I don't know how much time you guys have for me to talk about this, because I, I feel like I'm going on for quite a while. A um, couple things. Batman is really fucking incompetent in the show. Gets taken out by goons super easily. Gets snuck up on super easily. Um, he will frequently get knocked out and then tied up, and people will... Sometimes, um, not take off the utility belt when that's like the first thing that you do when you tie up Batman. Um, but what they always do is they keep his mask on. They keep the cowl on. They do not want to unmask Batman, which is strange because if you've got Batman tied up, um, you'd think you'd want to know who Batman is, right? It's kind of a, a common point of intrigue amongst the people of Gotham. Um, but man, so many people in this show, they, they get Batman, they have him tied up, they have him dead to rights, and they don't give a fuck. Um, there ha there's so many instances of uh, like aim that would make stormtroopers from the Mandalorian look competent um, from various thugs in the show. Um, um, I'm trying to think. Oh, and, and then you've got just amazingly uh, lame payoffs to things like, you know, episodes like Heart of Ice where Mr. Freeze is taken out because Batman has a thermos of chicken soup in a pocket in his cape that he pulls out and he smashes it over Mr. Freeze's helmet and, in, and the, the hot chicken soup makes the glass on his helmet explode. And in the four other instances that Batman goes up against Mr. Freeze, they never use this trick again. It's, it's like... It is dire. Just go into the show and really think about it the way that we look at stuff like the Mandalorian. I mean, I, I call it the Bat Mandalorian. That's well, what he is. Well, here's the thing, Southport. It's a cartoon. Have you thought about that? Yeah, I've, I've thought about that. And I've also thought about how this cartoon that's trying to be mature and serious and have this like very uh, serious tone... Uh, most of the time, it also completely deflates shit. Like, there's a fucking scene. There's a okay. So there's an episode where Batman gets uh, knocked out by uh, penguins. Um, like, he, he, penguins got this umbrella that shoots out a gas that knocks out Batman. It's like a nerve gas of sorts. It's like okay, so penguin better use this in all of his subsequent appearances. Guess how many of his subsequent appearances he uses that in? Negative None. one. Four. None. None at all. Oh. Um, and so Batman has to be saved by a couple of uh, dollar store encyclopedia brown children that are investigating. They see a condor. They see a rare condor in Gotham. They're, they follow the condor on their bicycles because they figured that's something worth investigating. The condor takes them to a birdseed factory. That's where the penguin is hiding out. And that's how they run into Batman. And Batman gets knocked out. They're able to save Batman that way through insane contrived bullshit with uh, how they like these kids drive the Batmobile. They have Batman, uh, like they, they, they take him in, bring him to the basement. The episode's called I've Got Batman in My Basement. And um, it, it culminates in Batman being revived at just the right time to fight Penguin. And him and Penguin have, I swear to God, a sword fight where Batman is holding a screwdriver and Penguin's holding a small knife. And I'm just like... Why is Batman engaging with the Penguin like this with a fucking screwdriver given everything in his arsenal? It's so bad. It, 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 not to mention all, all of the skills. Like, just him grabbing a screwdriver is fucking insane. And people go, oh, but Southpaw, that's, that's one of the bad Batman the Animated Series episodes. Like, yes, but that's the problem. 90 episodes of the show are bad. They're, well, they're 4 out of 10 or below. <laughs> assuming, so you're probably going to do a full breakdown that they can get excited for, right? Yes. Um, yes. So don't fret. That is his hot take. You, mm -hmm. Everyone will disagree with that, from what I understand. I never watched it as a kid, so I got no connection. You just showed me funny clips me out of context. Neither. They're going to hate you for that. You're going to be like, you've tainted Muller away from it. Don't worry, guys. It's fine. I, I, it's, I, I don't know that I was going to watch it anyway, but it's, it's okay. I'll watch his video when he breaks it down, and then I'll never see that show. 
little bit like Nas. Looks really bad. It's, it's okay. I'm just kidding. It's gonna be fine. Yeah. They're not gonna be happy about this, but that's okay because here on EFAP, we just we just look at stuff and we go, you know what? That didn't make sense. And that's it. That's what we did today for nearly seven hours. And I feel like that's probably a really good place to uh, say goodbye, especially on that hot take, don't you mm -hmm. think? Let them stew over that. Yeah. Um, yeah sure. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. That is... I had lost. Dear, I hope I see at least one comment saying, you know what? The debate format? Maybe it can work. <laughs> Maybe it can mm -hmm. work. You know, nine failures? At least there's one that kind of works. I don't even know if it's that many. Doesn't matter. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, uh, Southborn SK for coming on. Rags for mediating, and Fringy and myself for uh, doing what we did, I guess. You gotta make sure everyone's involved, yeah. It's all happy mm -hmm. families. We did it. Um, Hooray. Anything else you guys want to say before we uh, sign off? Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm... I mean, well, does someone else have, have some things to say? Ah, you know what? You know what? I think I think the points have been made, all right? And the points stand, and people can form whatever opinion they want about these two movies. That's totally fine. You know what? Because the points are out there. You listen to them, think about them, and then, you know, well, you go from there. <laughs> yeah, man. Hot take overdose this yeah. uh, this episode. I don't know if they can handle it. Could yeah. they handle it? We'll oh find out. Gracious. On Saturday. We will. They will also. It'll be a Saturday. It'll make sense. Um, so yeah. Thank you all for watching. Good night, everybody. See you next time. Bye. 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 Toodaloo. You know what it's like to lose. Feel so desperately that you're right. Yet to fail, nonetheless.